Good morning, SMP Nation. Blaine Austin here at Soul Machines Plus, and it is day five, the fifth and final day of so our Quilt Fest. And uh, guys, we are super excited about today. We got a lot of stuff we're going to cover today. Not only are we going to have some great demonstrations uh, and great specials, we're going to have the Meet the Judges session today at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Central Time. And you're going to get to a little kind of the inside uh, look at all four judges that we had, uh, get to see what they're looking for in an award-winning quilt, and uh, kind of find out their quilt journeys. We're also going to be this afternoon picking our fifth finalists for the Dream Studio giveaway. So that's going to be exciting. But before we get too deep in the show, we got to say uh, some shout out to some of the SMP Nation watching this morning. Uh, we have Teresa Bell in Minnesota watching. So good morning, Teresa. Tracy Morgan in South Carolina. Kay Sharp in Alabama. Kathy McBride in Texas. Marilyn Addington in Colorado. Sandra Warren down in Louisiana. And we have Susie Pinky Nutter. I've never heard that name before. She must be new. She's watching this morning. So good morning to everybody. Got to say a big shout out to our sponsors for this week. Uh, we couldn't do this show without our sponsors. Uh, all these great educators that you see, the sponsors are providing them, uh, you know, for us uh, to be able to give you some good, great education. Uh, they're helping us with some of the giveaways. And so it is just a great partnership we have with them. Our platinum sponsors, Handy Quilter and The Grace Company. Uh, gold sponsors were Baby Lock, Janome, Brother, r and Juki, and Quilt Easy. Silver sponsors, King Quilter and Arrow Cabinets. And the bronze sponsors, Reliable, Bernina, So Steady, Brewer, and Laura Star. So as y'all know, uh, we've had those educational sessions uh, throughout the week. And if you missed any of them, you can still go back and check them out. They were at 1030 Pacific time uh, each day, 1230 uh, uh, p.m. Central time. And on Monday, we had the Colorful Yarn Couching with Beth Ann Nemish. On Tuesday, we had Kitchen Towel Project with Edita Centaur. Uh, Wednesday, we had Beyond the Stencil with Jane Hopridge. And then Thursday, uh, we had Ruler Work with Kimberly Imo. Now, today, uh, at the same time, but it's going to be an hour-long segment, it's going to be Meet the Judges. So you get to meet all four of those. We'll talk to them. We're going to ask them a lot of, you know, about their quilting journeys, see what they look for, an award-winning quilt, and just any little tips or tricks they want to share with us. So all good stuff. Also, uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the quilt contest. That's why this whole thing is about, is about quilting and the quilt contest. Voting has ended. It ended uh, last night, uh, and we have our top three people that won the uh, People's Choice Award already tallied the ones who got the most votes. And uh, then we're, we've got the best of show. The judges have spoken. They have picked their best of show. And we have those. And we'll actually announce uh, the top three of, of vote getters from the judges as well, the top three. But we do have one best of show. And uh, so it's pretty awesome. The Judges Choice uh, Award uh, is worth $11,500. You see that right there. The best of show winner will win those prizes you see on the screen. A ton of things up there. You're getting that handy quilter, Amara sit down uh, on the lift table. You're getting the Juki TL 2010Q. You're getting the AccuQuilt Go Me Cutting Machine. You're getting that little Janome Soa 725 sewing machine. You're getting the Janome TM-16. You're getting the So Steady Starry Nights Rulers and Class. And then you're getting the Baby Lock Accomplished 2. So some great prizes there. Also, the, the other two places, second and third place in the Judge's Choice are going to win a print, print Moda. Moda. So from Brother, a print Moda. And now they can print their own fabric to make their quilts. So uh, second, third place is not going to go home empty-handed as well. Now uh, for the, the, the People's Choice 
Uh, we are going to announce that this afternoon. We'll do the judge's choice last this afternoon. Uh, and then, well, the very th last thing we're going to do is the Dream Studio giveaway. Yes. That is worth $26,000 to one lucky viewer. Look at that right there. Uh, a ton of product. Y'all can just see all the different products. And the one that stands out to you right there is that Moxie 18. That is an 18-inch quilting machine from Handy Quilter. It kind of stands out in, in the center there. And you do get the frame. We just don't yes. have a picture. Yes. Yeah, we couldn't fit the frame in the picture. <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to get a frame with that as well. And uh, so once we get that winner picked, we're going to work with you and, and what size of frame you want and things like that. Uh, so it is uh, just a pretty, pretty awesome uh, package all together. And if you get in the uh, if you get in the top five, it, just the other four runner ups, you're not going to go home empty handed. You're going to win a sewing machine uh, to take home as well. And uh, so everybody who gets a, is in the finalist right now, you're going to guarantee to win something. And speaking of our finalists, uh, you know, we have already have four picked. And uh, our first day finalist was uh, uh, Laverne Mendez. She was our first day finalist. Our second day finalist was Sewing Bev. And on our third day finalist was Karen Bruin. And then yesterday, we picked our fourth finalist was Rhonda Spiller. Is it Run? Spillers. Spillers. And what was the last? Runge. Runge, yeah. So Rhonda Spillers Runge was our was her name, yes. and uh, so Rhonda was our fourth in, in in finalists. And today, this afternoon, we're going to pick our fifth finalist. And then what we'll do, I'm going to throw them in a hat, pull the winner out, and uh, that's how we'll do it. Mm -hmm. So simple is that. And so what do they have to do this last day to rack up all their. All their chances of getting in on this. All you have to do if you want to know how you can win prizes is just, you know, put comments or ask questions in the chat. Uh, no matter what platform you're watching this on today, you just put comments in, in, in the chat. You'll get entered automatically. And we're going to be giving other prizes throughout the day as well. We've got some other sewing machines, uh, you know, sew mats, bags. We've got a lot of different things that are going to be given out, uh, gift cards throughout the day today. So got to be on your toes and be watching. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But next up, guys, I got to introduce my co-host. She's been here all week. She is a two-time Emmy award-winning TV host. She is a radio host uh, in Chicago. She is a do-it-yourselfer. She is a brother ambassador. She is a fitness expert. She has done it all. She is now a sewing expert. And she is here with us today. Uh, and so y'all welcome Miss Jane Klaus. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Blaine. Hi, I'm, in Blaine. The, <laughs> I'm in the St. Patrick's Day spirit. I'm, I'm getting a jump on it because I feel like that's what this weekend is all about. <laughs> nice outfit. Thank you. Well, love and it. I love have it. a joke really quick to start kick off the day. My, my theme of St. Patrick's Day. Okay, I want to hear it. Okay, you guys ready? Why do people wear shamrocks on St. Patrick's Day? I have no idea. Because real rocks are too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to throw it out there. If anybody's got a really good sewing-related joke, let us know. Put it in the chat. And let us know a good joke and or email it to uh, one of us, and we will try to... Uh, uh, say it on air and give them the credit, won't we, Jane? Of course we give them the credit. We love our secret writers that are giving us the jokes. I just had yes. to slip in a St. Patrick's Day joke for everybody because, you know, that's how I'm kicking off the day. But, you know, we'll move on to sewing jokes, which I love. <laughs> oh, we've had some good ones this week. So, Jane, it's, uh, you know, it's crazy. Today is Friday, the last day. It's uh, flown by. I uh, hope the SMP Nation has enjoyed this week. Uh, we got a just a really busy day today with all the prizes and all the uh, you know winners we're going to announce later in this afternoon. But you know I don't want to lose focus on the educational uh, just education you're getting just from the demonstrations of each machine. We got a lot of demonstrations going to go today. You know what? You're so right, and and I always say this like yes, we're showing you the products, 
but they're also demonstrating them and giving us such great information and education and ideas to go along with it. So, you know, as people are watching all day, every day, I know you're picking up little tips and tricks. I know that you're interested in the product and the items. And then you're like, oh, I, that's one of the things I love about Quilt Fest and all the fests that you do, Blaine, is that you're really learning from others in the community. Well, you know, that's what makes it it's awesome. I mean, think about this. You know, we had uh, Nicholas Turkan. He's in Canada. He's yeah. British Columbia. How many people would actually get to, you know, see him do something, a demo in his studio if it wasn't work, you know, for Quilt Fest? I know. He's amazing, too. And, and you're right. We get access to all of these educators and all of these experts. And we're right there in their sewing room with them, yes. sort of like sitting over their shoulder and learning. So that's it's really fantastic. Really, the people you bring us, Blaine. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 awesome, you know, to think about, you know, we're bringing uh, educators from all over the country and even outside the country, uh, bringing them in and right to your living room or wherever you're watching this from and uh, you're getting to be sit right in their sewing room and kind of follow along so yeah. it's pretty awesome that we can, can do this and and then you know the other part of it is for us to be able to make the buys that we make uh to get these really good deals and then we pass those savings right on to the customers and you know now you, during the festivals you can really get some good deals sometime and and so we're really we work hard on that and you know just like yesterday you know, we had a Kimberly Imo, uh, his book and her ruler set. Yeah. We sold out of those things. You and, you know, up. I get on the phone and call her and, hey, we need more of them. She's going to autograph more books and get them sent out today. And so, you know, I, everybody can, you know, get on there. You know, you could not get that book anywhere else uh, that's autographed except for SMP. So, you know, that's what's really cool about doing things like that. And Edit does the same way. Edit has got a book that's autographed uh, that she did. And you can only get it at Sewing Machines Plus. Yeah, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again today, Blaine. You're doing all the heavy lifting. <laughs> I'm partying and everyone else is hanging out and watching. So we're having a good time. You are doing the work and we're just reaping all the rewards. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome. Well, you know, we've got a great uh, kickoff every day this week. We've had a great kickoff of the, the morning and it's, we've had Grace Company every single morning this week it's been a lot of fun having them and you know we've still been laughing at mark martin's joke that he told yes. i mean kyle kyle recorded it on his phone and keeps playing it over and over because it's it was so funny and uh if y'all missed mark martin's joke you got to go back and watch if y'all didn't get to see that yeah it'll, it'll be on our social media page as well you can go to our facebook page and, and we're going to have it highlighted on there but it you was, know it's just it's it been was, a fun fun week and it's been uh you know just having everybody on and and uh those guys have kind of joined in the spirit of the joke oh, yeah. telling and things and it's been yeah. fun so it's i know so you fun. got to get them going this morning yeah. and yeah. uh we got a great uh you know that 19x elite they're going to show this morning i'm super excited about that that's been a really popular machine for us so i'm gonna let you get going right. jane and I'll be back here, I guess, about 30 minutes. Okay, thanks, Blaine. Yeah, his uh, joke was hilarious. It was like a mic drop because it was totally unexpected, but super funny, and I love it so much. So keep bringing the jokes, my friends. Okay, let's get things started with our friends at The Grace Company. Joining us today, day five, Friday, you, we love it. We've got Laurel Daniels, or as we like to call her, LJ. She's an account executive for The Grace Company, and she's recently got to start building out the Ambassador and Influencers program. Now, she loves the opportunity to continue growing the company and herself because she loves learning and applying her knowledge of the quilting world. Now, she's done this by attending several quilt festivals in the quilting world, and she's done this, um, the education team on different projects. So thank you, LJ. And Anthony Weiderberg has been with The Grace Company for just about a year, starting as a customer service representative and quickly took on wholesale accounts. Thumbs up, Anthony. He comes to us with a strong retail background and primarily focused on sales and customer service. We love it. And his time off, Anthony loves traveling, concerts, watching movies, and live theater. So hands together, ladies and gentlemen, and please welcome LJ and Anthony. Good morning, hey. everybody. <laughs> Good morning. How are you today? 
We're doing good and we're good. excited to be here. And we were just listening in, you know, before with you and Blaine talking and we realized we haven't actually watched the segment with Mark and his joke. So we're <laughs> yeah. deciding we need to go back and find out what his joke was. Oh yeah, you have to watch that joke. I'm sure Kyle can probably uh, send it to you as well. But it, and, and they're gonna put it up on uh, social media for SMP, but he brought it. Oh, yeah. and it was real, it was a great dad joke, really and truly. <laughs> <laughs> They'll send it. They That's send perfect. it right there. All right, all right. We'll have to keep an eye out for it because I'm excited to see it because apparently it's pretty funny. Yeah. So. <laughs> I know, no, it's super fun. Yeah. Okay, so today you're going to talk to us about the 19X on the Q Zone hoop with the dual track upgrade, yeah? Correct. Yes. Yep, yep. So it'll okay. be the 19X Elite on that. Yes. I love this. You guys are kicking off the day. Everyone's Ooh. super excited. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear from me anymore. We want to hear from you. So I'm going to let you take <laughs> it away. <laughs> Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Jane. Yeah, super excited to be here. Me and Anthony were just talking. This is actually our first segment that we're doing with you guys in the morning. And so we're like, whoo, all right. The morning hype up. Yes, I know. <laughs> Get us going first thing. Uh, which is super exciting. So yes, thank you everybody for joining with us. Um, super fun to see where everyone's coming from. I know that's always one of the best parts about doing these is like, yeah, I'm in a studio, but people are here from like Nebraska or something, you know, yeah. so <laughs> just fun to see, but um, we're super excited to be with you. And first we're gonna go ahead and actually talk about the frame that we have here uh, and kind of the difference between, you know, cause Jane mentioned it's actually with the dual track upgrade system. So we do have the Q-Zone hoop frame and then we have that that can be added onto it. So um, really nice frame. First, I kind of want to highlight actually just the size of the frame, because oftentimes when you think of quilting, you know, and especially when you're going to put a mid-arm machine on it, you're like, holy crap, I have to take out a dining room table. <laughs> you're like, I don't know if I can do that, you know? So this one's really nice. It actually is a four and a half foot. Really, we recommend about five feet of space for it, just so you have spaces on the side and you're not gonna be you know, running into or like an exact fit. So again, yeah. really we say about five feet for you. But with that, it's super nice that you can actually still do any size quilt. Right, Anthony? Yes, I love that about our hoop frames. They are small, which is great for saving space, but they are mighty, so you can do anything as small as what we got on here, super thin, a table runner, a baby quilt, a king size. You can California king it up, up yes. in here. So I love that we provide these options for those who don't have the space but still want to make those big, beautiful quilts. Yes, love that. And I love with this as well. Um, just like you said, you know, small but mighty. I love that. I feel like I'm going to use that now. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, because it is small to where we even do have a bit of a larger machine on here. And we'll kind of go more into the machine itself and some of the features uh, just in a little bit. But you can actually also put a domestic machine on this frame, which is what I love. It's very versatile where, again, hey, it's not going to go take up a whole lot of space. We say it's kind of, if you can fit a desk there, great. You can come fit this frame in there. <laughs> and then you also can start out with your own domestic machine if you want. Or if you're like, hey, you know what? I want to keep that domestic machine for my piecing and I want to go ahead and step into a mid or long arm. You absolutely can do that with this frame. So I yes. love that about <laughs> it. <laughs> Um, and then going into just a few specific features about it though. So I want to touch on how you are able to do any size quilts, but it being at just this small five foot um, print size. So with that, actually part of it is the rails themselves and then actually the clips that we have attached to it or, or used to clip on the fabric at the front and the sides in the back. So with this, the actual rails themselves are square. However, the clips, and I'll go ahead and pull this off really quick so yeah, you guys show can see, because I love to show this. So again, you can see here, the rails are actually square, and it kind of goes that way all the way around it. But then we actually have these clips, and you can see here, ooh, nope, move it this way. There you go, <laughs> now you can see it actually is kind of a flower shape right up in here. And that is because it actually allows it to act as a ratcheting system on these rails so you can clip it down and then right now we don't have fabric that reaches to the edge but you are able to actually move that and you can hear it kind of click there and that's what allows it to actually pull the fabric out and keep it nice and taut for you that way again regardless of the size quilt you're doing you can still keep a nice tight quilt top and not worry about any folding underneath as well. Yes. <laughs> so super nice with that. Um, and then going into it, um, you know, Anthony, I mentioned at the beginning, there's a kind of a Q-Zone hoop frame and then there's the dual track upgrade. Maybe tell us kind of what's the difference or what comes with that dual track upgrade. All right, on that dual track upgrade, you are going to get two great things. You are going to get these nice dual tracks down in here. Maybe we can flip 
too. Yes. But, um, you know, dual tracks. You're going to have those V-shaped tracks on there so that your machine glides real nice on there. It's a dual, dual system, so it's just going to move super smooth, super nice. And you're also going to get the table inserts with that frame. Love the table insert. Oh, it's yes. kind of a small detail, but I think it's a really important one because I can't tell you how many times I'm like cutting scissors or, you know, with scissors, I should say, cutting scissors. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cutting with scissors. And um, for, you know, whatever reason, I need to be able to set them down kind of quickly or I'm just kind of cutting a little loose end of thread or whatever. And I love that you can use it to set it down here. It also has the ability, if you want to see these kind of these grooves right in here, you can use those for pantographs. So it actually allows you to help secure those to this platform so as you're kind of following along in a stencil uh, with a stylus pen you don't actually drag those along with your machine it's going to help keep the accuracy and allow it to be held down and in place for yeah you. i can't count how many times i've been working on it just a regular q zone frame and i go to set something down i think it's ready i think it's there and it yeah. just falls right through so i highly recommend anytime i sell one of these table inserts you gotta yes. have them yes yeah. and especially <laughs> like you said anthony the dual track if you look at just the standard q zone hook frame wonderful it really is it's going to look exactly the same for you it's got the wonderful square rails comes with kind of those flower shaped clips However, it's a single track, so it really still works and it kind of can be, you know, a more cost effective way for you to be able to step into quilting. However, the dual track gives you a much smoother movement and so really helps you glide and feel like you have the mobility to truly do whatever design you want and have the freedom with it. So I yeah. love that, which is why it's again wonderful to get the Q-Zone hoop frame, but with that dual track upgrade specifically. So, And I'd love to say anyone who already has the Q-Zone hoop frame out there, you can get the dual track upgrade now. This isn't something you have to get <laughs> at the same time. So if you're looking at this, you really want it, come on, call into SMP, <laughs> get that dual track upgrade. You're going to love it. Yes, exactly. I love that you pointed out absolutely at any time you can add that component to it. So really fun with that. And then last thing I want to point out about the frame before we kind of talk about the machine, which I also really love, yes. um, is that this frame um, is actually height adjustable as well. So if you are somebody who's like, hey, you know what, I really enjoy quilting, but I just, I can't stand for a long period of time, right? Or, hey, maybe you're, maybe you're banging out all those quilt tops you had, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're like, I got my 20, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to do those, right? <laughs> um, this can be height adjusted for sitting or standing so that's where actually when you first set it up it does walk you through that in the instructions like hey based on your height this is the recommended height we set it up you know recommend for you to set it up as so i love that again sitting or standing you can use this frame and that's beautiful with it so yes. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and actually move into this machine um, this yeah. is definitely one of my favorite machines and i know you'll hear different people say different things at different times about their <laughs> favorite whatever this truly is um, i think a gorgeous machine and I love the way it looks as well as it fills and it glides. So a few things I want to point out that you'll see, um, we actually do or we have used this as a demo for our automation. We're not showing that now, but that's where you'll see there's a few additional components. Example, this is actually a tablet holder. So if you're just doing free motion, this does not actually come with it. It is specific to that automation yes. system. So a little bit different with that. Um, but starting right off with it, it is our Cunic 19X Elite. Now with our all of our machines, we kept it nice and simple and actually we put the dimensions uh, or really the length of the throat space in the name. So it is a 19 inch throat space machine. So that's all the way from the back here to the back of the needle, I should say up here. So you have a full 19 inches of throat space. Now I love that because yes. it gives you just the freedom to be like, hey, you know, maybe I am working on a smaller piece right now and so I can actually do way more in one go. Or if I want to do a bigger quilt block in one time, guess what? You can totally do that with this 19 inches of throat space. So really fun feature. And then kind of looking at the side as well, Anthony, why don't you kind of just talk a little bit about some of these different numberings that people can see here? Absolutely. This is one of my favorite features on our machines. On the sides here, we have the, oh, let me get around here, the threading instructions ready yes. to go right there for you. So if you, you know, even I, who have threaded this machine a thousand times, still have to <laughs> refer to those little marks yes. and see, like, where's my next step? Because I'm, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I forget. And I would like to draw the attention over to the bobbin winder as well. You also get those same markings to thread your bobbin winder. And while we're on the topic, I must highlight yes. it because I <laughs> love the bobbin winder. It runs yes. on a separate motor from your actual machine. So I really love that we have the dual motors in there so that if you get the automation 
and you're using your bobbin winder, it's not a choice you have to make. Is it automation? Yes. Is it the bobbin <laughs> winder? It's just going to do its thing for you. So it is super easy to use and it has an autofill sensor so that oh, when that. <laughs> you know you put your bobbin on, you get it going, you don't have to sit there and watch it like a hawk and stop it right when it needs to stop. It's just going to stop for you, <laughs> yeah, be perfect every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that that has it uh, built into it. Super nice that, yeah, you're not trying to like uh, catch it, you know, before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before it overfills or it's something. It's like a game of chicken. <laughs> yeah, I got it, I got it. Yeah, or yeah, not that you're not sitting there trying to unwind yeah. like yards of freaking bobbin, which I don't, I feel like we've all had to do. So yeah. <laughs> you're like, all right, all right. So love that. And it is nice because it's actually adjustable. So if you don't want to fill an entire M-Class bobbin, cause that's what the Cunic machines take, um, which is nice and larger than you'll see on like a domestic machine, you can actually adjust it. So if you want it to, again, not entirely fill the bobbin, no worries, you simply adjust it. Cause maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe I didn't need an entire bobbin of this color, but I do need to finish this last little bit of a pattern, you know, on my quilt top to finish it out. So nice to be able to adjust that. And I love yes. that you pointed out that it is on its own separate motor because that's huge for people. Cause like, oh, I don't have to go find a separate bobbin winder, yeah. you know, or stop my machine, unthread it, thread it to wind the yeah. bobbin. <laughs> love that it's all, you know, separate for you. And that's where you can also see there is a second um, spool holder up here as well for you. So you don't have to, again, change it out. You can simply allow it to be threaded from the back to wind that bobbin for you. So love that with it. And the pad printing, yes, I I like to think, I'm like, I don't need to know it. And then I get into yeah. like a machine that doesn't have it. I'm like, oh, I gotta look it up. I don't yeah. remember how to thread the machine. <laughs> My mind goes blank. <laughs> yes, it really, it really does. I love that. And then it has the printing in that bobbin area. Again, I know you kind of, these are the things you said, Anthony, but just because for me as well, that's something that um, I think I do even less than threading the machine is have to wind a bobbin. So the fact that it tells me where uh, or how to do that is beautiful. And I love that it actually kind of has a little thread cutter back there as well. So when you're ready to pull off that bobbin, simply pull it back behind that, cuts the thread no problem for you. So yeah, super nice. While we're talking directions here, yes. I would like to point our attention to this screen. I will always recommend an Elite machine because of this screen here. So you're saying you need to know how to, you know, wind your bobbin, how to thread your machine. You're going to find all that information here in your help guide and go to prepare your quilt. It shows you how can I thread my machine? How do I choose my needle for the right project? And how do I wind my bobbin? Click on that and Love it walks that. you through step by step. So if I'm stuck here on two, I don't know where I'm going next. It zooms in for you, it shows you exactly so what you nice. should be doing. I love that feature on this, on all of our Elite machines. It is something yes. I cannot pass up. But while we're in here, I gotta go over maintenance, big deal. Oh. I don't wanna go dig up my manual. Yes. <laughs> yes, or the manual that I put in what I like to call too safe of a spot. I'm like, I'll remember exactly where this is, but no one will touch it. And I'm like, I don't remember it's where gone that forever. is. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Forever left, lost. So, you know, it gives you all that information, how to clean it, how to oil it, when to do so. So that if you're ever in the middle of your project and you're like, should I be cleaning this? Should I be doing something to maintain it? <laughs> yes. You can check in here and see what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. We also have our troubleshooting tab because we've all run into that. Where yes. We need a little help along the way. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, our tech isn't on call because it's the weekend or it's after hours yeah. getting the late night quilting in. So you can come in here and just see if these troubleshooting guides can help walk you through what's going on and get you back on the right path for quilting there. Yes. Yeah. And this is, again, this is super nice. This is with the screen, it's built into the Elite machine. So again, this is the 19X Elite, um, which is where we have the wonderful larger seven inch touch screen, which in and of itself is beautiful. And we'll go a little bit more into some other features about it because it is very unique. And the biggest thing is I think a very user friendly way to step into mid arm yes. quilting, just because if you, you know, let's say you do quilt, but you do it with a domestic machine, you're much more used to that machine, right? And unless it's an embroidery machine, it usually doesn't have a screen. And so you're like, oh no, I'm stepping <laughs> into something new, you know? <laughs> so the fact that it has those help features, like Anthony pointed out, right at your fingertips, you don't have to go find your manual. You don't have to keep track of it, right? It's all built in at your fingertips. And again, it's bringing in like your phone, right? You you might use a phone, you might have a laptop that's touch screen. All of that is something that you're very familiar with or use, I would say, at least decently often. Yes. Um, so nice to be able to have that seven inch screen. 
built into the machine for you. So let's go into just a few more features that you can find within it. So a um, few things I want to talk about is actually just the different stitching modes. Um, so there are four different ones you can see here. So starting at the top, we have Precise. Now Precise is super nice because it gives you, I say, or puts you in full control of your machine. So if I start my machine, but I don't move it, it actually will not start stitching until I physically move the machine, at which point it will have that stitch regulation. And so it'll give me those beautiful consistent stitches regardless of how fast or slow I move the machine, which is super nice. Again, you're in full control on that point. The next one we have is Cruise. Now Cruise is a lot like Cruise control in your car. It's what I like to compare it to. Yeah. Um, so where you can speed up or slow down. However, if you turn on the cruise control, it does also still allow it to go at a set speed, right? So if I'm filling in an area, I can say, hey, great. I want you to go ahead and you know continue to stitch at a set speed for me, fill it in. And as soon as I'm done on that cruise mode, I can actually move the machine to the next area and it still has that stitch regulation for me. So we'll speed up and slow down with me. So really nice with that. And then moving down, we have a manual mode. Manual mode, it's just kind of a nice one to have. Um, it's just where the machine, regardless of how fast or slow you move it, is gonna go at a set speed. Now I will click on this and show you just because you can come in here and adjust actually the speed it does stitch, but again, it's still set, if that makes sense. Um, but that way you can say, hey, I want it to go really fast for me. Great, you can do that or <clears throat> excuse me, or you can have it slow down and have it stitch slower for you. And then the last mode I'll show you guys. Um, it's just a basting stitch. I like this one quite a bit because I like the different sizes that it has, a small, medium, and large, uh, and just super easy so I can tag down the edges of my quilt. And then I can go right back in and say, hey, great, you know, I actually want to change what stitching mode I'm in. Boom, there you go, right away. So super simple and easy. Again, kind of the four different stitching modes. Uh, but Anthony, kind of keeping in line with the screen, maybe you could talk about the toolbox for us. That's exactly <laughs> what I want to go into next. So the toolbox provides some great features here. So I really want to show off first, I can't say it enough, bobbins, bobbins, bobbins. <laughs> we have a bobbin yes. estimator on here. So when you are working on a project, you don't want to run out of bobbin out of the blue. That's the worst when you've realized you've been stitching and Nothing's yes. good. It's empty. All of a sudden, gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is a great way to make sure that you're on the right track here. You can name your bobbins by, you know, dropping down, adding a name. So you can name it by color, by project, however you like to keep mm -hmm. track of it. Um, you can set how, like, how much is in your bobbin here. Right. And it'll estimate how much is left in there. And it works just like you know, a traffic light, green, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yellow, you're kind of getting down there. And red is really when you want to check on that, it's going <laughs> to run out on you. <laughs> yes. Another wonderful feature in here that I really, really love is the project and lifetime booklet here. This um, is a neat one. <laughs> yes. I know a lot of people do businesses with their um, quilting and they like to charge per like stitch or how long it took them. So this is a great way if you're doing that to track it and just see how much you've put on it over its entire lifetime, how mm -hmm. much you've used it. And it's also just fun for me to know how much I've been doing yes. it, how long this project took me, mm -hmm. how many stitches it took to do a king size versus a queen or exactly. anything like that. So it's just really fun to have that on hand and know what your projects look like. Yes, and if you're ever um, wanting to do this as a business and maybe you're like, hey, I'm gonna charge you you know, how many stitches I do or whatever, great, that project gives you a way to see how, or maybe you charge per hour or whatever, you know, that way you can go in and keep track of it uh, and see, and so again, it is just kind of a fun thing to be able to keep in mind with it, so. Yes, we also have some nice tools here, a measuring tool because who want, I know we yes. all have our rulers available, <laughs> but I definitely don't want to try and grab mine and finagle it on there. So it's nice that the machine will just measure for you on there. Yes. You just this is a fun one too because it actually can do um, a live update with you. So if you, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. I'll show there. you guys here. You can see you can actually change it between inches and centimeters, and then you can continue to reset the origin. So if let's say something happens, you go to do it, and you're like, oh, I bumped my machine, right? You can simply reset it and move the machine. And I love that it shows you diagonally as well, even if you don't move the machine itself diagonally. So anyway, whether you do move it that way, you know, horizontal, vertical. Any way you're moving it, it will do a live update with you. So I think that's super fun. And then that way, once you move it, you click hold, it'll save that measurement for you. And then at any point, go back in and remeasure maybe a different area. So. Yes. <laughs> 
Um, just kind of cool to be able to have at your fingertips, right? We're trying to help yeah. create and give the most comfort and versatility that we can all right in front of you and in one spot. And that's exactly what this does, so. Absolutely. We have two more on here. We have a calculator, which is very handy. Um, yes. Even though our phones are calculators, it's just nice to have it right in right front in of you. Right in your fingertips, yes. And we have our edge warning. So I don't know about you, but I've had my times where I'm getting lost in it. I'm yes. doing some really nice swirls, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I pull it too close, and it just creates a straight line in the middle of my precious little swirls, and I get really <laughs> upset by it. So this edge warning, you can set it for a half inch out or an inch out, and it will start beeping at you when you get close to your edges so that you know where you're at, mm -hmm. when to pull back up, where, you know, you aren't exactly looking at the back of your machine every time you're quilting. You're looking at what you're doing right. on the quilt. So it's just great to have that reminder of where you're at. Yes, especially when working on a frame just like we have here. So the Cuson Hoop frame with the dual track upgrade. So it is a smaller frame, right? But you can still do any size quilts. However, with that, you still do have one set space you can work, when, work with at a time. So with that, sometimes, like Anthony said, I. I have done it. I would be surprised if there's someone who has not. <laughs> um, but you just get going and you're just, you're not thinking about anything else, right? You kind of just focus in on what it is. But then when you're, you know, moving it, whether it's, hey, I'm coming up on my back and I'm just, again, not paying attention to, ooh, I hit that back rail. What happened for me was actually when I got to the side. Uh, <laughs> just, again, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and it just, again, super nice where you can see and it'll beep at you again, whether it's an inch or a half inch off. And it'll tell you, hey, you're coming up on that edge. Um, and it's really nice too because if you want, um, let's say maybe you're like, hey, the beeping's you know just not for me. You can come in and adjust if it's just a light warning that it gives you, so it's a red sensor that'll kick on, or you can have an audible uh, beeping that'll kick on for you. And um, I do like to point out as well, it's nice when working even on a piece that doesn't go all the way to the edge. Yes. Because if you are working on pantographs, that was kind of the one, one of the first things <laughs> I did, and I was behind it, and I just totally, again, completely oblivious. I'm trying to focus in on the design I'm doing. And I'm just like, Dur -dur 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 -dur. and I was like a good foot off the fabric at this point. No idea. Carla comes in and she's like, um, you're not actually quilting. And I was like, oh my gosh, like it just could not have been further off the fabric. But I'm like, la la la, you know, I just, it's just in what it is. So I um, oh. love that that's a feature that we just have built in for you guys. So you don't ever need to come across that. So. <laughs> super nice and easy for you. So um, with the screen, uh, there actually are a few features that you can control with the screen or the handles itself. Uh, and one of those is actually the start and stop. So this button right here, super simple, right? It's a play button. <laughs> if you tap it, it'll actually highlight it a dark blue. That just tells you, hey, the machine is on. But again, it's in that precise mode. So as if I don't move it, the machine won't stitch, but you can also see that it actually does have a safety feature. So if for some reason something happens, maybe you get a call or somebody comes in or you know is at your door and you have to walk away, no worries if you just give it, I think it's a few seconds or so, right? And you mm -hmm. saw it'll automatically kick off the machine so it doesn't ruin any you know design you may have already done. But again, super simple start and stop button. But if you come to your handles, you actually have that same feature here. So um, this same, same look there, right? You have your start and stop, so click it once, it starts it, click it again, it'll stop it for us. So really nice to be able to kind of have the ability to choose, do I want it at my fingertips here, or really get right where my thumb might sit, or would I prefer to come ahead and use it up on my screen as a tap? So that's nice. And then you'll see kind of over here on this side is what you can choose to do a single stitch. So again, either on the screen, you can tell it, hey, do a single stitch, or moving right back to the handles, and this is on the right side, you do have that button here as well that's a single stitch. Um, and you can adjust it whether it's a full stitch or a half stitch within the settings of the machine. So that's within the screen as well. So super simple. And then Anthony, why don't you talk about the left handles and again, how you can kind of use those same features though on the screen versus the handles. All right, so on your handles here, you have a little up and down arrow and these are actually gonna change your stitches per inch. Super easy down, you're gonna get a lower number, you're gonna get higher. And that can also be done here up on the screen with these um, plus and minus, oh gosh. I like the handles more, they work with me. <laughs> you yeah. can go up, it doesn't wanna let me yes, go down here. Yeah, or you can drag it as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so. I really like that you have everything literally at your fingertips, whether it's on the screen or in these handles here for you. Yes, and again, to be able to have the freedom of, hey, what works best for you? And maybe one project, you're like, hey, I actually really like the handles. Next project, you might find you're using the screen. So definitely um, some flexibility in there uh, as far as what works best for you and what you're going to prefer to do. Uh, one other thing I want to point out before we go ahead and kick it back over to SMP to give you guys some of the amazing pricing, um, but it's actually about the handles themselves. So um, when working with a machine like this, because it's uh, larger than you might be used to with a domestic machine, is we want to be able to make sure that you do have full comfort when you're actually quilting itself. So we have adjustable handles. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys a little bit here. So it's super simple pulled out. Now you can see it's a fully angle adjustable. So whether it's down or I want to have it up or hey, if I want, I can actually have them sit out. The other thing is you'll see here, I'm actually slowly dragging out and extending my handle so I don't have to reach as far. So if you are doing it sitting down, this is actually a really nice feature because you can simply do that. And then again, lock it into place. But that way you don't have to stretch all the way back here just to be able to you know move the machine so it is a nice easy adjustable and both handles do that so again it can really sit at what's most comfortable or what angle is most comfortable for you so really wonderful feature to be able to yeah. have with it so um, again thank you everybody for joining us this where um, I'm LJ or Laurel Daniels and we have Anthony here and today we talked with you guys about the Q-Zone hoop frame with the dual track upgrade and then the 19X Elite on that frame. Um, there was one question I do want to just answer really quickly because we mentioned um, there's some components we have on here, <coughs> excuse me, um, for automation. So we don't have it set up for automation, but you can use automation on this exact setup. So even if you're using like our 16 on this frame, absolutely you can use automation with it. So. I think that was it, but I don't know if there's any other things you'd like to add. If not, maybe we can kick it back over to SMP. I think we're good. I think I could talk for another 40 <laughs> minutes, but I'll let them take it back over. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I would find you keep it going for another 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, but yeah, was there any questions or anything on it that we might be able to help answer? You know what? I didn't see any uh, okay. tons of questions. People are loving it. They really just want to know how can I yes. get it today? Because it is day five of Quilt Fest, and today's the day. Yes, it is awesome. Day. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll kick it back over to you then, and you okay. can let them know how to get it. Thank you so much, and I've got great news too. So thank you, LJ. <laughs> thank you, Anthony. Have a great day. Appreciate all your thank help. You. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. All right, everybody. Well, you know your friend Blaine. He's always working for you. So you have to remember what he did yesterday. And we're going to tell you how to get this. You can order this right now. Actually, Blaine called Grace and our friends at Grace dropped their prices yesterday. So you get more savings. We're talking about the Cunique 19X Elite. That's the 19 inch long arm quilting machine and that Q-Zone hoop frame that LJ and Anthony just did an amazing demo for us. Check this out. Quilt Fest pricing, $7449, $7,449. Order now. This is amazing Quilt Fest pricing. Prices dropped yesterday. You can order right now. Just call 800-401-8151 or you can chat live. They are right there waiting for you to chat. They're standing by. You can place your order right now. I wouldn't wait. If this is what you're thinking about, it is day five. They're going to go fast. You should order this right now. And again, you're getting that free accessories package with your purchase. And that's a $500 value. So this is a fantastic machine. This is a fantastic Q-Zone hoop frame. I don't know what else I can say. 800-401-8151. Uh, and certainly you can just chat right now to place your order. And we're super grateful to our friends at the Grace Company for just like Blaine calls them and they say, yeah, Blaine, we'll do whatever you want. We'll lower the prices for you right now. And so they did it. <laughs> so we love our friends and thank you to them. Right, Blaine? Well, you are right, Jane. <laughs> I, I mean, I again, back to you doing all the work and all of us just reaping the rewards. Thank you. Hey, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> We're happy you're here. <laughs> this is good news well, for everybody. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, that's all that matters. If, as long as the SMP Nation's happy out there, I'm happy. Oh, that, that's so nice. I do. I really think that's a spectacular price for the machine and the frame oh. and the accessories package. 
We have got some really, really good prices uh, this week on the show. Uh, you know, some prices are, are, you know, kind of they're better than normal, but they're like the same at some other the festivals. But this this one, some of these are better than they've ever been. Uh, and so I'm pretty pumped about, especially the Grace products, them coming in and lowering the price for us even more than it already was, uh, is a huge shot in the arm, uh, you know, with all those products. So we're really happy about that. And, you know, there's just some products that are really trending out there right now that, uh, are, you know, it's really, really good. Our King Quilter, uh, we've got some really good pricing on it and it's doing extremely well. And so super excited about the, all the products we're showing today. And, and, you know, Jane, next up, uh, I've got another great product coming up that, you know, I think it's a little, uh, people, it's underestimated, I guess you could say. People just don't realize how great a machine this is. But, Jane, we'll see you back here in about 30 minutes. But, guys, coming up next, we have a treat for you. We have Sam Fung coming in. Now, Sam, you know, he's an education coordinator for Janome. And I don't know if y'all know this, but Janome and Elena are, you know, basically the, both machines come from the same company. They're, uh, they're it's Janome and Elena. So he's an educator for both. Uh, he's been here this week uh, doing things for both Janome and Elena machines, but he's been sewing for over 45 years and he joined, uh, you know, Janome 15 years ago. And prior to doing that, he owned a custom sewing business where he made all these fancy uh, wedding gowns and all kinds of different things he did and home decor. And he even taught students of all ages how to sew. Now, Sam, you know, he's definitely the resident notions expert at Janome. And uh, he's his claim to fame is he says if he he could probably open his own store, he has so many of his own notions. But everybody loves Sam. We're super excited to have him here uh, this week. Uh, he's been with us. So y'all welcome back to the show today, Sam Fung. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Sam. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you? I am doing fantastic. And I, you know, basically, I think some of these Elena and Janome machines are so uh, underrated, I guess you would say, because the the quality of the stitches are unbelievable. And the technology that are in these machines, I think it just a lot of times goes unnoticed because I, I just I'm there. I'm such a fan of these machines. And I think, you know, you're really highlighting them this week uh, of just all the things they can do. And I I saw some of the comments that people were talking about. They just didn't have any idea. And so I really appreciate what you've done this week with the demonstrations. And, and so anyway, we're going to let you get going because I know you got a lot of stuff to cover. And then I'll come back in about 30 minutes and tell everybody how they can get their hands on one. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. Today we're talking about the Elna 792 Pro. It is the Elna top of the line sewing, quilting, machine is not an embroidery but it does have decorative stitch also this is the same machine as the Janome m8 so if you've been looking for the at the m8 or you have an m8 and you pretty much know this machine this is the elna version it's just a different color so let's just start off by looking at all the accessories that come with the machine as you can tell this machine comes with the nice big foot control and you also have a side foot cutter, which means when this is attached to the machine, I can step on the smaller foot cutter and cut my threads, both top and bottom, without using the button on the machine. Not only that, this machine here comes with the ASR, which is the accurate stitch regulator with this machine. This is standard for Dielna. And I was once to want to show you what our stitch regulator looks like. At the bottom of the foot, as you can see, this area right here is the sensor that senses your fabric movement. So the needle move in time when you move your fabric. It comes with four different feet. There is a open toe. You get the closed toe. You also get the echo quilting. And you also have the patented ruler foot that comes with the ASR, the stitch regulator. And these feet just interchange by pushing this black button on the back. If I push the button back here, you guys can see the foot just drops off. And to exchange it, all I have to do is push it back in, like so. Try to do this on the side. 
and it's back on. It's just very easy to attach and it hooks up to the back of the machine. Okay, and the other feature comes with it. We have a cloth guide. And I'll show you in a minute how this works. The cloth guide allows you to adjust where your guide is up to eight inches from the center needle position. And I'll show you that in a minute, okay? It also comes with your dual feet foot for, most people call it a walking foot. Ours is actually called a dual feet because it is actually um, operated by the shaft. So it is motor driven. So you pull your fabric both top and bottom and you get the nice big wide foot. You, all have, you also have a second ruler, ruler work foot for doing regular ruler work. For non-stitch regulator ruler work, you have that. You can have a couple of foot for doing darning, or some people still use this, what I consider it as an old-fashioned um, free motion quilting foot. You also get the dual feet HP2 foot. The HP2 stands for high performance foot. This is a dual feet quarter scant quarter inch foot it you can use the left or the right side of the foot to give you a scant quarter inch and then you get the regular um scant quarter inch foot which is the hp2 and this hp foot excuse me you get a quilting bar guide and you get two stitch plate this one right here is the hp2 as you can tell it says hp2 it has a single hole in the left needle position and the reason they put the single hole in the left is because we get a much nicer straight stitch when the needle is in the left needle position. Then you get the other single hole foot, which has three holes and three single holes, we call it. So this way you can use it in the left, the center, or the right needle position. Okay. You also got some clear feet. These two, these are your... Um, decorative stitch foot. A lot of people use it and you have an open toe foot. A lot, of, a lot of people use this for doing applique work. Then you have some feet for doing blind hem for those of you who do garments, an overcast foot, a rolled hem, a zipper foot, and you actually get two. You get a regular zipper foot and you have what's called a concealed zipper foot or some people call it an invisible zipper foot. They give you this so you have an option. So it's not just for quilting, it's for you sewers also. Um, you get two different, two more different quarter inch foot. You get the one without the guy, one with the guy. You also get a foot for sewing on buttons. You get another, These. this is a very short open toe foot. A lot of people like to use this one for doing applique because the toe in the front of it's much shorter and they can see where they're going. So you get this foot also. You get three different non-stitch regulated quilting foot. You have the open toe, the closed toe, and the echo. And these, these, all these foot right here, the bottom two rows just snaps onto the ankle. So there's nothing to change other than just snapping them on and off. And you also get a, um, buttonhole foot with the stabilizer plate. The stabilizer plate is used for if you're doing something very sheer or something very thick, it will bar tack in the correct position like it's supposed to. You also get this nice box to store all the feet that comes with the machine. Not only that, we get this nice big extension table right here and the extension table also have a drawer in the front for extra storage. You can put your needle plates here. You have place for your bobbins and some of the feet that you use most often here. So this is a nice add-on for the table. The machine itself, let me just point this out. The machine itself is a flatbed, a steel body flatbed. So it's nice and solid as you can see. The machine got some very nice features. We have a thumb wheel right here on the side and what this thumb wheel allows me to do is manually lower my needle without going over to the hand wheel. I can raise and lower my needle just where I need it very precise. We have a 13 and a half inch throat space on the machine. Not only that, on this particular machine, 
they slim down the profile. So that way, when you're sitting in front of it, you're sewing, it can easily see the needle area much easier. On top of the machine, you notice we have a built-in spool stand. And you notice there is two different spindles for it. This spindle where I have my thread right now is for sewing. The second spindle, you put a second spool of thread here. You can wind a bobbin while you're sewing or free motion quilting. This machine have dual motors in it, which means when I'm sewing or quilting, I can just push this over, push the button, and my screen tells me I'm bobbin winding. When it's full, it will just simply pop over and I can take it off. So that way, if I have two of the same spool of thread, same color thread, I can be winding a bobbin and sewing the same time. It is a wonderful time saver. Not only that, if you look, I have a nice big seven inch screen um, on the machine. It's measured hard diagonally, seven inch. We have 91 needle position on this machine. 4.5 is my center needle position. I can adjust the needle position by touching the minus tab, like here. So you can see it moving on screen, and you can also see it moving in the needle on the bottom. If I touch the plus, you can see the needle actually moving one cent, one millimeter at a time up to nine millimeters. Not only that, on the machine itself, I have two knobs. So this, the knob on the left, it would traditionally be my stitch width. But since I'm on a straight stitch, this knob will move my needle to the left or to the right. As you guys can see, the needle moving to the left and I can move it over to the right very easily and seamlessly. The second button right here with the dash lines, that is always going to be my stitch length. Uh, my default stitch length on a straight stitch is 2.40. I can just turn the knobs and turn it to a 5.0 stitch length, which is my longest stitch length available on this machine, okay? So let me show you some other things. Now we know we have three different throat plates for, that comes with this machine. This one has a fully automatic needle plate remover. What I do have to do is I'll come to the screen. I touch the key to lock out the screen. I get a icon right here with this dark blue with the arrow pointing up. I simply touch that and watch the needle plate just pops up. My message on the screen said the needle plate is not secure to put, let me put the other plate on. So I'm just going to reach over and just grab the single hole needle plate. I simply line up the edge, let go, and I get a message saying make sure the proper pressure foot is attached. And it knows I have the straight stitch needle plate on. So I'm going to touch X, unlock my machine. As you can see, now my other stitches are grayed out. And it's only giving me the straight stitches because the machine knows I have a single needle plate on the machine. So to change the plate back out again, I simply touch the lockout key, touch this. The plate pops up. I take this plate off. Take the next plate, put the zigzag plate back on, let go. I get a message again. It's a safety thing. Touch the X, unlock it, and I'm ready to go. There's all my stitches again. Isn't that great? Very easy to use, very intuitive. No more fighting with the screw, trying to get the plate on and off and all that. Now, going back to the cloth guy, let me show you how this works. I simply take the plate cover off, or the bobbin cover off, put it to the side right here. My cloth guy goes in place, just this would go in place just like my bob, uh, bobbin cover. If this goes in place of it, I snap it down and I'm ready to go. Now once it's down, over here I have a tab right here on the side. I push this tab up, now I can slide my cloth guy to where I want it. So let's say I don't want to use my quarter inch foot. I just want to use my standard foot that comes with my machine and I want a quarter inch. Well, right here on my thread guide, 
when I clock guy, I have a red line and there's a quarter inch marking right here. Right here, it says quarter inch. Can I see that? So I simply move it to the quarter inch marking, take the tab and push this down. This locks it in place. So now my cloth guy is not going to slide anymore. All I have to do is take a piece of fabric, put it on here, underneath the foot, and I was going to push the start button. The foot down come down automatically, and I can stitch my quarter inch simply using the guide. When I get to the end, hit stop. And I cut my thread for you. There. Isn't that a nice stitch? Quarter inch stitch. Nice, easy to use. Another thing now to replace it, put it back. I simply unlock it, slide the slider back, push the cut this button right here to unlock the cloth guy. And I'm able to take it off and put the plate back on. That is if I can find what I did with it. All this light in here. Did I knock it over? Anyway, um, where is my plate cover? Anyway, let me go on. How many of you have lost your plate cover like I did? No problem. I'll just borrow this one for the time being so we can go on with the demonstration. Another feature I want to show you on this machine we have 450 stitches. To see my stitches on the screen, I have this stitch chart right here because there's no lid on here to show my stitches. I simply come up here, touch my stitch chart. It's showing you all my utility stitches right here. Utility stitch number one, number two. I have 13 pages of stitches. Come down one. There's my buttonholes. I got all these different buttonhole stitches. I have eyelets. Come down. Look at all the different applique stitches that I have for this machine. The M stands for middle. That means the needle comes down the center needle position. The R means the needle will drop in the right needle position. So I get a much bigger bite if I have the needle to the right. So you can then, then the F, L means the needle drops in the left needle position. So I have all these different applique stitches um, on this machine. Not only that, if I go down, I can see heirloom stitches. There's my quarter inch stitch. Here's my serpentine stitch. Everybody just love a serpentine stitch. Here's my serpentine stitch. And I'm just show you real quick some of their other quilt stitches on here. So many beautiful stitches, great for doing crazy quilting or even putting a decorative stitch on your binding. Um, Here's some satin stitches, more quilt stitches right here. And you even have a serpentine stitch that looks like has some little micro um, blanket stitches to it. You have this right here, these couple of stitches right here. This is my hand look stitch. So you can actually do some hand look stitches on your quilt if you wanted to. There's some quilt style, what they're calling quilt style stitches. Closing down, I have satin stitches, I have bridge stitches. I have, look at all my decorative stitches with some beautiful stuff on here. Okay, I even have ladder stitch, all kinds of different stitches. I just wanna go through and let you guys see. Look at, aren't these cute? You got little animals on here. You got, even got washing instructions for those of you who make garments. You have washing instructions. Some of my favorite stitches, these three right here, your needle, your thread and your scissors. And what I wanna show you is this, that stitches, if I want a particular stitch, I can just select it right here from the screen directly. And there is my stitch. Let's say I wanna combine my stitches because we have that real cute pattern. I come up here to this one icon which shows the hearts and the hearts and the spade combined. I touch this and my display window is now blank. So now I can start combining my stitch. Here are my three stitches I showed you earlier from the stitch chart. So if I want the needle, the thread, and the scissors, I just touch those three and that's how they're gonna stitch when I stitch them out. Let's say if I want to add something else to it, I can come down here and let's say I wanna add the dress form. 
I can pop that dress form right there. And you can see how these stitches all connects together. At the end, I have a square for a space if I want to put a space right here, or I can put a locking stitch. What a locking stitch do is if, if I put this on here, the locking stitch here, it stops me from adding any more stitches to it. See that? And if I want, if I, because if I don't put a locking stitch, when I get through the stitch combination, and this is not here, I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. If I took this arrow, this one is highlighted now in blue. I don't know if it shows up on camera because all the studio lights kind of bright. Um, it's highlighted. It's the one I'm editing. And I can delete it. I have a trash can right here. I can delete that. Whoops. I just deleted the dress form. No big deal. Just simply add it back on again. And then I can add more stuff to it if I want to. Anything I don't want. I can even add letters to it. So if I want letters, I come up here to ABC. I have several different fonts available. There's actually three different types, but there's actually um, your block here and here. What's the difference? This block on top, you have uppercase and lowercase. This block down here, you don't have a lowercase. That's why it says nine millimeter, because when you have a lowercase like this, for example, I'll show you, let me select block, okay. Right now, I'm going to spell the word to know me. When I go to lowercase, okay, I simply touch this. All my fonts goes to lowercase. Let's finish spelling. A-N-O-M-E. And then I'll put a space between it. And then I'm going to go put a locking stitch. Okay. As you can see, I've got a bunch of different letters and numbers and stuff like that to, to do it on this okay our exclamation points lots of different things okay so to put a locking stitch i simply have to go to the decorative stitch section pull up any decorative stitch there's my locking stitch so now when it comes to the end of the pattern it will lock it won't repeat now i want to see what i combined on my combination i have a magnifier right here so if i touch this it will show me how my design is going to stitch out and in the order of what it's going to do. So let's stitch this combination out and you can see it. Like I said, this is a nine millimeter stitch out. So what I'm going to do is I have some um, stabilizer behind me. I do need to change out my foot. So I just simply push the lever in the back, take out the standard foot. I'm going to come over here and pick up my decorative stitch foot and how I like to put this on is just simply take the foot and push it up and lock it into position and we'll close the screen and hit start and these are nine millimeter letters as you can see and it's doing the spool of thread and I can see what it's doing because every time it stitches, whichever design is stitching, it turns blue on my screen. So I know which pattern is being stitched out on the machine. As you can see, I'm not very good at controlling the fabric. Now starting the letters. I'm almost to the end. One more letter to go. And it's doing the E now. And it's doing the tie off stitch. That's the locking stitch. Now it's done. Hit the scissors. It's done. Okay. Okay, what is it doing now? Okay, it's done. And there is my letter combination. Isn't this great? Okay. Now, there's another feature. Oh, let me talk. We're talking about the letters. Okay. What are you doing? Okay. Let me clear this. 
I don't know why it's freezing up on me. Okay, like everything else, like all electronics, they sometimes don't want to act right. So we just simply turn it off, turn it back on and reset it. Okay, like we're talking about letters. Now, just want to show you on nine millimeter block, all I have is uppercase, okay? I can do large letters or small letters right here for smaller fonts. It won't even give me the option to choose a lower case. And you can see I still have numbers and everything available to me in here. Another nice thing we have on this machine, which is something that's new to the Elna line and Janome line, is this. This is sewing application. This is sewing application for general sewing, normal sewing. So if I go to quilting, you can see I got a lot of different quilting applications. For example, I have patchwork uh, piecing, free motion quilting, ruler work, variable zigzag, applique, and so forth, even hand look stitch. Now I just wanna show you this for ruler work. I simply touch ruler work. I have a choice of medium and light. This is how high up my foot is on between the foot and the fabric. If my fabric is lower, I simply touch light and I'm ready to do ruler quilting. It's that simple. There's nothing to, there's no feed dogs to lower, nothing to do that because my feed dogs on this particular model automatically drops. If you guys can see this, see how the feed dogs are lowered right here? There's nothing in the way. What happens on this machine is every time I stop sewing, the feed dogs drop automatically. When I start sewing, the feed dogs will come back up automatically and re-engage. I don't have to worry about hitting the needle up, needle down for it to come up. It just comes up automatically. It's just that simple, okay? One thing, another feature I want to show you is this. I need to put the regular foot back on. And this is something new to us. And this is very, very cool. And let me have to go back to the regular sewing mode. Okay. And it's right here. You see this it has a foot. Looks like it's just high, just barely above the fabric. Don't get this one confused with this one, with the needle down and the foot up. This is what's called a foot up feature, which means when this is highlighted, every time I stop sewing, the foot will come up, the needle will stay down. Okay, that's this is highlighted. I'm going to unhighlight it. This is called a uh, floating feature. This is new on our machine. What a floating feature does is when this is selected, it means the foot hovers over the feed dog 0 0.01 centimeters. Basically, it's just a sheet of paper width between hovering above the feed dogs, which means when I'm sewing something like this, okay, I have a sample right here. This is a clear piece of vinyl. And if you ever sewn vinyl before, or pleather, or anything like that, that grips your machine, it doesn't really happen when you're sewing it, when you have the right side together, because the right side of the pleather, the, the grippy part is together, and the back side slides fine. It's when you're trying to do top stitching. And what happens, the feet get stuck on the either plate and the, the uh, fabric is stuck on the plate and on the foot. Well, with the floating feature, I'm going to make this length a little bit longer and I will show you this. I'll put a stitch length at 3.0, hit start, and see how easily it is sewing. I'm not tugging on the fabric. I'm not doing anything and I'm able, able to sew. And look, this looks like your normal sewing 3.0 stitch length. You saw how easy that was. I didn't have to pull it. I simply let it go and it stitched right through it. So this is different from the foot up feature. Now the foot up feature, I have both of them highlighted. And let me show you that again. The foot up feature, what it does is when I stop, the foot will come up. So I'm going to do is again, is I'm going to 
hit the start button to make sure there's some fabric. Now, when I stop it, see how the foot comes up? This is now free. Watch what happens when I hit the start button again, the foot's going to hover just barely over the feed dogs, allowing me to see how it's so, so easily by itself. It just floats over it. Okay. And this is a new feature on the machine. See that? That not that wonderful? This you can see the thing moved itself. If if this was actually held on like a normal, it wouldn't do this little angle line. It would just be stuck there. Okay. Is there any questions? I'm going to bling bling back on to see if there's any uh, anybody have any questions for me that they didn't answer. I know my colleague is on the computer also monitoring the live to help answer questions. If there was any questions that SMP you know, needed help to answer with, but they're really good at answering your questions. Well, Sam, I think we've got it covered. Uh, it sounds like, man, you did a great job with that. And I sure do appreciate uh, everything you've done this week. Thanks for being here. And again, great demonstration. And I'm going to tell them how they can get this. Okay. Thank you, Blaine. Thanks, Sam. Okay, everyone. Hey, this is the, the Elena 792 Pro sewing and quilting machine. Now, this is just exactly like the M8 Janome. And the difference of it is the M8 can only be bought in the retail stores, brick and mortar stores. You can't buy it online. Uh, this one is exactly the same machine, uh, but we can ship this nationwide right to your doorstep. The other difference of it is when you buy this one, you're getting the ASR with it. The Janome, the ASR is a separate purchase. So, you know, when you be mindful about that, when you're looking at the pricing, we're including it with this price. Uh, you're getting the ASR. So that is a big, big deal. I tell you what, because I, you saw Sam showing you, you know, talking about that. Uh, it can do so many things. Again, we're going to ship this free nationwide right to your doorstep. Uh, we do have some financing available. You see the price there is $9,999. We do have a call-in special. So give us a call on that or go to our website and chat with our live chatters. They can also give you that call-in special, as we call it. They can give you that quilt quilt fest pricing. So make sure you go to our live chat on our website or call in at 800-401-8151. They can take your order. And uh, guys, again, I, you know, I think these... This machine is one of the most underrated machines out there. This thing is so loaded down with features. Uh, it is such a great machine and the stitch quality on it is unmatched. So, all right, let's continue on. We're gonna go all the way up to Canada. What do y'all think? Or British Columbia, I should say. And uh, we got our good buddy, Nicholas Turkan uh, is back in. He's gonna talk all about that handy quilter, Moxie XL. Now, Nicholas, uh, he's a multi-talented, very creative individual. Now, y'all probably saw that from his, his session uh, he's been on this week. His journey into quilting began in 2012 with one quilt that quickly turned into several and made him realize that he needed a better way to finish these quilt tops than a small domestic machine. So he started on a small domestic machine. That just tells you anybody can do this. In addition to long arm quilting for customers, he has started to teach free motion quilting uh, workshops where he where students can learn the confidence and skills required to further their own quilting abilities. And uh, guys, we are super excited to have him. He was here with us last year. We got him again uh, this year. So y'all welcome back to the show, Nicholas Turkan. Good morning, Blaine. How are you? I am fantastic. We see that you got that fancy jacket on again. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> I, I am I, so glad you're here. You know, I wasn't going to wear it, but my studio was a little chilly this morning. I thought, well, maybe a little more shameless self-promotion will do me some hey, good. So it got it got a lot of comments yesterday. So, hey, we sure pre appreciate you coming back today. And I know uh, we love this Moxie XL. So we're going to let you get going on that. And then I'm going to come back and tell them all the specials on it. Excellent. Thanks so much. Well, good morning, SMP Nation. Yeah, I'm here to talk about the Moxie XL. And let me bring that in a little closer so you can see the, the branding on the back. So this is our 18 inch long arm uh, quilting machine. So this machine is one of the, the smaller uh, class of machines that we sell. So we have the Moxie family, which is the 
regular Moxie is a 15 inch. We now have the Moxie XL, which is an 18 inch. So you get an extra three inches of quilting space. And then we have the Amara class and the Infinity class. So those are the, the larger families. Uh, but today with the Moxie XL, uh, this is an 18 inch machine. It will stitch 2,100 stitches per minute. So it is reasonably fast. The bigger machines only, they're about 2,500 stitches. So it's not far behind on that. Now, this does come in at a better price point because it's a smaller machine. So Blaine will get into that later, but uh, this comes on a, you have a couple of different frame options. So I have mine on the loft frame. This is set up at an eight foot length. Now it does come with an optional two foot extension. So you could have it 10 feet. So again, that is just slightly smaller than what our bigger machines are. So you can still do a lot of amazing quilting on this smaller frame with a slightly smaller throat space. So again, 18 inches, 2,100 stitches per minute. It is still a fantastic machine. So I'm going to have you switch over my camera here. I'm just gonna, there we go. I'm gonna show you, this is what the Moxie XL screen looks like. It's a touch screen, nice and simple. We have needle up down, so it is set for that. Uh, right now I'm in precision mode at 10 stitches per inch. So that means it will continuously uh, stitch and the encoders on the carriage will speed up and slow down the machine. So it'll always be putting 10 stitches per inch. We do have our manual mode where the machine will just run at whatever speed we set it at. And we have a cruise mode, which is the best combination of the two, where at a minimum, the machine is gonna be running at Right now it's set to 200 stitches per minute. So it's gonna constantly cycle the machine in the background. And then if I move the machine faster than that, it's gonna kick in and try and speed up the machine to always make sure it's putting 10 stitches per inch. But I prefer precision. I feel like if you have the ability to have precisely 10 stitches per inch, why wouldn't you wanna stick with it? And again, that goes down from four stitches per inch, which would be like a nice little basting stitch here, which I've done, all the way up to, I believe it's 18 stitches per inch. We do have different features. We can adjust the lighting on here. So nice and bright, but for camera purposes, I'm going to keep it turned down. We have uh, stitch counts on here. So you can reset your stitch count. So if you wanted to know how many stitches you put into one quilt, so you could put that into the label or break, uh, brag about it, you know, you can count the stitches per project, and this is going to be a lifetime count of stitches. So it's pretty neat to know how many stitches you've put on your machine. So this one I'm at uh, 108,000 stitches, 744. One of my other machines is at 116 million stitches. So we know that Handy Quilter has the guts to stick with it for the long haul. We also have uh, overspeed alarm. So if you're stitching too fast, that will alert you to it. And then a few other features there, which I'm just gonna skip over because we're gonna run out of time. Uh, on the handlebar, these ones are not programmable. So you get what's here. So we have needle up down, and then we have a minus and a plus. So the plus and the minus, if you look, this is gonna increase my stitches per inch on the screen. And the minus is gonna bring it back down. And then we have our play pause button this to turn the machine on and off when you're ready to start stitching. So, and again, while I have this off, I'll show you, this is what the side of the frame looks like. So we can have it adjusted for, this frame fits a couple different machines of different sizes. And as you can see here, I have this loaded in clear view mode. So on this frame, we call it the high position or the low position. So this is the low position where our backing bar and our front, our quilt front is low. In the high position, this would become where our quilt top gets loaded, and this bar would be where our quilt back gets loaded. So they get reversed. Now, when you assemble this frame, you have to choose, do you want it in the high position or low position? And then it is set for the frame. If you wanted to change those positions, it's 14 screws. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if you wanted to do that, but you would have to take apart the frame and put it back together again. So 
And on here, I have the Glide uh, two foot installed on this machine. It comes with the open toe foot and the closed toe foot, just like all of our other machines. But I really like this foot because it is easy to see where I'm quilting. And I have added a very high loft polyester batting here for my little sample. So it's very lofty and puffy. So it's going to show great quilting definition. But uh, this little bowl foot is great because as you see going over the edge, it just automatically glides right over it. So I think let's time, let's do some stitching. So I'm just going to come to my edge here. I'm going to do a needle down, needle up, and that's going to allow me to pull up my bobbin thread. And I'm just going to do a couple more needle down, needle ups, and that's going to kind of lock my stitches in place. And now I'm going to press the start button and I'm ready to start quilting. So you can do just some little simple loops to start. If you've never quilted before, this is where you want to start. Simple and easy, learning how to fill a space without getting trapped. We call that traveling. And then when you're getting a little more adventurous, you can start adding some cute little extra designs into there. So you can start doing some little five point stars. Everyone, everyone probably remembers how to draw those from school. See that a little better look how cute and simple that is and right from the start once you get loaded these machines are so amazing to get started with quilting you basically just have to follow the directions that come in the box and you are ready to go so we can switch back to my other camera every moxie moxie xl they're going to come with this accessory kit right in the box. And when you open this up, you're going to have some awesome little cards here. So this is for loading the quilt. This explains the highs and the low positions. So again, I kind of went over that, but you have it right in the index card. So when you get your machine, it's going to explain to you why you might want to choose one or the other. So that's first card we got. Quick reference guide. So this quick reference guide has all of our threading instructions right there and all of the uh, buttons that are on that screen demonstrated right here. So this is something great. You can keep this right beside your machine. And when you're getting started, when you're having trouble remembering all the things you have to remember, you can just grab your reference card, take a look, take a quick glance, figure out what you need to figure out and keep it close at hand because it is right there. Next, you get some awesome stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? So if you want to decorate your machine, decorate the frame, if you want to add this to your, you know, favorite coffee mug that you want to make it more of a Moxie brand, you get to do that. So some stickers and we have some awesome, there's a, a backing sticker with an arrow and a quilt top sticker with an arrow. So if you decide that you are going to put your machine into, let's say the low position, that's what I have here, and you forget which direction is the backing supposed to be loaded, which direction is the top, you can put those stickers right on the edge of the frame. Sorry, I'll move that. You can put it right here on the edge of the frame and you'll have a little reference right there knowing, okay, it's supposed to go over the, over the roller in that direction and the backing is supposed to go over in that. So the stickers are there, you know, great to add on to those. You get this fantastic little getting started guide. So we have some wonderful package of threads and pins in there. Sorry, there's a, 
a glare on the bag. Uh, and also included in there is a yard of this uh, grid fabric that I've loaded onto the machine. So I've already broken into my box and stolen it out of there to put on there. Now, I just got my uh, this machine on Monday. So it arrived on Monday. I was assembling it on Tuesday and Wednesday. Yesterday I was on live uh, in the morning on the MR20, in the afternoon on the Pro Stitcher Premium. And in the meantime, I had quilted an entire, it was a 60 by 80 inch uh, kind of lap quilt, quilted on here with the uh, Pro Stitcher light while I was working and getting everything else set up. So that is why you see there's a whole other screen up here. This is for the Pro Stitcher light system. And if you're more interested in Pro Stitcher light in the computerization aspect of the quilting, uh, you can come back at 2.30 and I'll go over Pro Stitcher light for the Moxie XL. But back to this. Um, and inside this little pack, we have a little getting started guide of what's included. And right here, we have a cute little instruction guide. So if you have never quilted before, and this is your first, or I should say, this is your first long arm, first time touching a long arm, it's going to give you some excellent little starts here, doing some stippling, adding those little five point stars. If we flip it over, we have some continuous orange peel designs. So right from the get-go, Handy Quilter is here to support you on your journey of learning how to use these machines. And then also there's some of the important but less glamorous stuff. We have some extra bobbins, uh, oiler, needles, uh, a little threader, and some of the tools needed for, for those things. So, so that is the party in a box as Kim and Christina are fond of calling it. So that gets you started with the Moxie XL. So that I wanted to, to show you what comes with that. And at this point, we can come back to the machine and we're gonna do some more stitching unless there's any more questions in there. I don't know. I can now see the questions on my, on my second camera, which is pretty great because this way I can try and keep up with them as they're going. Or if anyone wants to give me some suggestions for what they want to see me quilt, they could pop those into the comments and I can maybe try and do some of that too. In the meantime, I'll maybe do some of the continuous orange, uh, continuous curves. Yes, you can add robotics to the machine. Uh, Pro Stitcher Lite is the version for it. So we have Pro Stitcher Premium, which goes on the larger classes of machines that are on the heavier frames with heavier machines. And on the smaller family of machines, we have Pro Stitcher Lite. And I'll be going over the differences between Pro Stitcher Lite and Premium later on. has a little bit of a different feel to it. It's like when you buy a brand new car and you got to figure out where the button is. You know, do I like this? How does the engine work? But I'm still getting used to this. <laughs> yeah, free... Freehand stitching is pretty mesmerizing. I know lots of people could probably watch that all day. I need some suggestions for designs. 
What does somebody want to see? Maybe let's do some, some flowers. See if I can manage some feathers. in my view i'm trying to read the comments while the camera is shaking slightly while i'm quilting so <laughs> we'll see i don't draw or paint that is not my not my thing just many many years of practice with these machines but the whole point is you basically have to start somewhere um you know start as do something as simple as you need to to get started and you just have to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. Oh, <laughs> an animal. Well, I don't know if I can. Uh, let's see if I can do a little. I guess I forgot his little front arms. <laughs> but yeah, but the point is, with these machines, you can do just about anything, anything you want to uh, when it comes to free motion consulting. And that's what I, with this foot on here, um, you can do ruler work on here. You can add any of the other accessory feet that come for all of the handy quilter uh, machines. They will fit on uh, this model of machine. Yeah, little, little cute bunny. I feel like spring has sprung in Vancouver. The sun is shining, flowers are blooming. So that just seems like the right thing. Let's see, what other questions are there in here? Let's see, oh, somebody says pebbles. Yeah, pebbling is... If you guys could feel the amazing texture, hopefully you can see that here. Oh, somebody asked how to replace the foot. I will happily show you how to replace the foot. I just gotta grab my tool. Uh, all of the feet are interchangeable. So all you, let me grab the foot here. And again, there's this one is off to the side. You just loosen the little screw. And again, this is a hopping foot. It does lift up and down. 
So sometimes you need to lift it up and pull that foot away. And same thing when you're adding the other foot, sometimes you just need to lift it up a little bit to slide the foot on. And there we go. And then just tighten the screw back in. Yes, this machine is stitch regulated. So there's actually three different modes of stitching. That was the manual mode, which is unregulated, and then the precision, which is super regulated, and cruise mode, which is a combination of the two where you have both of them. So let me pull up my thread. Again, I'm gonna take a... I'll show you the difference. I'm gonna... Uh, I'm going to turn my machine into manual mode, and I'm going to use 500 uh, stitches per minute and turn it on. So this is very slow. I don't know if you can see, but my stitches are huge because that is way too slow for me. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it on to 1,500 stitches per minute, which is going to be pretty fast, and this will allow you to hear the difference. stitches that was maybe a little too fast for me because I don't uh, practice that as much as I possibly could. Um, but you could hear the difference of the machine. It runs at a constant speed and it doesn't rev up and down. Now I'm going to put it into cruise mode. Now this is the combination mode. So this means I have it set at 200 uh, stitches per minute in the background. So that means once I press start, the machine is going to start cycling and it's going to move just very slowly at 200 stitches per minute. And as I speed up the machine, it's going to take over into like the, the precision part and start doing 10 stitches per inch. So this one, you will hear the machine kind of rev up and down as you go. So that's the 200 in the background. Every time you stop moving, the machine is still taking stitches. So if you want to make sure that you have nice sharp points, every time you kind of get to that point, if you hesitate for a moment, it's going to take a couple extra stitches and really make those points nice and sharp. There's, you know, one of the points here. If you fall right in between two stitches when you are on that point, it won't, it, the needle hasn't put a stitch there yet. So that's why some people prefer to use cruise mode. And again, this was on 200, which might be a little slow for the background. Um, I'll turn it up to 500 and see what that feels like. do any zen tangles that's maybe close to that but yeah so lots of different features on this um, these are the same three modes of stitching that we have on the larger machines um, all the same uh, feet fit onto this except for the felting foot um, you know there's a, a few different uh, all, all of the rulers fit for it um, I don't have it installed but I do have this is the the ruler base for them. And why don't I, I'm gonna unclip that, slide the machine off to the side and show you what that looks like. So you just pop it on, sorry. I was looking at what I was doing, not at the camera. So you just slide it in and then push it forward until you hear it click. And now I got this nice sturdy surface that if I'm doing ruler work, it's going to stabilize the quilt underneath. Uh, 
show you how to thread the machine. Absolutely. I'm just going to cut the thread, pull it out. And again, we're going to see how well. Let me just put this down for a sec just so I can cut my thread nice and clean. Okay. We're going to see if I can do this. I'm looking at my, my, my camera stand in my messy studio. So uh, we have from our thread stand going up, we have our little pigtail screw here. So we're going to go through the top hole, coming from the back of the machine to the front, come around, Oops. back to front, and then third time back to front. Oops. I'm going to try switching hands. You're really putting me through the ringer here, holding the camera, threading machine. Okay, so then we snap it into the thread guide, floss it in between the discs, and it's got to come up and grab the little check spring. So you can see that spring moving with the thread. Underneath that little guide, oops. and then through the take-up lever, then from the take-up lever, come down, through the pigtail, through the hole in the, in the collar, Oops. a little piece of lint on it. And here we go, folks, moment of truth. Ooh, live on camera, first shot. can't grab it. There we go. Needle threaded. There we go. So that is how you thread it. Again, I've got plenty of practice trying to get that done. So I think I'm at time. So I don't know if there's any other questions that I missed that I could answer in the last second, or if Blaine is ready, we can toss it back over. Well, hey, you know, you that just shows you how easy that thing is to thread when you can do it with one hand and use hold the camera with the other one. <laughs> exactly. No, no excuses here. You just have to do it sometimes. And, you know, I, I know, you know, some of the sergers have the air thread and whatnot. But when I first got my serger, it was you just got to learn. And once you learn it, you practice, you practice, you practice. So I used to cut the threads out, rethread it make sure it was working good, cut them out and redo it. And that really reinforces it. And this is no different. So, and yeah. if you forget, you have your handy little thread guide, you know, with colored instructions to show you how to do it. So really Perfect. we make it easy. So. Awesome. Well, Nicholas, thank you so much, uh, man. Great job. And uh, I know you're going to be back this afternoon talk a little bit yes. about robotics. So we'll see you then. Okay. Excellent. Well, have a good day and I'll see you at two 30. Okay. All right, everyone. This is the Moxie XL. That is the 18 inch throat space on that. And again, he was showing you, he had the, uh, the Moxie uh, or he had the pro stitcher light uh, version on there. Uh, but you sh he showed you all the free motion stuff it will do. Again, the price on this is $69.95, but we actually have uh, a uh, call in special. You can give us a call uh, right now, free shipping nationwide. Or you can just go on the website and speak to one of our live chat agents as well and place your order. Uh, we have financing available if you need that, but it's going to come with your choice of frames. You can uh, have either a little foot frame you can put with it, or you can do that loft frame. Uh, so we have your frame choice, but we can work with you on that depending on how much uh, room you have. But a great price on this, everyone. And again, this is that Moxie XL, fairly new machine by uh, Handy Quilter. And we're super, super excited about this machine. So, all right, we are going to continue on. Let's bring in my co-host back, Miss Jane Klaus. Hello, Blaine. Hi, everybody. I'm back. All righty. And you're raring to go. So I'm going to let you take it over. 
And I think you've got it for the next hour and a half. You're going to have your next presenter. And then right after that at uh, 1030 Pacific time, 1230 uh, Central, we've got meet the judges and you're going to have, you've got all four judges coming in. You're going to ask them all these questions about quilting and all these great things. And I cannot wait to see your interviews. Thank you. I'm going to call it the 60 minutes of quilting. Like it's my own 60 minutes. We can get that little clicker talk, tick, 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 tick. And we'll talk to these four judges and we'll dive deep into their life and their backstories. But before that, we've got a special guest for you from our friends at RNK Distributors. Nicole Gilbert is here with us again. And you know her, you love her. She has hosted quilt alongs over the last 10 years and ta taught countless classes, demonstrated sewing machines, and of course, quilted an insane a number of quilts. Her first love is sharing quilting with new sewists. So she says there is nothing better than watching that aha moment happen. Day five, Quilt Fest. It is Nicole Gilbert. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? So good. How are you? I am doing good. I cannot believe it is already day five of Quilt Fest. And thank you for being here with us all five days. Yes. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't miss it. It's so exciting. Your presentations are really fantastic. And I love all of the products because they're just like these amazing tools just to get the job done right. Like these really super, like you're like, oh, I didn't know that existed. I'm so glad Nicole's here to tell me about it. Yes. Oh, that makes me so happy that you to know you feel that way, Jane. I have had a blast this week sharing all of the things and I cannot wait to get to talk to all of you one last time before Quilt Fest is done. Well, I'm going to let you do that right now. All right. Sounds good, Jane. Thank you so much. Hey, folks, thank you so much for spending a bit of your afternoon with me. Um, I am so excited to be here sandwiched in between Nicholas and that fantastic jacket that he was wearing out of that Anna Maria fabric. Ah, oh, gorgeous. And next up, you have those judges coming in. So I am definitely going to be sticking around after my presentation to check in and learn a little bit more. So today, what are we talking about? We are talking about perfecting your perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And many of us think that when we are trying to get that perfect quarter of an inch seam allowance, all of that magic happens at the sewing machine. And while a lot of it does happen there, I'm not going to deny that a lot of it does happen at the sewing machine. It also starts with the cutting and goes all the way through the process to your pressing. So we are going to chat about all the little places you should be keeping in mind getting that perfect quarter inch seam allowance and how you're going to get it done. So let's start with the cutting process. So I am Nicole Gilbert. I am here with RK Distributing, which is the parent company of Floriani Embroidery and Quilter Select. And some of you may not be familiar with Quilter Select, but Quilter Select has this phenomenal thing called the rotary cutting system. And oh my gosh, guys, if you haven't had a chance to experience it, you really do need to try it. Now, when we're getting a quarter perfect quarter inch seam allowance, we're doing that so that we have consistency in our piecing so that our quilt tops finish at the size they're supposed to finish at because a little bit off here multiplied by hundreds of seams ends up being a heck of a lot off at the end. So let's start with the cutting. Now, with cutting, we are thinking about getting that quarter inch. And I know when I am sitting at my sewing machine trying to get that quarter, perfect quarter inch, I'm aligning my line with a marking on my machine bed, with a piece of tape, with the laser on my beautiful sewing machine that I'm sure you have seen lots about this week on Sewing Machines Plus. But how? what are we lining up with that line? We're lining up the edge of our fabric. So if we don't have a clean straight cut on our fabric, no matter how aligned it is on our sewing machine, it's still going to be off in our piecing. Right? So cutting. I like to start with a really great non-slip ruler. Okay. This is the Quilter Select six and a half by 24. 
The six and a half by 24 inch ruler is a fabulous size for getting our cuts off of our yardage. It's nice, it's big, it stretches the band of our cutting mat, it covers that half of that folded over bolt that yardage that we got at the store. But what I love about this particular non-slip ruler is the non-slip coating. And I'm blocking my face here because the ruler is the star of the show, okay? Did you notice how shiny it is on this side? Can you, you see that reflection? And then look at how matte it is on this side. And it's matte like this because the entire backside of this ruler is coated in non-slip coating. We're not talking sporadic dots. We're not talking just the lines. The entire back of this ruler is non-slip. Why is that important? When we're cutting and we're making that large cut off of our yardage or off of our fat quarter, whatever we're cutting off of, we're starting to cut. And if you're like me, you're inching your finger up the ruler as you're cutting with your rotary cutter, right? Or you are superwoman. You're able to hold your ruler right in the middle. But either way, the ruler might give you a little wiggle, a little jiggle, right? This non-slip ruler is not going anywhere when it comes to your fabric. So your cut is going to stay straight. It's going to stay true because even if there's any movement, it's not going to be between your fabric and the ruler. The fabric and the ruler are going to stay together and you're going to get a perfect straight cut, which is huge. Now, the other thing with cutting, and I would say the six and a half by 24, some of you might have an eight and a half by 24, um, which is this big guy back here. I love these things. I've got them in every size. Uh, these are your, like your go-to size rulers. This is like, if you only had one ruler to buy, this is the ruler to buy, the size, because it's going to do so many things for you. That's the must-have. Now, I'm going to get into some nice-to-haves with the rulers. Um, and really, I personally run to after I'm done with my 6.5 by 24 to either my 5.5 square or my 6.5 square. This happens to be a 6.5 inch square, okay? The reason I do that is, did you notice when I was using my big ruler, I'm like tossing it all over the place. I'm blocking myself. It's all awkward and weird. This is going to allow me to have the motion, the comfort that I need to really easily maneuver in my sewing space. I know that I need my big ruler, but once I get to the point where I'm doing my sub cuts, I want a smaller ruler. It's easier to hold in my hand. It's easier to move around as I'm sub cutting and I'm creating those little piles of fabric. I know you know what I'm talking about. This guy doesn't get in the way. Okay. So that's why I think if you get one other ruler besides that six and a half by 24, it's going to be a five and a half or six and a half inch square. It's a really, really big help. Now, the other thing I will say is another place where we are messing up our cut line and therefore affecting our perfect quarter inch seam allowance is when we are moving our ruler around because we're picking it up, we're moving it, and then the fabric may slide as the ruler has been lifted off. And now that line that you were aligning it with on your mat or your reference point, whatever that may be, is moved. And so then you have to shift the fabric and you're like, that's not as straight as it was the last time. And then our cut is slightly off. And when we have an off cut, even if you align it with the proper line on your sewing machine bed, it is going to be an off quarter inch seam allowance. So that's why I love this guy. This is the Coulter Select ruler handle, okay? I love it. So it has this fun little suction cup, super easy to take off and put on. And what I love about it is it makes your ruler, do you see how I'm moving this so cleanly? It makes your ruler an extension of your hand. And I'm showing it, here on a three and a half inch square. But check it out. Ooh. 
check it out on the five and a half by or the six and a half inch square. It's giving me that same mobility. It's giving me that same cleanness. And it's that easy to move around. Okay. On a larger one, I'd probably put two, but that's just so that you have, you know, all of the motion. All right. So that's the non-slip rulers. We talked about having the big guy. We talked about having the smaller ones for subcuts, and we talked about the handle. The handle makes a big difference. All right. Now, the other part of cutting is having a great rotary cutter. The Quilter Select rotary cutter is my absolute favorite, and that is because of its weight. I mean, if you picked this thing up, you're like, holy cow, this is not a plastic rotary cutter. This is a really high quality rotary cutter. Why is it being having the weight so important? It's because the weight does the work for you. There's no more pushing down. There's no more strain in your finger, in your wrist. It really is super comfortable. And that comfort is going to aid you in getting that perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Because why does our ruler wiggle sometimes? Because we're pushing down so hard on our rotary cutter that we have moved the ruler, right? I know this happens to everybody because it happens to everybody. And these are really easy, foolproof ways to save that quarter inch seam allowance by using the right tools. We'll also want to make sure that our rotary cutter blade is nice and sharp. I have had the pleasure this week of going on after Handy Quilter every day, which I have loved listening to Nicholas and Shauna, and they've been wonderful. Uh, and one of the things I've heard several times is keep changing your needle. Keep a sharp needle. And the same goes with cutting. We're going to want to keep a nice, sharp rotary cutter blade. You'll know it's time to change your rotary cutter blade when either you start skipping when you're cutting or you're putting pressure down. Because remember, with this rotary cutter, you should not have to put too much pressure behind it because of the weight of the cutter. So keep our a nice sharp blade and that'll keep a nice sharp line on our fabric, which will aid us in that perfect quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay. So... You're like, okay, we get it. We're cutting, we're cutting straight. Our rulers aren't moving. We're comfortable. We're using quality products. Let's get to the sewing of the quarter inch seam allowance, right? Okay, so when we're actually sewing, I like to use several different things going on. I have like these little catchphrases that I say, if you've ever been in one of my classes, you've heard me say them, we all giggle, it's fine, but they get stuck in your heads and it matters. So my favorite thing is pinning is winning, okay? So pinning is winning. So even when we think that our um, seam is perfect and we can hold those fabrics together and everything's gonna be great, if you can stick some pins in that, and make sure the alignment is correct, as it's flying through your sewing machine, you're not gonna have the shifting of the fabric, which will affect your quarter inch seam allowance. So we want to always use pins, okay? Pinning is winning. I like to have a pin cushion with me, kind of readily available. This one is the Quilter Select Jewel Tools. And I mean, how cute is this little, uh, turquoise semi-precious stone here in the center of that uh, corsage. I absolutely adore it. I mean, we're quilters. We like to do things that are beautiful. We like to make things that are beautiful. We like to surround ourselves with things that are beautiful. So even my pin cushion is pretty. So this is the Quilter Select Jewel Tools pin cushion. What I love about this is I used to think that pin cushions that had this um, bracelet, the wrist wrap on them, were really for garment sewers because you're like up, you're moving around, you have, have it on. I wear it now on my wrist so that as I'm sewing, as my hands are going through the machine, I can take my pin because we're not sewing over our pins, right? We'll take my pin out, stick it right in. And I'm there and then I don't have a mess all over the bed of my sewing machine. So having this here is clutch. I 
love it. Uh, so pinning is winning. All right, guys. This is like my big thing. I have been chatting about this stuff all week long. It is my favorite. I feel like somewhere in the studio, Blaine and Jane are going, oh my gosh, she's about to talk about that again. I am, because it's my favorite. It is the Quilter Select 60 weight and 80 weight thread. Okay, you can tell the difference because the 60 weight has that nice green line on it and the 80 weight has this orange line on it. Now, some of you are probably like, wait, do I need to clear out my ears? What, what did she just say? Did she say 60 and 80 weight? Yep, I did. 60 and 80 weight thread. Usually when we're patchwork piecing, we are using a 50 weight thread. I like the 60 and 80 weight thread for one very important reason. I mean, there's a lot of things you guys have heard it all all week. But when we're going for a perfect quarter inch seam allowance, oftentimes you'll read in a pattern to go for a scant quarter of an inch. Now, I don't know about you. I personally don't know how to measure a scant quarter of an inch, but I do know how to measure a quarter of an inch. And consistency is key in our patchwork piecing. So what I like to do is I use the 60 weight and the 80 weight thread because they're lighter weight threads than our 50 weight thread, meaning they're taking up less room in our seam allowance, which means our quarter inch seam allowance is a quarter inch seam allowance. The 50 weight thread takes up space. Okay. So 60 weight thread in our needle and 80 weight thread in our bobbin. Now, I mentioned that RK Distributing is both the parent company of Floriani Embroidery and Quilter Select. And our sisters over at Floriani would not allow us to have just one plain gray thread, which I know is like bread and butter to a quilter, but our 60 weight thread comes in 60 different colors. I know. So I have chatted this week about getting the perfect quarter inch. I have chatted about applique. This also is great for EPP. All of these things can be done with our 60 weight perfect cotton plus thread. Uh, I know. 80 weight thread in the bobbin. The 80 weight thread comes in 40 colors, which are complementary to the 60 colors that come in the 60 weight thread. So this is going to give you a super strong seam. It's going to give you a nice fine stitch line. So it's not going to take up too much room in your seam allowance. It's going to be great for top stitching. It's going to be great for applique. It's going to be great for English paper piecing. It goes on and on and on. This is like, oh, game changer this thread okay so 60 and 80 weight thread from quilters select i feel like this next one is like duh but i have to say it anyway a good quarter inch patchwork foot okay this is the ultra t so fine patchwork foot it is a non stick material. That's why it's this fun, bright red color. I mean, I love it. I never lose it in my sewing studio because it's bright red. But honestly, the real reason I never lose it in my studio is because it is always on my machine. A non-stick foot does not have to only be for sewing on vinyl or oilcloth or leather or silk or satin. I use this quarter inch foot for every single thing I piece. Now, this foot is the only non-stick foot that comes in a quarter of an inch uh, setup. It comes in a three pack, meaning you get a the quarter inch seam foot, you get an end foot, and you get an R foot all in the same package. And it is just, first of all, it's gorgeous. It's a pretty little foot there but it's gonna give you that marking, that alignment to line your fabric up and maintain that quarter of an inch. Now, I know Blaine has told you about some amazing machines that he has for sale this week, and some of them have some really cool features, but even if you get a machine that has the laser, has all the markings, because I use it too, I still use a good quarter inch patchwork foot, okay? So you should too. Last but 
certainly not least is the pressing portion, okay? We want to make sure that when we are ironing our seams, okay? This is especially important when you are doing anything with a bias seam. What has a bias seam? Half square triangles, quarter square triangles, 60 degree triangles. All of these items have a bias edge, okay? And when you're pressing a bias edge, we want to make sure our iron is going up and down and up and down. We do not want to wiggle. We don't want to push uh, because that is going to distort our seam. I personally like to finger press, but I don't use my fingers. I use the Coulter Select Seam Press. And now this is another tool from the Jewel Tools line. Pin cushion. This is the seam press, okay? This happens to be turquoise. Our Jewel Tool line comes in turquoise. It comes in rose quartz. And it comes in this beautiful navy blue soda light. It is gorgeous. But what's wonderful about a seam press is that it does finger pressing for you, which I have found one of the best uses for the seam press. Yes, is it great for all of our pressing? Uh-huh. And I do that because I like to press my seams open. So instead of scratching it open, I use my seam press and then I take my iron to it. But if you are foundation paper piecing and you know how you have to like finger press everything open before you sew your next seam, the seam press makes a big difference. You're going to get a nice crisp fold with that. Okay. That makes a huge difference. So just to recap before I throw it back to Jane, because I know we are tight and we all want to hear from those judges in a couple minutes. We are going to use a non-slip ruler, preferably using that handle so that we don't accidentally bump everything as we're moving things around. We're going to use a quality rotary cutter with a sharp rotary blade. We're going to use 60 weight thread in our needle and 80 weight thread in our bobbin so that we can measure a perfect quarter inch seam when we're at our machines. We're going to use a patchwork foot. We're going to be winning because we'll be pinning. And of course, our seam press will get us that perfect crisp seam every time. So I have had an absolute blast with you guys all week long. I cannot wait to see you again soon. You're going to have so much fun this afternoon with Jane and Blaine. But Jane, was there any questions for me in the chat as we've been going? Um, okay, so let's do that review really quick once again. We've got the rotary cutter. We've got the Coulter Select rotary cutter, 45 millimeters. We have... The non-slip rulers, which I mean, our non-slip rulers come in a million sizes, but if you're like, I can only buy two, six and a half by 24 and either a five and a half inch square or a six and a half inch square, they are going to be the absolute best rulers. You are going to be mind blown with how much they do not slip. Okay. We've got the Jewel Tools line, which... This is the cutest little pin cushion you've ever seen. I love it. I love that it's readily available. You can keep it on your wrist at all times. No matter what kind of sewing you're doing, you will have your pins right at hand because pinning is winning, folks. And then we've got its matching sister tool, which is the seam press. There's also a notions minder in the line, but this seam press is phenomenal. It really gets you that nice, clean, crisp seam each and every time. And of course, this is like my one thing that I've been talking about day in and day out. 60 weight thread in our needle and 80 weight thread in our bobbin. If you're looking at this online or on the shelves, the 60 weight thread has the green line across it and the 80 weight thread has the orange line. So those are gonna be our go-to items to make sure we are getting that perfect quarter inch seam allowance each and every time. I love it so much. Okay, Nicole, you're amazing. Thank you for being here with us all week long. Thank you for that recap. I'm going to tell everybody 
how they can get their hands on these amazing products, these Quilter Select amazing products. Thank you, Jane. Have a good one. Okay, see you later. Uh, she's fantastic. It's been so much fun having to call on the show every single day this week. Okay, so Quilter Select from our friends at RNK. It's just that simple. Just go to the website, smplive.tv. Scroll around, just like we're showing you here. Look at all of those products. You're going to see that rotary cutter. You're going to see those rulers. You're going to see pinning is winning, the pin cushions. And you're going to see the seam press and all of the great things that Nicole talked about today. They're all right there. Just Google it up, not Google it up, just search it up on the search bar at smplive.tv and you can take a closer look and just go ahead and give them an order. Now, everything from Quilter Select is 20% off this week. So this is a great time to buy all of these great tools to get the job done right. And of course, we want you to do that as well. So again, 800-401-8151 or you can chat live to place your order or guess what? You can just place your order online. It's just that simple. SMPLive.tv. Uh, I love it. Okay. So, friends, I wish we had a drum roll. It's time to meet the judges. Um, and seriously, like getting to know these quilting celebrities just really gives all of us this unique opportunity to learn and get inspired from their expertise, their creativity. And they're just really amazing award-winning quilters. So we are in for a real treat. And we're going to start with our first celebrity quilter. Our first judge is Edita Sitar. Now, Edita, um, her love for fabric began at a very young age when she used her mother's drapes to create her very first fabric project. As the founder and owner of her company, Laundry Basket Quilts, Edita is proud to carry on her family tradition that fabrics and threads have seamlessly stitched together throughout the generations. Her true passion and quilter spirit shine through her classes, workshops, and presentations. You know, she travels all over the world sharing her experiences and connecting with quilters on all levels. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Edita Sitar to the show. Hi, Edita. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Hi, Jane. Hi, Hi. everyone. It's wonderful to have you here. And thank you so much for being a judge on our big oh. uh, contest this week. So I know that's a lot of work for you. Uh, but it's everyone... my pleasure. It yeah. was it was difficult to pick a, a winner because there were so many gorgeous quilts. Oh, I, I really struggle. I have to tell you, I had quite a few favorites. It's so hard. So I want to take, though, I want to start let's go to the Wayback Machine. Not so way back, but we'll go to the Wayback Machine. Um, you started your journey into uh, sewing and quilting by using your mother's drapes, old drapes that they had in the house. Um, tell us what what was that like? What did you make? And then, then how did that influence your journey into becoming a sewist and a quilter? Actually, the drapes were brand new. My mother just finished them and hanged them in a window. And I was just a tiny little peanut right next to her. I always shadow my mom in her sewing room. And as soon as she finished the drape, she looked at me and said to me, don't you love those colors? And oh boy, did I love the colors in those drapes. She walked into the kitchen and I found a pair of scissors and cut a perfect square out of my mother's drape. When she saw what I've done, uh -huh, I can tell you that day is marking a calendar as a day that I almost die um, <laughs> because she was not pleased with me, but she recognized my love for textiles, fabrics, and she knew that she better teach me where to get my fabrics the right way so I can enjoy them in many projects. And, and all that I did is took that little square and covered my dolly with it. I didn't make much with it. I just love that piece of fabric. So I'm, uh, I have to tell you, very thankful to my mother and my mother-in-law and Michael's grandmother that have always shared with me sewing, quilting. Michael's grandmother was the one that taught me how to quilt when I first emigrated to the United States and met her. She looked at me with not much hope in her eyes and uh, said to me, when you live with me, you're going to quilt with me. And that's where my quilting journey began. So from then on, things just got out of control. Me loving fabric 
to the point that I now design fabric, design patterns, and uh, have a wonderful laundry basket business where we enjoy quilting uh, techniques with our uh, customers. It, what a great story. If you live with me, you quilt with me. Now, in in, to, in today, today's world, you're traveling around the world and sharing your experiences and you're connecting with quilters. It's all very exciting. What inspires you most about meeting the quilters from all these different backgrounds and all these different places? And does that does that influence your own quilting journey? Uh, in some way, I always learn from my students because I love giving them a seed of quilting and they take on completely different colors and adjust it and make it their own. So, uh, you know, in fact, one of my quilts right here that I have is on this side. It's a Pioneer Log Cabin that we did at the retreat. And uh, one of my friends add a little spin to it by adding a little red to it and uh, made it more patriotic. And um, I love, inspire everybody with my fabrics, my designs, but I also look forward to see what our customers make because he makes my day for them to succeed and make beautiful things. And I don't only travel and teach, but we have an incredible live show every Friday. That's why I have to um, uh, schedule out of here shortly because at 11 o'clock every Friday, we meet with our customers and we do a live show where I show anything new that we have from Laundry Basket. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, I won't keep you too long, but I still have a few more questions. Tell I us what that. type of machine you prefer to use when creating your quilts. So you asked me that last time we visit, and uh, I love Janome machines and I love Juki. So we have both of those. But I have to tell you, I always have... Uh, my first sewing machine that I got was a hundred dollar Kenmore machine. You really, you, and today there's so many beautiful machines that you can find out there. But it's just that taking the initiative, getting your machine, no matter how uh, um, expensive it is, how much gadget it has, it's just putting the time and start stitching little pieces together. You will be successful quilter. And one of my tips for everybody is. The thing that changed my quilting, number one, is pinning. But number two, the most change that I've seen it in my quilting was when I trim my pieces. So having a wonderful ruler that you can place it over your units, over your blocks, and trim them to the right size would change your quilting completely. So I, I hope um, for everyone to slow down, make the units, trim them, and then keep going. I love it. Um, we have a contest going on, and thankfully, you are one of our judges. What are you looking for in an award-winning quilt? So I am all about a color. In my other life, I probably was a hummingbird, <laughs> and I love color. So when I see a color, it pulls me in. Then I pay attention to the design, the techniques. Of course, on the pictures, I could not tell uh, what technique was used, but I could tell somebody put a lot of work to be able to achieve the curve, the points, and all the applique and the design. I had three favorites. I could, uh, there were many favorites, but I had to pick three. And I love, love, love the quilts that I pick. I wish they were mine. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, a moment I was a little partial because I noticed uh, one of the quilts was made by one of my students, our retreaters, and I was so proud of her because she did incredible job on her quilt. So, but I was very fair. I picked the best in my opinion, and I'm uh, very happy for the girls that are gonna win. Oh, that's great. Okay, so we've got a lot of experienced quilters watching. We have a lot of new quilters watching. We have a lot of people that are just like, oh, maybe I'll start, maybe I'll try it. And we've been saying all week, just start if you haven't done it yet. Yeah. What advice would you give to aspiring quilters and then what advice would you give to experienced quilters to sort of push their boundaries? So for somebody brand new, I highly recommend pre-cut kit because you process the kit. It's like putting a puzzle together. Everything is there for you. And this 
uh, set you up on success with having a perfect pieces. And then you can keep working on cutting your own fabrics. But that just like get you in and you can achieve a project in quite quickly. And we have a great variety of pre-cut kits from table runners to large kits. But um, so that's what I would start. Something small, something that you can achieve to build your confidence and something that you can practice over and over. So uh, getting a kit that has multiple of the same block allows you to exercise those muscles, memory, to create something really nice and also try. I love, and this is what I always tell my brand new quilters and advanced quilters, try something new. Do not assume that you know everything. I take classes myself. I constantly try new things. I um, push my seams one way, then I keep them open. I try, uh, uh, compare my blocks, how they look. When it's an applique, I love fusible, machine applique, hand applique. So there's all these different uh, techniques that you can try. And many times, for example, my quilt right behind me is an app applique quilt. Nobody said that you have to use just one technique in it. You can use multiple techniques to achieve that quilt. And sometimes this is something that I also tell my students, when you get tired of uh, doing something and you're doing it using just one technique, switch the technique. And that way, maybe that is going to spark up more interest and in you keep going and you're going to have a finished project. So that's my advice to you guys. I love it. And Edita, I'm looking at the quilts behind you and, and quilts often have themes or they tell stories or they convey messages. When you're creating a quilt um, or any of your designs, where do you find the message and how do you explore some of those narratives? Is it always different? Uh, it depends, but many times, many of my quilts reflect my personal life. So the quilt behind me is a simple life and it's a collage of simple applique shapes that reflect things that I love. So for example, notice, oh, I have to move this way. I have a three of my children right here. And on this side, you have my husband, Michael, and me, and then all the cute little things that I love. Yes, I love piggies, kitties, and all the fun things that have to do with farm. I live in a, um, uh, a beach community, but I am a farm girl in heart. I wish I had a farm. So I have it on my quilt. <laughs> and a um, uh, few years ago, I became American citizen. So patriotic quilts are very special to me. And I um, wanted to reflect the love for uh, this country with my quilt. Edita, that is fantastic. I love the stories behind your quilt. It's so beautiful. Um, we Thank have uh, just a minute left. Tell everybody how they can find you um, and learn more about you. You have a web your website and all that good stuff. Thank you for letting me do that. Uh, so we are, uh, um, if you wanted to visit us, you can go to our website at www.laundrybasketquilts.com. And like I said, every Friday at 11, we do incredible live show. Please come join us when you have an open uh, Friday. If not, you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, search for Laundry Basket and you will find all our videos, including our live videos. We keep them on our YouTube channel. On Instagram, also Laundry Basket Quilts. I put on a fun little reels that makes you laugh and giggle. And um, if you wanted to, right now, we have an incredible contest that is going to be uh, going until 4 of July that we are making a Patriotic Quilts with a pre-printed two pieces of fabric. You can choose the blue or you can choose the red and then make a quilt around it, your design, and we're going to have a great door prizes for that. So we do a lot of events, uh, including mystery quilts, block of the month, and um, uh, our subscription, like our Low Quilts Club subscription, that it's just adorable. Guys, you have to join in in that one or you can join in in our fabric club that it's so cute. I have one here because I'm getting ready for our live show. This is our low quilts club. So those are just the low quilts. And this one is our fabric club. So every month you get That's incredible great. 12 fat quarters. So those are just some of the problems great. that we have. 
Thank you, Edita. We so You're appreciate welcome. spending your time and talents um, being a judge for, for having Cold me. Fest. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. We'll see you later. I love that. And please remember, you can still get the copy sign for our Rainbow oh, Scrapbook. Thank wonderful. you, everyone. Awesome. All right, everybody, hands together for Edita Sitar. Okay, moving on to our next judge, Jane Halprich. Now, Jane is a self-taught free motion quilter that began her quilting journey on a domestic sewing machine. She now is a professional award-winning long-arm quilter who specializes in custom free motion quilting. And her goal when teaching is to spread as much knowledge as possible and enable more successful quilters in the future. Put your hands together and say hi to Jane Halfridge. Hi, Jane. Hi. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for being a judge here with us on Quilt Fest for Sewing Machines Plus. It was so much fun. It really was. I, I did it last year and I, I enjoyed doing it again this year. It was great. I know. And there's a ton. There's so many to look at. Um, let me ask you this. So you started your journey into quilting as a uh, self-taught free motion quilter on a domestic machine. So how did you initially develop your skills doing that? And then what was the learning curve like going on to becoming a professional long arm quilter? Wow. That's a loaded question. It um, sure is. <laughs> So I started learning to piece quilts in the late 1990s. And um, I was a single mom, young kids, and I didn't get to do a lot of piecing. But what I found out was that um, the smaller things I could, you know, I could quilt myself, but I really couldn't afford to send things out. So I learned very quickly that I was going to have to figure out how to um, quilt them. And when I go back and look at some of those quilts, they were quilted very sparsely until I learned the free motion quilting part of it. So I, um, I think I must have taken a class or maybe somebody showed me or I read a book, you know, there wasn't YouTube back then as far as teaching us how to do that kind of thing. So I, you know, I dropped those feed dogs and I experimented and just tried to push my fabric around as best as I could on that it was um it was quite a few years later that i was at a local quilt show and i kept on gravitating to the handy quilter booth and because they had the stationary long arm that i had 16 inches of throat space at the time and i was in awe of that machine and um at that point in my life i was able to get that machine and that sort of changed everything because i i still do love pushing my fabric around in the um in a domestic machine because i think that's where i started and i love teaching on a domestic machine because that's what most people have but there was something about having all that throat space that gave me a little bit more freedom and probably a little bit more courage to try more do you think everybody should start on a domestic machine or if they if they have a way to do it, you just go with the long arm? Oh, yeah. If they have a way to do it, try a long arm. I, I mean, I have a, um, you know, I branched up to eventually I did. I started with a sweet 16, a handy quilter sweet 16. And then a few years later, I decided I wasn't happy with my day job. And a local quilt shop was giving a class on how to start your own long arming business. So I traded in that machine and I got my first long arm. And that's really where um, custom quilting takes off. And, you know, when people find out you have a long arm, they want you to start quilting for them. So um, that's where the custom quilting sort of started really taking off for doing it for other people. And um, but since then, I do miss, I did miss doing the sit down. I now have I'm sitting right in front of my Amara ST, um, which is a stationary long arm. But I also have um, a handy quilter Amara on a 12 foot frame, which I work on also. But I still do. Like I said, I love sitting sometimes at my domestic machine and just doing it because I just there's something about pushing that fabric around and doing it and working it out to realize what other people are dealing with. So but yeah, I mean, the long arm's great. 
Yeah, for sure. And I was, I'm asking it, and this is not a very good comparison, but like you learn how to drive a car on an automatic. And then there are those people in life, they're like, oh, I can drive a stick shift too. And you know, you, you don't see any stick shifts anymore. So it's kind of like, oh, I can quilt on a domestic and I'm a, you know, I could do be a professional on the long arm. It's like, you might as well try pushing the fabric around and doing it on this one and learning it uh, just to have that, you know, that skill level. I think so. I think it helps every, I, I, yeah, I, and I've in classes that I've taught, I, you know, where people have to bring their own sewing machines. I've had people bring a singer featherweight with the throat space is like this big and they're trying oh, to geez. push their fabric around in there, but they did it. They made it work. So you I, can use pretty much any machine that you want to make it, to make it work. I love it. I love the challenge on that. So uh, let's talk about your creative process. Okay. How do you approach each quilt to really bring out its characteristics, like just something unique about that quilt? So I'm basically trying to bring the focus to the piecing or the applique. I think because I'm a custom quilter and I quilt a lot for um, people that want to hang their quilts in, whether it be a guild show or a national show, um, I get a lot of hand applique quilts to quilt. And and my goal was to always draw the focus to that, but to also complement all the white space or the negative space that's there too. So I don't know if that really answers your question or not, but I, my goal was always to make their quilting or their piecing shine because it, it's basically their quilt. No, that you answered my question perfectly okay. because it's your creative process. When you're doing this for somebody else, it's like, okay, I have to add this to it. And what's it going to be? Um, you talked about your machines. You've got the Amara. Um, what did you say? It's, you've got the Amara I have, ST. I have the Amara ST. And then I have the Handy Quilter Amara 20 on a 12 foot frame. Um, for piecing, I use, I have a Janome. And um, I also have a HQ stitch, which is a straight, uh, the HQ stitch 510, which is a straight stitch. Perfect. But I That's have been watching all the, all the demos and stuff and all the different machines. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I need a new machine. <laughs> I think everyone that's watching has been thinking that. I, know. I, know. <laughs> I literally have a list of things. I'm like, I'm still thinking about. I know. Um, so you teach. Um, talk about some of the techniques and lessons that you prioritize when you're teaching. So uh, most people start out with a beginner free motion quilting class. And I have had people take that twice just because there's so much information packed into the three or four hour class and i didn't quite understand that at first but i recently took a um, sourdough bread class it was a three hour class and by the time i walked out of that class my head was just exploding with so much information i was like i could go back and take that class all over again but for me, when I'm teaching the free motion quilting, it's all about getting comfortable, dropping your feed dogs, getting your tension straight. A lot of people don't like to touch their tension on their machines, but when free motion quilting, you do have to learn how to adjust your tension and, and to just relax and enjoy the process instead of being so nervous and apprehensive about it because it is supposed to be fun. Everything about the whole industry to me should be fun and should be enjoyable. And I know free motion quilting isn't for everybody, but most people like to give it a try and at least develop some skills in that aspect. So the key advice you would offer to someone just starting off is just relax. Relax and practice. Because yeah. I think if you, if you have a stack of small fabric sandwiches next to your machine and you dedicate say 10 to 15 minutes of practice per day, you'll notice a huge improvement by the end of even the first week of practicing the same designs over and over again, and then just keep on branching out. And the other thing is to doodle, doodle on paper as much as you can, because that really helps you with figuring out how your designs are going to stitch out. So talk about this contest. You said you were a judge last year and I remember, and you loved it so much and now you're back. What are the key things that you're looking for in an award-winning quilt? So I think at first I'm um, looking at the visual impact of the quilt is what strikes me. I went through 
all of them and all the pictures and all of them, they were all gorgeous. I just want everybody to know how beautiful your quilts were. Um, but for me, a lot of it is the visual impact. And then as I'm looking at the pictures, I am, while I'm drawn to the piecing, I think because I'm a free motion quilter, I'm drawn to the quilting too. And so I'm really looking at the quilting too, to see where that, how that complements the quilt and how it all creates a cohesive quilt and, and all works together. Okay. I love it. Can you get, is there an example of a quilt that you worked on or collaborated on that um, has just holds a particularly meaningful story to you that you want to share? <laughs> oh, wow. That's really tough. Well, I know there's so many, but it's like you have this this amazing journey uh, in quilting and everyone's so excited to hear your story. So, yeah. So I I mean, a couple of things I can share, too, is um, as I started teaching on the National Quilt Network, on the Quilt Show Network. Um, and while I was teaching there, um, a handy quilter um, approached me about becoming an educator for them. And so I got to be an educator for them. Um, for about five-ish years. And then I switched out um, after COVID, I switched out to becoming an ambassador for them. So which is just as good. I don't travel as like I did before them as an educator, but I got to travel all over the world for them and teach people all about quilting and um, just had some great memories of trips to a trip to Germany and a trip to England and all the places I got to visit in the States were just amazing. Um, and then I'm also now a, an, a, an ambassador for um, Island Batik Fabrics. So that's been a fun journey too, one I never anticipated taking, but I just, a lot of times in my life, I've always been in too intimidated to try things. And then I got to a point or I got to a certain age and just said, I'm going to try it. And the worst people can tell me is no. And so I've had a lot of fun um, on that journey too. So it's been fun and I am still teaching at shows and um, yeah, but as far as, you know, I did a couple as a handy quilter ambassador, I did a couple challenges for them. Each year we had a challenge. The one year was doing an ice, taking an ice dyed fabric and quilting it. And that one was just, um, it, that was probably one of the favorite ones I've done. And another one was taking a vintage quilt top um, that and making it, um, maybe quilting it in a more modern way, which sort of made you have to think outside of the box a little bit. And so that was a lot of fun too. But there, each quilt just holds so, so much, even my customer quilts. I hate to give them back because I spend so much time with them and I get to know them really well and see them up close and personal. And they just sort of become a part of me. And um, that's just a fun process. I love the idea of taking that vintage or traditional design and then adding a modern technique to it like that's yeah. that's or, or do they have that opposite having a vintage uh technique and adding a modern design or whatever right. you know what i mean right <laughs> right uh, and sometimes the sometimes they offer some challenges because the, a lot of the vintage tops have been hand pieced and they've been a little stretched and have some fullness to them and they didn't have the rulers that we had to square things up so yeah that's awesome. I see lots of rulers behind you. Um, can you yeah. tell us how we can find more Jane? We want more Jane. Oh, okay. Well, I do teach um, at shows. I am. Um, I have my website, which is stitchbystitchcustomquilting.com. I am on Facebook. I'm on Instagram under Jane Stitch by Stitch. I am on YouTube. I I'm trying to add more and more to my YouTube all the time. I would love it if you all would follow me and watch some of my videos to help you in your free motion journey. Um, because that's my goal is to help other people. I just love helping people. I want everybody to love free motion quilting the same way that I do. And so that is my goal is to provide help for them along the way and make it fun for them too. I love it. Everybody, make sure you go check out all those YouTube videos. They're just clamoring about them, saying how wonderful they are. Uh, Jane, you're great. I love the Janes. Uh, Thank you're, you. <laughs> you're, you're very talented, Jane. Thank you so much for sharing your time and talent and being a judge 
at Quilt Fest. And thank you for sharing a couple minutes with us right now. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, hands together for Jane Halperich. Okay, bye, Jane. See you later. Um, let's move right along, shall we? I can't believe it. it's going so fast. I love it. Okay, our next judge that we are excited to welcome to the show is Beth Ann Nemich. And she was with us early in the week and taught us that colorful yarn couching. How beautiful were her designs. She's a classically trained artist with a degree in art and art therapy. And she's been mastering the art of free motion machine quilting for over 20 23 years. She's won many major awards on all levels of national and international quilting. And she's taught quilters all over the world to love quilting and to find their own voice of creative expression through the stitched line. Everyone say hi to Beth Ann. Hi, Beth Ann. Hello. It was so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. It's wonderful to welcome you back. And thank you so thank much you. for being a part of Quilt, Quilt Fest and sharing your knowledge and also judging these amazing quilts. So thank you for being here. It was. Thank you. Yeah, judging was a lot of fun. It was actually really tough because there were so many beautiful, beautiful quilts. As the other judges have commented, it was not an easy decision at all. I, I don't yeah. know how you guys did it because there were so many quilts and there were so many beautiful quilts. So let's talk about you and your art. You're a classically trained artist and you've got all yes. these great degrees in art and art therapy. Um, <laughs> how has your background influenced your approach to quilting? And we've seen that in your work, but like when you think about it, how is what you were taught, how does that influence what you do? I think being um, a classically trained artist, and by that I mean, I, like, I went to art school and I have a bachelor's of fine arts. Um, I'm not sure that it's a great degree. I'm sure my parents would probably argue with you that they like my art therapy <laughs> degree a little bit more because they viewed it as a little bit more um, of a, you know, a, an employable um, option. Um, but uh, here I am having turned that all around and, and utilizing my art degree to this day. Uh, for me, um, I am bringing that artistic eye to basically all of my projects. Um, I'm always evaluating things for, for value, for scale, for impact, for emotional impact. And how does um, the choices that I'm making lead the eye around um, a project? And so that's something that in art school you're definitely taught to uh, think about when you're doing drawings or paintings, um, is that it's not just about the subject matter. It's also about the um, the way in which the viewer interacts with the project. And so that's something that in a lot of classic quilting is not really part of the consideration because a lot of really classic quilting and the approach to quilting is um, a very uh, symmetrical, with a lot of uh, perfect symmetry repetition, um, both in the piecing and in the quilting. And so um, I, I'm paying attention to that, but also I'm thinking to myself, how do those elements also essentially manipulate the viewer into doing what I want them to do, to look at what I want them to look at? So I think that is part of my thinking process that may be a little outside of the box from a lot of other people. Yeah, for sure. I, you're, I mean, your, your quilts are just, I mean, they're all pieces. Everyone's quilts are pieces of art because they're just beautiful. Um, and, and you're using quilting as your art form it's that's like the way that you're getting your that is pretty out. that's pretty accurate i would describe that as well that i am i am an artist who has chosen quilting as opposed to some other way of phrasing that yeah yeah so and again so you, it's your view you you have a degree in fine art you're an artist how did you start quilting how did that happen uh, I kind of like to tell people that I was dragged backwards into it. Um, <laughs> even though uh, my grandparent, my grandmothers both quilted, they did not share that with me. Um, uh, my mother made a few quilts, but that is not her cup of tea either. Um, it wasn't really until I was in college. And I guess for context, I was born in 1973. Um, but I immediately moved overseas to Okinawa. I was not exposed to American culture until my family returned home in about um, 83. And uh, plus, when you're a little child, you know, you're not paying attention to anything. So I am basically a child of the 80s. So we're talking like, hi, Madonna here. Um, and I was very disdainful of my mother's choices of fabric in the house, which were all that, um, you know, dusty rose, colonial blue wallpaper, calico kind of fabrics. Um, and I wanted nothing to do with it. Um, so when I went to college, I had the great pleasure of meeting Julia Pfaff, uh, same spelling as the sewing machine company, no relation though. 
um, in a class that I was just required to take as part of my degree. Uh, and she was part of the big giant coffee table book of 100 most influential quilters of the 20th century. And her work was really unique in that she taught me that I didn't have to tolerate the commercially available options uh, for quilters. And so she did uh, printing and photography and hand dye of her own fabrics um, at a time when that stuff wasn't available. Um, and so she was incredibly influential to me in college. Um, and so it was then when I met my husband after or during graduate school and we moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is very adjacent to the Amish traditions of Pennsylvania, um, that I became attracted to quilting as its traditional form of art. And so then I kind of married these two together um, very early on. So, so you're kind of like a trendsetter in marrying those two types of different art forms, I would say. I mean, your the work that we saw, your work is just, it's really amazing. Um, Thank you. After all of this time and marrying these two art forms together, what is the most unique material that you've quilted with? Um, I'm sure you have I, something. I, I don't know <laughs> that I would say that it's unique. I mean, people have been using silk or silk blended products for a really long time. Um, but I was probably one of the first quilters to start using silk dupioni as part of like my show quilt process. And it's generally pretty heavily avoided um, because it's super finicky and it um, it's not stable. So from a water perspective, you you take a lot of risks if you get it wet. And in fact, um, anybody who's been following me for a while has maybe heard the story, but I, I made a show quilt, um, it was a beautiful quilt. I was very happy with it. And when I blocked it, which is the process of submerging it in water and then letting it dry to stretch it as part of the show quilting process, um, the dye ran. And I tried to save it uh, like you do when your cotton runs, which is, it's possible to save a bleeding quilt uh, if it's cotton. But if you do that process on silk, it actually ruins it even faster um, and it bled back to grease goods. And so I ended up remaking that quilt from scratch um, and then resubmitting it to show. And, and that was actually um, my very first best of show win was the remake of that um, process. But it, it taught me two important lessons. Number one, do a lot better job testing <laughs> my fabrics. <laughs> but number two, I had been rushing um, to meet a deadline with that quilt. And I did two things that I think in hindsight were pretty lazy. Number one, this quilt was a beach themed quilt. Um, I didn't take the time to really process through and think through my quilting elements. For example, I was quilting coral and I thought to myself, oh, brain coral, what does that, what does brain coral look like? Maybe that looks like stippling. Anyway, it's just kind of a lazy decision. Um, and then I rushed also the blocking process um, as well, not making sure I was using ice water. In any case, um, because I rushed those things, I had a disastrous outcome. And, and so when I was remaking the quilt, I was able to slow down and um, really think through my artistic decision making of if I didn't know exactly how to represent something, to take the time to test my ideas a little bit th more thoroughly and to make better design decisions. Um, and then, of course, you know, I did a better job with the materials, took out the problem fabrics and replaced those. And it was because I did those second things on the second quilt that that quilt went on to win many, many awards. And it was my first best of show, like, like the one that I just really, really remember the most because of how dramatic that was for me. Um, but I don't think that the original quilt would have won those same awards because it had areas that I, I don't know, maybe cavalierly refer to it being somewhat lazy decisions. Um, but the second quilt was far more complex. Um, and, and that was the winning quilt. Um, so I guess the lesson that I learned is, and maybe that I would also say to other people who are interested in show quilting, is take the time to really think through your decisions and make them on purpose um, because there's always another deadline. Um, and so if you come up against the deadline and you're rushing through that process, you're going to make lazier choices um, and that will not serve you, particularly in the show quilting world. Now it's fine for other types of quilting, but in show quilting, essentially, always make the hard choice when it comes to quilting for show. That's great. Make the, make the mistakes that are going to benefit you or think, I guess, think about it before you do it, but your mistake ended yep. up being a creative mistake. 
Yes. Um, and I, th there's a thing in art that's often called the happy accident. Um, yes. And that's the dropped paintbrush. It's the splatter that wasn't supposed to be there getting turned into the right. thing that becomes amazing. Right. And that's happened to me a shocking amount of times in my show quilting. Uh, I have um, a particular show quilt um, and um, it went on to win uh, the Masterpiece Quilting Award, which has only been um, awarded to, I think they're up to 32 people since it started in 1985. So it's it's really, really rare to for this award to be presented. Um, and on that quilt, I also had a dye bleed that of course I needed to hide from the judges and from the world. And so I used Derwent Inktense pencils and colored, like physically colored on the quilt for the first time oh. um, and hid the areas that were a dye bleed. But you can't just hide a problem spot. Then you have to spread that hiding technique throughout the quilt so it looks like it's diffuse and it's on purpose um and that process of sort of painting areas of that quilt um ended up being like like that final like amazingness um that was missing from the original design concept um and then that quilt went on um to be my most award-winning quilt um at, at, and because of a happy accident and so i guess again like in terms of a lesson learned there is um like don't panic like wait and, and let like let the the blood come back into your head and let your heart rate slow down a little bit because at first when something goes wrong you feel like you're just gonna die it just it's so it feels so terrible um so you know calm down and then and then get creative and start to process through what the next logical step can be here mm -hmm. and how can you make the best of this and sometimes you know that that accident might be the thing that really like sends that project to the next level yeah, I love that. I always say there's no way to make a mistake when you're being creative because you just take it to the next level. You take the the next left hand turn and and figure out what. Yeah, is unless one to of these is involved, it. in which case sometimes mistakes are permanent. Yeah, <laughs> or you just figure out what to do with it. So let's talk about. You, there's always something else. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about technical skill and artistic vision. These are two important things that you must have. And how do you navigate? the intersection of the two when you're judging for an award-winning quilt? Um, I, that's a really great question. Um, and to me personally, I think that's an important aspect of show quilting. And I know that the questions you asked some of the others were basically like, how do you, what do you think about when you're judging? And so I think that th this encompasses that answer as well, which is uh, I'm very attracted to, um, like first the total package and and is it a strong design to start with um and then start looking at um the details but i do feel like that addition of our artistic component which i think also could be interpreted by the language of did the quilter say something original or are they um utilizing um something that has already you know already existed right so did that quilter do something original with this design. Is it an original design to start with? Um, if it's not, and it's a pattern, that's okay. But is it done really, really well? You know, are the points they're supposed to be pointy? Are they pointy? Is it square? And then when they did the quilting, which is something that is very important to me also, um, did they just duplicate uh, the, the, the quilting suggestions that maybe came with that pattern? And are there 50 quilts that exist now, um, you know, that are exactly the same because that person loved those decisions and they, and they recreated those decisions, which is fine. Um, but from a sh judging perspective, I'm looking for somebody who says to themselves, I want to have a voice and I want to take this canvas that I've now created and think of something unique and original. So that those are the things that I'm personally looking for. And I encourage people to think about, um, particularly when they start to work in a way of show quilting, um, I, uh, show quilts don't happen by accident. You know, you, you're starting that process thinking about putting something into show. And so if that's the case, then uh, I think starting with one foot firmly in the ground of, I want to make sure that the person looking at this project sees something unique here and not something that they've seen 25 times before. 
I think is a really critical part of show quilting. Um, and I only have one minute left, but I have to get to this question. And that is you travel the world teaching others how to find their own voice when it comes to being artistic and quilting. What would you say to aspiring Beth Ann wannabes for aspiring <laughs> quilters? How do we find our voice? And I, I really, I'm limited on time, but I, I want to get your answer because you have such a unique voice in this world. Thank you. Well, the first thing I think is to um, uh, um, apprentice yourself, I guess would be the right way, to someone that you admire um, and start by thinking about how are they making some choices that, that make them unique. And then as you master the process of um, free motion machine quilting or, or any other type of quilting, then you can start making uh, decisions that manipulate those design choices. Um, and this is a process I really encourage with my students quite a bit. Um, I have numerous uh, three month long master classes that I participate in. In fact, I have one getting ready to start. Uh, it um, starts on April 2nd and it's called Freehand Feather Fiesta. And this would be the art of free motion machine quilted feathers. Um, and my students work to learn everything there is to know about feathers from super traditional to super fancy, fancy. Um, but then we spend a good amount of time helping um, each other in a way, find that unique look to each of my students. And I do this by this like really in-depth drawing back and forth process with them over that three months. Anybody who's interested in learning about that can easily go to my website. You can search for my name, uh, White Arbor quilting.com, um, bethannnemish.com, or you can come find me on Instagram, uh, that which is um, at bethann.whitearbor, um, or on Facebook, same name. Bethann, amazing. I could talk to you, you for like the next three hours, but we're, we're, we're limited. And thank <laughs> 15 you. minutes went by really fast. <laughs> I know, I know. I have a list. I have so many more questions for you. We'll have to do it again. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing all that thank great you. insight and also uh, sharing your time and your talent with us this week. And then also as a judge a for at the you. contest. So thank you very much. Thank you. All well, right. Congratulations everybody. to everyone. And thank you again. You're fantastic. Thanks, Bethann. Okay, wow. Uh, so great. Oh my gosh. Uh, our next celebrity judge, very excited to welcome back to the show, Kimberly Einmo. You remember she was with us just yesterday doing ruler work. Uh, Kimberly is, is honored to represent Genomi America as their national spokesperson. She is an international author, award-winning quilter, fabric designer, and has been a quilt judge for more than 20 years. Kimberly developed a signature line of precision rulers, and she is a featured artist for the Electric Quilt Company. Hello, Kimberly. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I'm so great. Thank you for thanks for joining us. And thank you for uh, signing some more books and shipping them over to Sewing Machines Plus. Yes, I was excited. And I had such a limited supply left. But yes, we've got the box. I've already signed all the books and the and the rulers are with them. And we're shipping them out today. So yes. And that's what we did yesterday, the Jelly Roll Quilt Magic. It's it's not in print anymore, so I had to open the vault, pull some out, and then the ruler. So oh my goodness. coming to you all. Well, thank you you had some in the vault. We always have a couple of sta ones stashed away, but you had a couple extra that you could lend to us. So Kimberly, we want to know about you before we get to the contest. Let's start by sharing your journey into the world of quilting. So what sparked yeah. your interest to begin well, with? And then how did you end up pursuing it on a professional level? Well, um, that's a great question. Um, what happened was I had been sewing since I was wee little, um, learned to sew at the age of seven and started making everything in sight, but never really knew anything about quilting until I was a new military wife. And we were stationed up, my husband was stationed at the Pentagon and uh, we moved up there and I was walking home from work one day and walked past a quilt shop. And I always like to say the heavens parted, the sun shone down, the angels sang. <laughs> and, and it was just like I had found my calling. What turned out to be so great was quilting. Um, I could, every time we moved and we just finished our 23 third move in 36 years. Oh. So, yeah, this is our last one. Oh this, my gosh. We're not moving anymore. But um, every time we moved, I could take quilting with me. Um, 
I started to teach uh, just out of a necessity. We were so poor as um, as a new military wife. We, we just had no money. And so, you know, I just started to teach out of just sheer tenacity because I couldn't afford to take classes. So I just learned everything I could. And and um, I worked at a local quilt shop and just learned everything. And I was just voracious when it came to educating myself and learning every technique I could and perfect it and then I wanted to share that and I want I started by teaching classes to other military wives and so that's kind of how it morphed into and um, and then I had my first book published in 2005 by the American Quilter Society and it just sort of snowballed I say it was a, a god thing a god thing well I wanted to say this yesterday I'll say it right now thank you to your family and to your husband for their service uh, we really appreciate that thank you very much I mean, um, First to say that too. He always says it was his privilege and honor, and he still is working in support of our war fighters on the front lines or wherever they are in the world by as as a contractor. But he's still doing um, it, everything he can to support those who are putting our country first. Thank you, thank you so much. I also come from a military family, so I I do oh, know. Yeah. yeah. I do know the sacrifice, but I know I know the love for it as well. So I really appreciate that. Please tell them thank you. Um, but back to you and judging quilt yes. contests for over twenty years. Yes. Talk about um, the what you look for the the techniques and Absolutely. the design um, that you're looking for when you're really diving deep into these quilts. Right, and that's a great question. Um, for me, it is the whole package. Um, I, I look for the, the visual impact to start, but it is everything. It's the um, construction techniques. It's how you put everything together. Do all the elements come together to support the quilt. That means that um, do the piecing or the applique elements uh, work nicely with the quilting? Uh, does the quilting fill the space evenly? Um, sometimes you see quilts that are densely quilted in one area and then uh, an inner border doesn't have any quilting at all. So I like to look at the whole package right down to the binding. And for me, that's a big part of, you know, was there attention to detail? Was there care? Was there thought uh, in the whole package of the quilt? Um, and when I say visual impact, that doesn't mean it has to, you know, knock you off your feet when you look at it. Some of the most visually impactful quilts are very, what I would call low volume. They could be monochromatic. Um, but they they have an impact to you. I, it, it's like, have you ever walked into a quilt show and a quilt 50 paces away just calls to you? Um, that it, it could be because of the colors. It could be because of the story it's telling. It could be very minimalistic, but still very, very impactful. But the construction is also a big part of it. And how were those techniques executed? Were they done well and thoughtfully? So it is the whole package. But here's something that I really like to do. And when I was judging this contest, I took the time. I, I did it over a number of about five days where I looked at every quilt. Wow. But I, I did because I wanted to. I had my notepad and I took notes about the quilts and I read each of the maker's statements because sometimes you learn something that's integral to the story of the quilt by reading what the maker and i want to give the maker the respect of reading what they said about their quilt the story behind it a lot of times that's impactful too so it's the whole package yeah and you have you really have a keen eye for craftsmanship so it really truly to you is craftsmanship creativity Yes. And then we're going to throw in the story. Yes. Right. Right. And what does the quilt, what is the quilt saying? You know, and, and sometimes it's just so fun. And, and the quotes in this quilt fest just surpassed my wildest expectations. I, they really did. There were so many that really were just standouts, true standouts. And some with sweet stories and, and a lot made for grandkiddos. And I mean, they just, they all had heart. I loved that they all had heart. And that's so important that they had heart. Would you recommend, so let's say somebody hasn't entered a quilt contest because they're a little bit nervous or scared. Again, we look at craftsmanship, we look at creativity, and then telling the story, we have to add that in. Like, 
right. is one of the key components is writing up that story. Maybe the quilt has a story, but it's their personal story that goes along with it. Cause that then is part of the judging. Yes, like that's is. important. So some judges don't want to read or hear the story. That's their preference. I just happen to like that. I think that's just one more element of information that I can glean from the, the whole process of how this quilt was put together. I do have some great advice for everyone who, first of all, I, I think everybody should enter a quilt show. And I, I've even written an article at American Quilter Magazine about this, about I think that everyone should enter a quilt show at, or a different quilt shows at least three times, okay? At least enter a quilt three times. And here's why. Many times a quilt will be entered and it may not win a ribbon or an award, but then at the next show, it may. Because every time that quilt is being judged, of course it's being judged on its own merit, but it also depends on what other quilts were in that same category. In one particular show, there might be 50 entries in a category. And so there might be, it might be harder to win a ribbon or plus there's different judges at every show and every judge is going to look a little bit differently at those quilts. So if somebody enters a show, the last thing I would ever want for anyone to think is, oh, well, I didn't want anything. I'll never do that again. Right. No, enter that quilt again in a different show. Do it at least three times because if there's sometimes you get comments back from the judges and those are opportunities to learn what you can do better next time. Or even if you don't get the comments or you don't win in the next quilt show, maybe there's only 10 quilts in that category and your quilt may ribbon or win a prize. Do you so, remember your first three quilts, uh, quilt shows that you entered? Yeah, it's a long time ago, but yes, absolutely. And I didn't win anything in the first couple of shows. But when I finally did win, um, I had a quilt that took the top prize in the modern category, <laughs> which was such a shock. So, um, you know, you just never know. You just never know. And and not to be discouraged, you know, if it, the first time out, just say, no, I'm going to remember what Kimberly said. I'm going to enter it again at least three times. <laughs> That's, I think that's great. That's a great takeaway. I mean, you really are a role model to so many aspiring quilters and you gave us some words of wisdom there to enter three times, but let's go to the folks that are just starting their quilting journey. What advice will you give to them after they've watched this whole week, they're super inspired, they've got all the tools, they got the machines. First of all, none of us, all of the all of the judges here and all of the experts, none of us started out as experts. We all started as beginners. And beginners, all you have to do is just keep learning. You know, just make a quilt, see it through to completion, and then try to do something a little better or different next time. Even with every quilt I make, even now. I make myself try something new, something I haven't done before, a different thread, a different stitch, a different technique, something, so I continue to learn. And that's what I would say. Don't be discouraged. Just do it because it brings you joy. And, and just keep trying and dive in, ask questions, join a guild, get a friend to help you, uh, take a class when you can, uh, watch YouTube videos, just keep learning, just keep trying. And, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be perfect. Sometimes the best quilts are the ones with mistakes. Those can be design opportunities or those can be what you call your humble quilt. And I have <laughs> humble quilts. <laughs> I love it. And I just, so truly believe in using joy as your compass. And you said that uh, just, just always go with it, go to, with it with joy in your heart. Uh, Kimberly, tell us about your rulers. Cause yesterday you talked about ruler work and we were talking about your rulers. What was the inspiration behind your rulers? Making things simple uh, and not wasting fabric. Oh, I hate to waste fabric. I mean, I'm not a miser about it, but I hate wasted fabric. And if I can turn something and make a process easier, that's my goal. I'm always looking uh, for a way to make things as easy as possible so that people will enjoy the process and not 
not feel like they have to take a lot of extra steps or it's confusing. I try in everything with my patterns, with my rulers, with my books, I try to take the difficulty level out. I still want my quilts to look complex, but only the maker will know how easy they really are to construct and put together. And um, one last question. Talk about your collaboration with the Electric Quilt Company and how did that start? And does that... Um, does that, how does, how do they help you bring your vision to life oh, or vice versa? I design every quilt using electric quilt software. Um, and I started with them back when they were on version three, back in the early 1990s. Boy, that's really dating me. Um, but I, I started it I, and I was a graphic designer um, for my real job at the time. So it was kind of an easy step over to electric quilt software, but they're up to version eight now. And I just find it so easy to design quilts in that software. It's a very easy platform to learn. Um, there's lots of tutorials out there. There's lots of built-in help right in the software. So I just find it super simple. And once quilts are designed, I can audition my fabrics because you can scan your fabrics, photos of your fabrics into the software. You can audition how your quilt is going to look with your fabrics or the fabrics you, you use. And they have thousands and thousands of fabrics in their libraries already. So before you ever cut fabric, you can see exactly how your quilt's going to look. Wow. Kimberly, you are just amazing. Uh, I love that. I love that you just told us you were a graphic designer. So that's like a little peek behind the curtain. <laughs> uh, and I should have asked that right off the top because then we would know. We know you know how to use all this software because <laughs> you're doing the same thing now with your graphic design. It goes right into your quilts. I do want to say real quickly, I want to thank you. I've been watching you this week. You have been amazing. And I want to thank Dwayne and everybody behind the scenes for putting Quilt Fest on, Virtual Quilt Fest, because this is an awesome forum. I think people love having this. You guys have worked tirelessly this week and you still look so fresh and beautiful. And I know you've worked so long. <laughs> so I hope you have a good weekend to kind of recover. From. Oh, thank you, Karen. I never get tired. Just at, you know, 10 o'clock at night, they pull the plug and I fall asleep just like a... <laughs> I like a machine. Uh, Kimberly, we really appreciate you. And thank you so much for, for sharing your time and talents. And thank you for being a judge. And thank you for chatting with us today. It was an honor, truly. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. So everybody. everybody, Kimberly, Kimberly, I know. Wow, that was amazing. How lucky am I that I got to talk to all four of our celebrity judges. I am super inspired by them and their words of wisdom. If I if I had longer than an hour, I would have talked to them longer than an hour. But we got to keep things moving along here on Quilt Fest. This is day five. Hi, Blaine. Hey, Jane. Great job. Thank oh, my you. gosh. That was a very good interview. Thank I you. loved hearing about all four judges and uh, uh, hopefully that inspired the SMP Nation out there. And speaking of inspiration, I've got somebody coming up next that usually inspires everybody. And I'm super excited. So Jane, we'll see you back here in 30 minutes. But we're going to talk all about Brother PR1X, their new one needle uh, single cylinder machine. And we've got Cindy Hogan coming in. Now, Cindy resides in Georgia with her husband. She has a BS and an MS from the University of Tennessee in special education and was a full-time special education teacher until 2003 when she decided to change career paths and use her knowledge of PE design and education to be a freelance national product training specialist for Brother Software programs. Cindy is internationally recognized as a Brother Software expert. She began working with the PE design software when it was first inter introduced and begin teaching all the brother software thereafter. She has written many of the instruction books that you're going to find with the brother, uh, you know, like scanning cuts and software things and machines. And she does it all. She's the decathlete of brother. Y'all welcome to the show, Cindy Hogan. I really do need to update my resume or my bio. I no longer live in Georgia. We're back I in didn't Tennessee. Think you did. You're back in Tennessee. <laughs> Yeah, I've been here for five years. It appeared that I need to fix that bio. Well, I almost said Tennessee, and I thought, well, maybe she moved again and didn't tell me. No, 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 no. We're, we're still in Tennessee. We don't have any plans of moving anywhere else anytime soon. 
Well, Sandy, wonderful having you back on our show. We've had you on here many, many times, and this is the first appearance on Quilt Fest. Save, save the best for last year here. So glad you're here, and I know you love this machine, so we're going to let you get going on it because I know there's a ton of things to cover, and I'm going to come back, and I'll tell everybody how they can get theirs. All right. Sounds like a plan. So, guys, this is our new PR1X. It is a single needle tubular or cylindrical machine, however you want to say that. And what's unique about it is that it allows you not to have to take things apart. So if you're wanting to do a onesie, you don't have to stand on your head and do it. You don't have to take your purses apart. It has an expansive 8 by 12 inch embroidery field. So this is your largest hoop size. There are optional larger hoops that require a split hoop, but this is a really nice size hoop. And it has 495 built-in built in designs. It has 33 fonts. One of those happens to be an embroidery foam font. Let me pop you up here and see if I can make you a lot closer to see the embroidery foam font. Here we go. So if you look, these are puffy little letters here. So nice and thick, and they, they are resizable. Your, this font is going to be our T01. So it does have the embroidery foam font. They, you can make them big, which I did there. This is a smaller size. And you can just have a blast with those. I can't see your comments right now, so I'm going to expect Blaine to tell me if I need to um, stop and answer a question. And I have lost my stylus. Oh, there it is in my pocket. I put it someplace I could find it. So I'm going to touch the home button here. I was playing before we started with our positioning. So let's look at what we've got inside here. These are our different design categories. These are our new modern art style categories. And as you scroll through, you can come and see what you've got in here. We have, if I go return here, we have our boho style, our groovy, whatever you want to call them. They call them groovy, I do believe, is what we, they settled in on as to the style of these. You have, these are what I would consider our utility designs built in. And then you have frames. So these are a lot of little frames that are great for monograms and for putting around design elements. You also have quilt blocks that are built in here. So quilting designs that allow you to quilt up to an eight inch square. And then you have our font design category. These are design fonts. They are not like keyboard lettering. You come in and you touch one. This is a new font. It's a modern art font. This one is unique in that you enter the last letter of something first, and then you go work your way backwards. So if I were wanting to type in um, happy or let's see, let's think of something small. Well, let's do ABC and we'll do it backwards. So I would put in my C first and then I would touch add because you can combine designs on screen. And then I would add my B. I would move it over. And this is just the way these kind of overlap. And you touch again, go back into that same category. And then you would add your A and set it. And then you can move it over. Keep in mind, you do not have to follow the colors that we have designed for you. You can pick any colors you want because you have that capability. One of the things that I love about this machine is that capability of on-screen editing. So if you wanted to change the color of a design, you can simply grab the color tile, pick which color you're planning on changing. So if I don't want that to be black and I wanted it to be green, I could come in and put a green color tile around it. Gives you that option. If you don't like what you changed, you can always reset it to take it back to the beginning. So let's go back home and look at a few more categories. So we also have very large alphabet designs in here. These are about six inches. And each of the different categories, this is one of my favorites. It's been on a few different machines. We also have a Greek, excuse me, a um, athletic applique font and a Greek 
applique font design category. So both of those are appliques. Then you go into your fonts. As I said, we have 33 of these and zero does count as a number. So even though if I scroll down to the last page and it says um, T01, it actually this one says 31, that would actually be number 32. And this is, this is your embroidery foam font, the specialty font that is T-01. It is the only one that you have that is built in for embroidery foam. And this is the only machine that we have that has it on it. So if you come in and you grab a font and you simply, it's like using a keyboard, you use your uppercase and your lowercase. You can choose large, medium, or small to begin with, or you can resize after you're done. I personally resize after I'm done because I add it to whatever I'm planning on embroidering. So let's go back and hit return here and get out of that screen. And let's go add, what else What do we have here? We have frames, each of, the, each of our shapes have different size, different styles of frames. There are 14 for each one of them. So if you touch the rectangle and you wanna see what it looks like, we can grab our hoop and we can simply zoom in on that to see what that style looks like. So that is a great way to, I'll, I'll, one of the ways I use that is to work with quilt labels and things of that nature. So if you're a quilter, this is really a cool little feature. You can then go in and touch add, go back into your fonts and find one of our small fonts. These are our small fonts down here on page two. And you can simply put in, type in your letter. So if you wanted to say um, your name, you could put in four, let's say, let's say we're going to say four. And I'll hit the space key. Um, let's say we say Sally. And then I would hit my return key and I would put from. And we'll just say mom. And, it, you know, guys, it's always a good idea to date your quilts if you want people to re recognize when you did this. So let's look at this in a higher, look at this in our hoop so we can see what it looks like. So there's my screen. It says for, for Sally from mom. And if I want to come back in and add what year it is, I would simply hit the return key and put in what year are we in? That would be an excellent thing for me to know today. 2024. Now I'm going to go ahead and set that. But I think my frame is a bit large for my design. No worries. I'm going to select my frame. So I'll just tap it to select it. I can come into my size and then I can shrink it proportionally or disproportionately. So you have resizing capabilities directly on the screen. And if you were doing multiples for people, you could certainly create multiples of your design. I'm going to go ahead and say home. Oops, hit the wrong button there. Touch it and say home and touch OK. Now, you also have an alphabet that is built in specially for monogramming. So this is a three-letter monogram. You can also choose the st two style if you want, but you tap your first letter, go to the middle key, tap the middle letter, go to the last key, and touch your last name, your last initial. Then you can say set. You can come in and you can choose add and you can choose the same category. There are built in frames for that as well. Or you could have chosen one of the other frames that we have in there. So it is, that's a super easy way to do a monogram if you need a monogram. So let's go in here and let's do a little bit of designing. So let me show you some of the editing tools. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab a design. And this, does, this machine has the repeat border feature on it. I can mirror designs. 
and I can create repeats of it. So I can go to the side or I can go up and down up to you. I'm going to go to the side first and we'll add a few to it. And then let's say we want to go downward and we can add an entire row at one time without having to add, go anywhere else. You're here, you're in software. You want them spread further apart. You have your spreading tools here. This one thing makes things further apart. This one makes them closer together. And let's go back to the sideways one. We can make it further apart or make them closer together. If you want it to go back to the center, you can touch the center of the screen. So that is really an easy way to create a repeating pattern directly on the screen. If you don't like what you did, you can always delete it. Or we could have gone back in and grabbed it and take, taken it back down to one. But let's say you wanted two patterns. You like that one, but you want to bring in another one and you want a repeating border of it. You can certainly do that. I'm going to make us a pig and a fork. So and let's go ahead and add another pig. Let, let's go ahead and come in here and copy our pig. We'll move it over here. I'll go to the center and then to the side. And we'll make this pig face the other one. So we'll mirror that one directly on the screen. And let's make him a little bit further apart. So now we've got all of these. We can go into our border repeat function. Notice how it grabbed them all. And you can go ahead and add to the add downwards or add to the side. I'm going to add to the side first and we'll go to the middle and then spread them apart to where it looks kind of right. And then you can simply add to the bottom of that as well. You are the designer. You get to pick what you want to do, but you have those tools directly on your machine without having to use embroidery software. So it's kind of great to it's. It's amazing what they put on our machines these days. I truly do love it. Now, if I go home and let's go, let's design something for ourselves. Okay. I'm going to use a five by seven hoop. So I, we're going to come in here and grab in our new category. Let's come into the modern art category here and let's grab our little turtle here. I'm going to make us a beach bag. So Let's come in and let's choose add and let's grab a font and let's see here. I like this one. Let's go with that guy right there and we'll type in beach. Now it comes in as black automatically. We'll go ahead and set that. But if you want to check it because you can't see, you can always touch the check key to see. And that allows you to work with it. So we're going to go ahead and say, okay, I, my beach was spelled cor correctly. I didn't mess it up. I also have a ray here that allows me to arc my text. But once again, since I'm on top of my embroidery design, it's kind of hard to see it. So I'm going to go back with straight and I'll show you where we can do it on another screen. So let's go ahead and set. And we can take our text and move it above our turtle. And we can say array here so I can array it right here on my screen and I can see how it looks in relationship to my turtle. So I'm going to take that and take the arc down a little bit and touch OK. Now, looks pretty good to me, but what, what if I want different colors? I can actually choose multicolored text if I want to. That will break that text out. If I decide that's not what my option is, I can always turn that key off. It doesn't actually change your colors here on screen unless you go in and change them yourself. But you can notice that you'll notice that we have multiple blacks instead of just two. Um, and it, you can go in and change those colors. So if I touched multicolor and I came in here and I picked red for my first one, go to the next color, I could do a different color. So you can change each of them that allows you to do it right there on screen. I'm going to go back and reset it because I don't want to change my colors and I don't want multicolored text today. You can also space your letters further apart or closer together. And I think we're ready to go though. So let's go ahead. Actually, I want to do one last thing. I'm going to change that too, let's give it a pink color or a red. We'll go with red. 
and we'll go with a green for well, I got to touch what I want here. We're going to go with a green for this. So we'll go with like a seafoam green, something you guys can see. And we'll say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and touch embroidery. And now I'm ready to embroider. So if you're wanting to use one of our specialty frames, which is what I'm going to do today, let me see here, which one of these do I want to go to? There we go. So I'm going to back out just a little bit for you guys so you can see how I changed this frame out. I'm going to use a um, magnetic hoop. So I'm going to simply take the screws off here and take away my frame holder. This is my frame holder A. It comes with the frame holder A and B. B is for specialty hoops like your um, 8 by 8 frame. All right. So let's go in here and I'm going to put on my F driver. This is for my magnetic frames. And I simply put it in here. And put it over the little little gidget there. There we go. Awkward angle. We're going to kind of slide in here. Because you guys like to see things stitched. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch you something. There we go. I'm in on that screw. And I'm going to put my screw in over here. There we go. So now I'm ready for my magnetic frame. I'm simply going to slide in behind this. Actually, it wants me to change. We're going to go ahead and say close. Oh, fiddle dee dee. Hold on. Let me trick it. All right. I need to move it to the middle. Come on, go to the middle. Return. Ah, oh, fiddle dee dee. It's going to be ornery on me today. I should have moved it to the middle before I did this. Because it's telling me I am in the wrong. And I'm within five by seven, so we're good with that. I just need to. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so let's hit center. There we go. Now we'll be able to go. Sometimes we all hit the wrong button. And I've got a magnetic frame between my knees. Not a good plan. Click on there. You'll... Okay, guys. I've got to stand in front of the camera. I've got to get at a different angle. You can't do this sideways. There we go. Okay. So now we're ready to put this on. So here's my magnetic frame. I'm going to go slide it in from the side. This is the five by seven magnetic. We're simply going to slip that into its little groove. There we go. So now we're ready to actually hoop. We're going to go ahead and say, okay, we're ready to hoop. I'm going to put a piece of stabilizer in here. And I want to show you a couple of tricks here. So if you look down at the bed of my machine, do y'all see that little mark? I'm going to turn off the light on my machine so you can really see this. So do you see that crosshair? I can see it quite well on my end, but if I don't turn off my light for you guys, you don't get to see it very well. So there's my little crosshair. If I have a bag and it's very centered and I don't have to worry about marking anything, I, which is this one would work, but I've got it marked on the other side. I want you to kind of see what happens. This is one of the cool things about this frame. This one lets me slide things in. And I'm going to tuck my handles up here. It would have been smarter if I'd put my stabilizer inside my hoop, inside my bag first. 
No worries. They will get it there. We're just going to tuck our bag in there. But if you look at how that's projected down on here, it makes it super easy to just line it up if you know that you want to use that marking. And you've got plenty of space up inside this frame to tuck all of your hook, all of your stuff up underneath it. I would hate to tell y'all that this is not the easiest thing to do from the side. But you can get it directly in a spot that you want. And then you simply take your magnets. There are four of them. And they are done by side. And you snap them into place. And that's how easy hooping that one is. Even from the side. You can't get your magnets in the wrong spot. It will not let you. They Because they are specific sizes. So you've got an L, basically. And there's a short side and a long side. It lets you know when you're there. So you've got it hooped and it's ready to go. But I wanted to actually put it in a specific spot for you guys. So I have marked on the opposite side of this bag. So you guys can see how the two-point positioning actually works. Let me get my little bag back out of here. And then we'll stitch something. Tuck my stabilizer down this time. And we'll slide it directly in here. I know my arms are in your way right now. They'll be out in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to slide down close, but I'm going to make it crooked on purpose. We'll get this up in here. And the nice thing about these bags, that this um, frame system, is you can get all the way down to the end of your bag if you want to. I'm not going to go there. We're going to get it in the middle here, kind of. But I'm crooked on purpose. This is where, if you're marked, you can get it in there without having to do the two-point positioning. But I do want you to see the two-point positioning that you can do with a machine. Get that all tucked up in there. Make sure I get the right magnet. There we go. And we'll go on this side. Okay, so now we're ready to two point position. Let's get back over here to our screen. Here we go. This is our two point positioning key. This is the dropping the LED laser guide by itself. This is two point positioning. What it asked me is where am I going to base this off of? I'm going to go with center center, which is this one right here. And we'll go ahead and touch next. And I'm going to the right because that's how I've marked. I've marked my center. Depends on what you've marked. I'm going to go ahead and touch next. And then you take this dot using these right here and you're going to match it up using this touch pad to the mark that's down on the bed of your machine. So let me go back to right here. So we're gonna line that up with this. And when you wanna get, refine it just tight, you touch this little key right here. That's going to be a slow movement. So you've got slow movement, medium movement, and turtle, excuse me, rabbit fast. This guy takes great leaps at a single bound. So I tend to use this one till I get close, and then I switch to the slow. We're going to go ahead and touch next. And then I'm going to take that crosshair again, this crosshair, and we're going to move it up to this line using those same arrow keys. And once I've done that, I touch OK. Here we go. We're going to touch set. Actually, not set, not OK, but set. And my design has been rotated into the position, place that I want it to be. So let's talk about threading. All right. Because that's always everybody's freaky thing. We, we worry about these machines a little bit when it comes to threading. So super simple to thread. You simply take the one that's threaded, loop it over this, take the cutter, 
and snip. And then you take the color you want to stitch it in, add it together. We're going to have a purple turtle and tie it off just in a little overhand knot. And then we're going to pull it out of the needle. So I'm going to go ahead and take you back down to my needle here. And I pulled it out of the needle. And then on my screen, and I'll show you this in a second, there's a button on the outside of my screen, but I don't want to take you too many times there. So I'm going to touch this little key right here. And then you slide up and under, up and over. Oh, I didn't get in there. You got to get all the way through. Up, under, over. Pull the thread down and then press the needle threader key. And your needle is threaded. So I'm going to show you my needle threader key here. It's this little button. Oh, let's zoom out just a little bit here. This little button right here. That is your needle threader key. You also have a trimmer on it. I love my automatic needle threaders. So now if we want, we can go ahead and start stitching a little bit. I'm going to actually switch it back to green, I think, because I don't think I want a purple turtle. So we'll thread it one more time. We'll take it up and loop it over there. Let's go back to here so you can see. Up and loop it over. This little area right here. Tuck it right there. Take the one you want and tie it off. Pull it out through the needle here until you see the thread come out. Push the needle threader button and then tuck it under, under. You'll hear it click into place. Pull it up and over and there you go. So now we're ready to start. We're simply going to touch the lock key and the start key and we're ready to go. All right, Miss Jane, I, and I'll pop this down so you can see a little bit closer. I'm assuming some questions are out there for me, but I figured they wanted to see it stitched just a little bit. Or excuse me, it's Blaine, not Jane today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Jane. No, nope, you're not Jane. You're Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> Rhyming well, names for me, you know. Hey. Well, I I know we get it's uh, I get confused all the time. There's so many people coming on the show, but uh, Cindy, great job as usual. Uh, great machine, and uh, thank you, sir, so much for coming on the show and demonstrating this. So I'm gonna tell everybody how they can get this, and hopefully we'll get to see you again real soon. All right. Thanks. See ya. All righty. Okay, everybody. This is the brother PR1X. This is the one needle embroidery machine. Now, it has those four thread spools, but it makes it extremely easy to change threads. You just tie the one thread off and pull it through. Again, guys, we have a price on here for $73.99, but we do have a call in for more information. Uh, so give us a call right now or go on the website and speak to one of our live chat agents. Either way, they can tell you all about this and then tell you all about the Quilt Fest uh, specials we have. Uh, give us a call right now at 800-401-8151. We're going to ship this free nationwide right to your doorstep. Now, this machine, uh, it's going to be about 68 pounds, so you will need a little bit of help, uh, you know, uh, picking it up and setting it where you're going to put it. And we also do have stands that you can get for them uh, as well as an option. But we would highly recommend this. This thing is really nice. And then again, it's the upgraded from that Persona, and it has that 8 by 12 embroidery area, which is really super nice. All right, guys, uh, give us a call at 800-401-8151. Let's bring a Jane back in. I want it. Are you on it? <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I want it. I want one of everything, please. Thank you. Well, you still got to get a six needle. I love that. I do. I love the 680 W. <laughs> it was on yeah. my list. I've been talking about my list. I know it's Friday and I have a list of things like I do every year, um, but the list is growing. <laughs> well, you know, every time I want something in Broadway to always think about, it, I'd love to have a multi needle machine. Uh, the embroidery on because they're just you know yeah. it's just awesome i think to have one of those and you know just think about if you had one set up where you could just go and embroidery a hat or a anything. shirt anytime you want anything i mean so right now and you'll see a lot of this on my website janeclaus.com i cut up the sides and i'll put it on pants or shirts or whatever i do um and i think to myself well how great would it be just put it on the thing and the hoop and let it go because oh, you know, you know and angela wolf you know makes those 
she gets those shirts that has the sheer um, yes. material on the arms. And then she embroideries designs on that. Yeah. I think it's something called, um, what is it called, Kennedy? Something tattoo? Oh, wow. Sleeve tattoos? Oh, well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. sleeve tattoos. And, yeah. and cause it's I consider sheer, it like any kind of embroidery. Yes. On like a tight fitting sleeve. It's sheer and she embroiders on it. So it looks Yeah. Like it's really too. cool looking how she does that. that. And, uh, yeah. you know, that just shows you the all the things you can do. Uh, you know, with it. And uh, so they're pretty cool to have in a broad dream machine. I, Get it. I love that. Get it people. It's now. It's now. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Jane, we're going to let you keep going. I know we got a great session coming up next and uh, yes. we'll see you back here in about 30 minutes. Oh, we do. I love our next presenter. Becky Thompson is back with us again. Power tools with thread. We love Becky. Uh, she learned her passion for stitching from her mother, who is an amazing garment seamstress. Um, so she's been around sewing machines through her entire life. She spent 20 years in the United States Air Force and 17 years as a federal civilian. And she's learned to be comfortable with technology and loves to combine that knowledge with her quilting and her machine embroidery skills. There's nothing that this woman cannot do. You know her, you love her. It is Becky Thompson. Hi, Becky. Well, hi, Jane. How are you doing? I am so good. I'm always just, I'm thinking you're never leaving that room because you know so much about all these cool machines. You just like, you're practicing with your power tools. I love it. Yeah, all the time, all the time. I live in my happy space now. I do got to tell you though, you said there's nothing I can't do. Anybody who watches me and hi, I'm Becky from the YouTube channel, Power Tools with Thread. And I do machine embroidery and long arming and quilting and all kinds of stuff. I can't match fabrics. <laughs> Come on. I cannot. It's just not something that I do. And, uh, I, you know, but I always say I know my limitations and I'm okay with them. So I either outsource what I can't do to somebody who can, who's really good at it, or uh, I'll get some technology to do it for me if possible. So, wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm always looking for some way to automate something. Um, oh, it is so good. I see a lot of my viewers on here. Uh, if I am new to you, I would like to have you uh, pop over to Power Tools with Thread on the YouTube channel, uh, on YouTube. And every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Central, we have the Situation Room. And it's an amazingly great way to start your day. Lots of people in there and we just sit around and we cut or we sew or we just Q&A or whatever we do. And there's always uh, lots of tutorials and uh, nuggets and tidbits and things like that. So uh, matter of fact, somebody wrote me an email today and they asked me because I'm going to talk about the King Quilter, too. And before I do that, real quick. Once you turn the King Quilter 2 on and you've got the lights and it, see how nice and bright that is up under there? I squirrel, you guys. You just have to kind of follow along. <laughs> uh, it comes with these lights and I'm going to show you the package for that in just a minute. But once you have the main screen on and everything's looking good on the machine, that's when you want to uh, press the tablet button and get it started on Pro Stitcher because there's going to be some communication that's taking place between the tablet and the machine and the machine needs to be on. So that's a little tip. If you have a King Quilter, it's always right to go ahead and turn on the machine first and then turn on your automation. So let me get back to this email from a viewer. She wrote me and she says, I really want to get that King Quilter sit down. Do you think that that's a good buy for me? Do, and she wanted to get it from Sew Machines Plus because you guys are having this special, right? And so she said, you know, I, I'm not sure. And what should I do about a sit down machine? So I will give you, uh, I had a sit down at one time. And I would ask myself this question, do I doodle? Are you good at doodling? Because doodling requires you to move your hand in, you know, in certain ways in order to make designs, right? And when you're sitting down at that sit down machine, all, you've got to move the fabric under the needle. All right. So that's a key right there. I don't doodle. I sold my sit down machine and bought myself a long arm with automation because I know my limitations. <laughs> 
and I'm perfectly fine with uh, doing what I need to do so that I can get my quilting done. And then I don't have to be stressed and I don't have to be frustrated or anything like that. So get the right machine for you. Okay. And if you're kind of waffling on it and you're not sure, you guys, you've worked your whole life for everybody else in your family and it is your turn. My theory is the kids can have the house. Go get what you want to get and use it and enjoy your time. Okay. That's just how I roll on these kind of things. Okay. So I wanted to talk to you about the King Quilter. This is the King Quilter Elite. And I love it. King Quilter 2 Elite. I got to look at the little uh, labels on the machine. King Quilter 2 Elite. I love this machine. This is by Sewing Machines Plus. So it has an amazing price point because there's no middleman in between you and the uh, where the machine comes from. So when you get this machine, this is an 18 inch long arm. I love this long arm. I've had a bigger one. I actually went from a 21 back down to an 18. I love being able to reach behind the machine and be able to turn the hand wheel. I couldn't do that on a 21. So that might be something to consider as well if you're limited on space and you don't wanna to have to run around behind the machine. So when you get this, it comes with, of course, a manual for the machine itself. And you'll also get a manual for Pro Stitcher. And I got Pro Stitcher Premium. I really, really love this software. And when I was on on Monday, we just basted down this quilt onto the, uh, the backing and got everything together. Let me toss these out of the way. And you also are going to get a Pro Stitcher quick, quick reference guide. And one thing I would advise you, if you're thinking about getting automation for your long arm, you always want to think about education, okay? Because I, even I, and I'm comfortable with technology, I've had to watch videos and learn different software systems over and over because of the different ones that I've had. And I'm loving this Pro Stitcher. But there are gazillions of Pro Stitcher videos on YouTube for free. So that's really important if you're considering automation. What good is it if you don't know how to use it? So I'm really into making sure that there's uh, education for what you want to do. Also, when you get this model of the King Culture 2, this comes with a whole bunch of goodies that would otherwise cost you uh, a little bit more money. So this is the um, Handy Quilter Light Strip Kit that came with this. And it gives me a beautiful bright underneath. Uh, it's just a, a sticky strip of LED lights that went underneath. And you guys, there's a USB plug on the back of this machine and it's USB powered. So you don't have to have another cord figuring out where you're going to plug it in and have it dragging all around in the back. So that is really a nice feat. Now, I was just pleasantly surprised at that. I thought, where am I going to plug in this USB? Well, sure enough, there's an empty USB port on the back handlebars. Very cool, right? Then you're also going to get the shore foot. Now, the shore foot is a little bit higher, taller foot for the long arm so that you can use your rulers if you like to do ruler work because you've got to have a taller foot so that this uh, does not get hit by the machine. And so you get the sure foot from Handy Quilter and they sell these at Sew Machines Plus comes in here. So if you need to get any of your uh, Handy Quilter accessories, you can certainly get them there too. It also comes with the glide foot too. And I just put this on just today because I wanted to play with it. This foot is excellent. If you're going to be going over applique or maybe you're quilting for somebody and it's got really bulky seams, that little bowl foot, let me zoom in. It's just such a cute, it looks like a little bowl. It almost looks like it goes in my front yard with a little water fountain coming out of it. <laughs> so, yeah, the glide foot is awesome and long armors everywhere just love it. It was really easy to put on, okay? And um, it, it just went on just perfect. So I love it. 
and that's pretty cool. And so inside of that glide foot box now, I have got the original uh, foot that came on the machine. Also, when you get this version of Pro Stitcher Premium, you're going to get Pro Stitcher Designer. Now, this is really nice. You can install Pro Stitcher Designer on your laptop or your desktop. OK, so then you can sit at your desk or laptop or traveling down the road or whatever you're doing and you can put your quilt together the way you want on the computer and then you save it to a USB and take it over to your tablet and you've got it right there and you don't have to stand in front of the computer in front of your tablet for 30 minutes or however long it takes you to figure out what you're doing, right? So that's really a nice feature to have a desktop version of this software to be able to play with and poke around. Do you like it? Don't you like it? Maybe you come across another design you think you want and you got to start all over or switch them out, whatever. You're not standing up here. You can do it on a laptop. So that's very, very cool. 7 a.m. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we start early here, <laughs> but there's always a replay too. So anyway, what I wanted to do now was take you through the process of how to set up a quilt to uh, stitch out on your pro stitcher. So there's only three things you really have to do. You have to tell the computer how big of an area you want it to stitch. OK, think of it like framing a house. You have to frame the house first before you can put the walls and put stuff in it. Right. So you have to build the frame. And then you have to put the stuff in it and you have to figure out how big you don't. That's a lie. You don't have to figure out how big that's going to be, because once you put a design in there, you just touch a button that says fill and it goes bloop, and it's done. You can play with it if you want. And then you just have to start stitching. It is so, so easy to use this software. I've used my share and I really like the Pro Stitcher. So let me get you up close so you guys can see what I'm doing. OK. All right, I'm going to pull you over. I'm on wheels now. So hopefully we don't lose connectivity here. I do like my grid, but I'm going to turn it off so you guys don't uh, get confused about anything. So this is just the main screen for the Pro Stitcher Premium. And we've got tabs across the top. We've got some menu buttons. Depending on what tab you choose, they will change. And then we have a little... Uh, workspace ribbon over here that uh, you will get options of things you can do. Now, I am a firm believer of I don't need to know what every button does. I don't care about that. I want to get life is short. I got things to do. So what I want to do, first of all, like I said, you've got to tell the computer how big of an area that you are going to quilt. So right there we have an area tab. I don't know. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see a little closer. That may be a little bit better. OK, so touch the area tab and I'm going to move my machine back so that I am just off the quilt a little bit. I'm about an inch over. I don't have a lot of batting. Y'all, I grabbed a scrap. OK, so I just nudged it up as far as I could. And um, I just want to be over the top of the quilt a little bit and off the side to about an inch. Now, one thing you may want to do is if your quilt is not square, you're gonna want to bring it down where you can see where the edge of the quilt is and bring it down if your when you rolled it up, if it rolled up in lots of layers right here, let's say it rolled up all the way out here, I would bring the quilt, I would bring this all the way out to here, just to make sure that I know I'm gonna have enough pantograph to cover whatever happens to be there, okay? So I'm just gonna back this up. This quilt is Red, White, and Bang by Riley Blake. It's a couple years old and I put it together because I want to display this and hang it off of our deck at our coastal home. So, all right, that's exactly where I want to start. And now, okay, I want to go what we call two corner. Okay, so you got two corner multi-point quilting space. I'm going to touch two corner. And it goes bing. Okay, so I have told it that's one part of where I want that to be.
And now let me back out. Let me see here. Let me go wide and turn you a little bit. I'm cameraman, production, director. <laughs> and then down here to the other side, I'm going to come all the way over here and I'm going to bottom out down here at the uh, pole and about an inch off the edge of the quilt. And I'm going to back up, oh, I don't know, about an inch and a half. And I'm going to hit two corner again. Let me see if I can bring you this far. Okay, I'm going to hit two corner again. And I don't see what I wanted to see. Let me go back to home. There it is. Okay, so now I can see how wide my quilt is. And right over here, I think I think we lost both. Oh, there's Jane. Let's give. Hey, Jane. I think we lost uh, Becky, so we'll give her a second to get back uh, logged in. Yeah, cool. I heard like a ding, but I thought that was just me. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's back. All right, so let's go right back to Becky. Yeah, we lost her there for a second. Oh, hi, it's me. Now we have Becky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Okay. All right. So now I can see how wide my quilt is. You want to take a note right here of the height. And I've got 11.87 on the height. And that is going to be my quilting area for this particular pass. Okay. And what I want to do now is I need to tell the software uh, how, how tall my quilt is. Let me get you in here so you can see. Okay. And my quilt, it says width is 41.87 and height is 11.87. I want to change my height. My height is actually 52. And I'm going to hit clear and I'm going to type in like 56 just to make sure I have plenty. 50, whoop, delete that. 56 and hit enter. And now it says resize area is 41. 0.87 by 56 and that's perfect okay so down here behind this menu I'm going to touch the home button or the refresh button and that gives me my whole quilt area right here okay so now I can see the whole quilt area I do want to come back to the middle and see the crosshairs you can see the crosshairs. That tells me exactly where my needle is. I really like that. And I want to come back up here to center. The reason for doing this to come up to center, oh, sorry. The reason for this to come up to center is so that when I'm up at the top, I'll show you. My needle is right there on the top of the quilt, okay? And I'm going to bring it back up here. And I can see, you wanna make sure you're not gonna hit any pins or anything like that. So I'm okay up here at the center of the quilt. And if I had any pins, I would wanna make sure that I'm not gonna hit those. So that's a real good kind of a double check to make sure you are not going to hit any pins. All right, well now I wanna choose a design. A very Another very cool thing about Pro Stitcher is out of the box, it comes with hundreds of designs. So I'm gonna touch file and I'm going to touch design and I'm gonna choose open. And I just wanna show you guys, there are a dozen, dozens of designers, like here's Urban Elements, You've got um, Anne Bright. You have all of these very famous. Kimmy Bruner, love her. Okay, so I'm going to come down here to, um, let's see. I want to go to, let me see. Where's the lady that I had wanted to do? And I want the dragonflies is what I'm after. Let me hit cancel. I'm going to hit design. And if you've been using something, you can pull up dragonflies. That's the one I want. So this is a 
patriotic quilt with summer with pickup trucks and croquet and all that. And it would be great. We always have dragonflies flying around. Now that looks really big. And the height of that is 12.48, which is more than I had in my uh, quilting space that I told it about. Okay. But that's no, pro no problem at all. So now I want to modify that design. I'm going to touch modify. And let's see, I'm going to go to design. Nope, that's right. And let me resize. Hold on a second. I got to check my notes, you guys. I'm still new at this. So I beg your indulgence. Okay. All right. So we're going to uh, choose the design and then resize. Let's see that. Uh -huh. Okay. I think what I want to do, I'm going to tap on that. Nope. That's not what I wanted to do. Let me hold on a second. I want to go to modify and resize this. Okay. And then I'm going to move this over right there. All right. And I'm going to make sure that the lock is on so that the width and the height change together. And then there is a button right here that tells me it's 12.87 down here at the bottom. Let me get this a little bit so you can see it. And I'm just going to make it smaller and just keep making it smaller. Now there's a mini, oops. Yep, that's okay. Am I doing this right? Nope, not. And make that bigger and drink that down. Whoop, uh-oh. See, this is what happens. Hold on a second. No resize. And undo, undo. We love undo buttons. Don't we love undo buttons? Those are great. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So I've got my area. I need to refresh so I can see, see center and whatnot. All right. So I want to go, let's see. I do want to baseline, which is going to like freeze frame. And that will save what I've done. Not save it, but it baselines it. So if I make any other changes now, Yes, everybody's favorite button is the undo, right? Okay. So I want to go and I want to touch this and whoop, and move it over. I've got uh, issues here, guys, because where's my undo? Edit, file. And sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to, right? Okay. And I'm going to touch this. And every time I think I'm selecting the area is what it's doing. And dragonflies. Let me select that. There we go. We've got bars over here that we can change. And I'm going to touch it and move it over. But I need to make sure that I have got this where I want it to be. There we go. And then I'm going to go to repeat. That's the button I want. Okay. And I'm just going to touch fill. And there it is. So I have got some extra space. Whoops. I've got some extra space all around in here. And it's so easy to fix this. Right now I've got horizontal and there is a button right here for stretch. And I'm going to stretch that out. And it's stretched perfectly. And then I'm going to touch the vertical button. And I'm going to stretch again. And that's it. And that's going to stitch out. Should stitch out just fine. So let's see. I want to make sure that I have got that set right and that that's going to stitch fine. So, okay, here is the top. I can see. And let me get all the way down to the bottom of the design. I'm going to come forward. And it's not going to fit because I didn't resize it. So undo, 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 undo. You guys, I've had this for about, uh, baselined it, didn't I? I've had this for a bit. There we go. So I need to modify, resize. I'm going to touch it with my finger. Whoop. And I want to make it smaller. 
Nope. Let's see here. Width and height lock. Let me see. Okay. The lock is on. That was what I needed to do. Nope. I keep selecting the area instead of the design. It's very frustrating. Hold on a second. Workspace, dragonflies. There we go. And I wonder if I can just make this smaller. So this is what you, and oh, down here. That's right. There we go. Make it smaller. I'm going to make it about six and a half. You guys, I've only had this thing about a couple of weeks. Okay. So that looks good. Right. So now I'm going to go to repeat. Now I'm going to go to fill. It does the whole thing. See? And I'm going to uh, do a horizontal stretch and a vertical stretch. If you keep poking around on the buttons, you'll figure it out. Ta-da! It's done. It's ready to start stitching. So I can see here now that, and now I want to save it. So I'm going to baseline this again so that I know it's right where I, that's where I want it. It's going to look good. And I'm going to go file and let's see, file and save. And I want to save my workspace. Okay. And I'm just going to save it anywhere you want. It's workspace and I'm going to change the name, go backwards and I'm just, whoop. It saved the file. Okay, good. So now I'm ready to start stitching. I can see there is the bottom of the first pass and here is the top and it's ready to go. So I had to poke around a little bit, you guys, but that's how easy it is. <laughs> Oh, well, it looks like we lost Becky. She was poking around a little bit, but she did make it look easy when she figured it out. There she is. Sorry. Yay. <laughs> Yay. You guys, those of you that are new, this is what happens. You end up just poking around, but you know what? That's how you learn. And that is the way that a lot of us will do it is you just sit there and you're like, okay, I know this happens. I know this happens. And you'll get it working just fine. So I absolutely love this. I want to thank Sewing Machines Plus for having me on. And if you are considering a long arm, definitely think of this King Quilter 2 Elite. I absolutely love it. And it works great. You've got to write down your notes. And then yes. you follow your notes. I love yeah. notes right there. Your fingertips are the best. Or you keep that book really close and just like peek into it. If you're, I always like little dog ear or page, make sure I go back to it. But Becky, we love having you on the show. We love watching your show on YouTube. You're just so fun. You're real. You're great. Thank you so much. This is the life. This is the way it is. Thank you guys. Y'all go sew something. Bye. Yeah, go sew something. Bye, Becky. Becky Thompson, everybody. Uh, love her. Let's talk about this King Coulter 2 Elite. Love it. This is your King Coulter 2 Elite long arm 18 inch quilting machine. Quilt Fest pricing is six thousand two hundred ninety nine dollars. But of course, there's a call in special eight hundred four one eighty one fifty one. Now you could call. Or you could also chat live. They'll give you the special there as well to place your order. So you can do one of either of the two, call or chat. But whatever you're going to do, you saw how great it is. And you just heard it from Becky. You love Becky. You take her word for it. That is your King Quilter 2 Elite. That is the 18-inch quilting machine. Love that so much. Uh, and we love Becky too, right, Blaine? We sure do. And I tell you what, if anybody wants to follow Becky, uh, her YouTube channels, it's called Power Tools with Thread. Make sure y'all go check out her show. She is she does a lot of content, uh, Jane, on YouTube. Yeah. She's on there just about every day, I think. And uh, y'all make sure y'all go follow her and, and check out some of the things she does. Uh, she's very, very talented. Yeah, that's why I said she's so real. You know, it, like you poke around, it happens to all of us, you know? So like, that's what I love. And she just gets through it and she's like, yeah, this is how it works. Yeah, she get, she sent me a text message and said, hey, uh, is this stuff uh, y'all sent with this supposed to come with this machine, meaning the little LED strip and all the things? I said, yeah, it comes yeah. with the Elite. We throw it in. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah, she's wonderful. Uh, well, Blaine, I think 
you're next, right? I am. So okay, we'll great. Back here. Uh, is it an hour or 30 minutes, Kennedy? An hour. I think just so, Jane, you got an hour break. Wow. <clears throat> all right. So uh, next up, guys, we've got a treat for y'all today. We're going to talk all about the Juki, uh, you know, that Rico R100 printer. We got a special guest coming in today that is going to talk about it. Uh, she is April Yang. Now, April uh, is a sewing DIYer and she's an upcycle fashion content creator since 2011. And she likes to teach and inspire people to turn old clothes into something new every day. Now, here's the cool thing about April. She also gets into all kinds of different fashion and cosplay. She has over 440 videos on YouTube. And April has uh, over 2.25 million, over 2 million followers uh, and, or subscribers, I should say, and counting. She teaches millions of people how to do the DIY, their clothing. You can find her on TikTok, having fun with her family and friends. And we are really excited to have April on the show. We love working with her. So y'all all make a big SMP welcome to April Yang. Hi. Hey, April, how are you? Doing good, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited you're here. I didn't get a chance to talk to you much. Uh, April was at Long Beach when we were up there at the Impression Show, and I know you got to walk around there. Didn't get a chance to talk to you a lot, but we talked all about this Rico printer, and I talked to Juki. I said, let's let April do the demo. She's got one. She's loving it. She's experimenting. So, hey, they said, let's do it. So, hey, you're doing it today. So I'm going to let you get going on it because I know you got a lot to cover, and we'll see yeah, you back here in a little while. All right. Hi everyone, so I'm not an expert in direct-to-garment printing. It's something I'm dabbling in right now. So um, I can only share as much as I know so far, but pretty much when I got the RE100, my biggest concern was the size of the tray constraint because I'm gonna wanna print out something bigger. So if you see my shirt, technically this design can't even be done on the RE100. It would be really small like this. Well, at least like the font would be tiny. But I figured out a way to print it bigger. And that's what I want to share with you because um, these machines are an investment and we want the most bang for our buck. So the machine isn't on my table. I was going to bring it up, but it is really heavy. Um, where I keep it is actually underneath my table and I wanted to keep it there to show you how small and convenient it is to have. So let's switch the camera down below and then I'll meet you there. All right, so this is it. Um, I love the size. It is quite heavy, over 50 pounds. On top, we have the printer and this is the tray that I will take out to put my garment on. Below it, let me take this off first. So below is this little oven finisher, and this is where you'll place um, your garment after it's done printing, and you'll also place it in before to preheat it. Um, and then I'm gonna actually just push this so that it starts to preheat. And you're going to want to put your garment in here for at least 30 seconds to warm it up before you put it into the printer. So I'm going to talk about some pros and cons about this machine, but I really want to get into the, um, the tutorial first. And then at the end, if I have time, then I will talk more about it. But let's go back up to the top and I will show you. So this is the tray. And what comes with the tray is this lid. It slides on like that. You're gonna want to remove the lid and this becomes your guide for marking your fabric. There's little holes here and that's where you would mark it. So what I was saying earlier is that technically 
what you're able to print is this size. And that's one of the cons about this machine is that this you are limited to this, or you could turn it this way and it becomes wider, but then shorter. I want to show you the t-shirt I printed when I first got the machine and I was so curious to try it out on a color t-shirt. This is what the color is supposed to look like. And then on a blue t-shirt, this is how the yellow appears. So it's not as vibrant, but it does show up still. On a black t-shirt, this definitely will not show up. So you do have to print on light colored garments. So when I was first testing out this printer, I just printed it normally to fit within the tray. And that's the heater that just went off. And this is the size it was. I liked it, but like I like this image. It was a good size, but I felt like the wording is a little bit too small for a t-shirt. It would be a lot better if I can have the word stretch out horizontally to fill in this space. But when I do that, this design barely fits in as a whole. So what I realized I had to do was take my image and separate it into three sections. So instead of a whole file that you are uploading onto the software, I cut this top word, my logo, Coolerpa, and that's its own file. The sewing machine is its own file. And then the word at the bottom is its own file. That way I can upload it onto the software, readjust the layout if I want it to be horizontal or vertical, and then stretch this out bigger and print it out one by one. What sucks about doing it this way is that it will take three times longer compared to just printing it out all in one go, which is, you know, the perks of having that printer, right? That you don't have to piece it together. You can print it out all together. But since I want to make the most out of this machine, then this is what I have to do. And, you know, I'm a small business and I just wanted to create these shirts to have as merch or to give away or to wear as branding in my videos. So this is the perfect type of machine for me to play around with. All right, so I'm going to be demonstrating on this tote bag right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to print out the top of the image first, which is Cool Lerpa. And the reason why I'm starting with the top is because then that acts as a guideline for me to place my next design and then the next design. The tricky part about the RE100 is that there are no markings on this tray. There's some markings on here, but not a lot as well. It's kind of confusing to see what it is and compared to the software. So I kind of wish that they it was a little more user friendly, honestly. But after some trial and errors, you kind of just figure it out on your own. So I'm looking at this rectangle right here for my design. And I'm just going to make sure that it is evenly lined up on both sides. This is the amount of space I have on both sides. It looks good. And another important thing is to make sure you are using a friction pen. When I first was testing out the printer, I was using this fabric marker and this disappears with water or air. But once I put it into the heater, it actually stained my fabric. So these are the best types to use. 
because they will disappear with heat. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is mark the four corners of my tote bag or of the tray. And this is just going to act as, like I said, a guideline so that I know where to place it on here. Once I have that marked, I know that my design is going to be placed at the very top. So that's important to keep in mind as well for when we head over to the software. And then I'm gonna have to place it in the correct spot on my computer. The markings here are mainly so that you know where to place it on the tray. To open the tray, I'm just going to pop it open like this. Let's scoot that down. And something to note is the direction you are placing your garment. When doing a t-shirt, or if I'm printing vertically, I'll use this t-shirt as an example. You wanna place your garment upside down. So the neckline is at the bottom and it's gonna print this way down. However, if you're printing horizontally, then you want to turn it this way. So when I print on t-shirts, I actually start this way first, tuck it into my tray. It's going to print out the long way. And then when I print this next section, I have to rearrange it and turn it this way. So it prints from the bottom up again. That is the tricky part when doing it this way. Um, I would only recommend doing it if you have to do it. But like I said, if you have this machine already, why not push it past its limits, right? So for this tote bag, I have it turned to the side because I'm printing landscape first. And I'm going to... Another tricky thing is you kind of just have to eyeball where the corners are and your markings because you can't see it. So I kind of just feel for the corners of my tray and it looks about right. And then check the bottom corners, it looks good. And then I go ahead and tuck everything inside. like that. I'll turn this over so you can see, but I'm pretty much just tucking it underneath. All right, once that is ready, I can close the tray and then just make sure there's no puckers while I'm doing so. And I can preheat this for 30 seconds. Let's go to the machine. Okay, so. Oh. Yeah, we need the camera to switch, but I think it's okay. We're just preheating. So I just switched, um, or I just put it in the oven. It's gonna heat for 30 seconds. And while I do that, while that goes, I'm just gonna get some things ready for making my markings. Um, you're gonna need a ruler, you're gonna need your pen, you're gonna need the tray, and you're gonna also need the black tray to act as a reference. Oh, okay. 
Can we switch to the the machine, please? Yes, thank you. Okay, so this is where it was heating up. I'm gonna take it out. And now I can go ahead and stick it in the printer. And we're gonna actually take this camera to the laptop where the software is at. Is on? Okay, it was okay. Yes, let's come to the laptop and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the software. <laughs> So I have my image uploaded, but I'm going to delete it and re-upload it so you can see. This is the software you're going to download, and I'm going to import image, computer, memory, and I'm going to select the top word. And you can see I have three different files here. So I'm going to select this first one. It's gonna open up and I want it to be as big as it can be. So I'm just going to stretch it out as much as I can. And since, actually this first one is very easy to map out because it's the top of the design. The rest is where it gets tricky to see where it's going to piece together. So for this top one, I'm just going to line it up at the very top because I know that's where I have it fitted on my tote bag already. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to just hit print save. You can even preview it if you want to. Another thing I forgot to mention was that the garment size and type is, if you select that, you can change the layout. So this is the orientation and I have it on landscape, but I could, change it to portrait as well. And that's what I'm gonna to have to do for this next part. I have it on t-shirt and on thin. Actually, it should be on tote bag. Let's do tote bag. <laughs> tote bag, thin, and landscape. That's ready to go. I'm gonna click print save and Print. I'm just gonna leave it on fine. I normally double print. I find that when I do vivid for some of my designs, I don't know why the ink blows out. It just doesn't, I, don't, I haven't had a good experience using it. So I just leave it on fine. If I want the color to be more vibrant, then I'll just print again. But for this example, I'm just gonna do fine and print one time. So once I hit print, this is going to get sent to the machine and it shows me that I need to press the start button. So let's go back to the machine. All right. I can see on here, it says press start key. It's ready to go. I'm going to just press that. So the machine also does this thing. Apparently it, it can detect how high the layer on top is so your fabric so it's really thick that you need to lower it and i don't know how much to lower it actually so i just play around with the height until it finally goes through so i push this down button and it's going to lower the tray and i'm going to press start and see if that works nope so just keep pressing down and then press start and it works. Ooh. All right, so this is gonna print out now. And it's so funny because when you're first starting or maybe even experienced people with direct to garment, printing feel this way too but you think you're going to just walk away and get things done but the whole time you kind of just want to watch and see if it's actually working <laughs> so this is what i normally do because i oh, but what does it look like so i'm patient hopefully it's turning out nicely it looks good it looks good so i kind of like to just watch the machine do its thing 
And then after this first print comes out, if I want it to be more vibrant, I will just print again on the laptop and then just run it through one more time, which is pretty much what it does when you select that vibrant option. The vibrant option kind of just makes it print out twice. But since we are don't have a lot of time, I'm going to just print it one time and throw it into the oven to cure the ink. It looks so good. It's so cute. Where is that? Oh, okay. It's almost done. It's almost done. So a mistake I made before was, um, okay, it's out. I'm just going to pull it out. This is what it looks like. You see it? Beautiful, so vibrant. I'm just gonna open the oven now, stick it inside. Be careful, you know, when you're working in this area because it will be hot, so just take some caution. And then um, I'm going to switch it over to the left and it's going to bake it for three minutes. Yeah, so while that's going, um, let's go back up to the top view and I will talk to y'all a bit and answer some questions. Okay. Up here. Oh, uh, hello, hello. Oh, can we switch the camera to the front view? Oh, wow. Am I the only one seeing this? Is there fireworks? That was cool. <laughs> okay, so some mistakes I made while doing, when I was testing out was um, I didn't wash my garment first. So sometimes new fabrics and new clothes will have this layer of residue from the chemicals and whatnot stuck on it so it's important to wash your clothes because when it prints and you stick it into the heater it can cause how it can affect how it looks like and on one of our tote bags we realized that the hard way because the setting the heat setting was too high as well so you need to know what heat setting will work for your fabric the, the tote bag was cotton, I believe, and we had the setting too high and it changed the color of the tote bag and the shape it left on it was the shape of this. So like this rectangle part was darker on our tote bag and then the rest of the tote bag was still light. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, and then the next part is going to be figuring out where the sewing machine is going to be placed because we have the easy part done, which is the top of my design. But now how do I know where to place the machine so that it's right where I want it? I've done it so many times, so I am an expert now for this design. And pretty much you need to know you need to know, you need to have this tray and you also need to know the measurements of this tray, which they don't have marked out. So you need your ruler so that you can do your own measurements and use it as your guide because the markings that are on this tray are the same as on the software. All right, is it done? Okay, so the shirt is done baking. Let's take that out and bring it back onto the table. And I will demonstrate for you. Set it down. All right. This is what it looks like. I'm going to pop it open. It 
And it looks like I only have enough time to show you this next part. How I piece together the sewing machine. Okay. Okay, so to figure out where the machine goes, the sewing machine print goes, I know that this is going to print at the very edge. If I line my image up to this line, which means that I want the top of my image to be just below this letter I. So I am going to keep it centered still. And then I'm going to take my pen. I'm going to mark the corners so I know where to place it. And pretty much what I was saying is that this tray is going to help you see where the placement is on the software. So you kind of just have to compare this measurement. So I know that this is two inches. That means when I print the two inches and if I'm starting at the very top, then I should have this space in between. I'm gonna be in a rush now. So, oh, I need that. I need this. Let me do this quickly just to show you how I piece together the machine. So for the machine now, I'm turning the tray or the tote bag in a different direction. I'm gonna line up my corner markings tuck it in. Make sure that clicks. Lint roll. And then preheat it. Okay, so while this is Preheating. I feel like I'm not using the right word, preheating. Okay, preheating. I'm going to show you what the computer looks like for this next design. And then that's probably as much as we can do. Okay, so back to the computer. This was the first design. I'm going to delete it and add a new image, which is going to be the sewing machine. And we have to change the orientation to portrait. So it looks like this. Just, just leave it. And then I'm going to stretch out the machine to fit. You know, a little, a little bit smaller, but, and then remember where I had it lined up, the top of my design should pretty much hit the top of the tray, which is gonna be up here. And that's how I know where it's going to land on the tote bag. I'm going to print save, print and send it to the machine. And then we can put this in. And press start. All right, while that's going, I'm going to finish off up on top and just talk about the final design that you are going to end up getting. So once that comes out, it should look like this. And the only thing you have left to do is piece together that bottom section. 
like I said, it's all trial and error. And after like 10 times of doing it, you will figure something out. And I think that's all the time I have. I don't know. Yes. Hi, Blaine. <laughs> Great job, April. You know, the, everybody was making a lot of comments. And, you know, one of the things that, that I really appreciate you doing is, you know, you're telling us from a, a customer perspective uh, what your experience was. And, you know, when you talk to me at Long Beach, you tell me that you were, you show me the shirt you made and how you're able to make the, the design bigger. And, and all the SMP nation can probably relate to that because a lot of the embroidery designs, you know, they do split designs. So I think yes. that was brilliant how you came up with this. And it just shows that we can do a lot more with this printer than we, what we thought. Yes, definitely. Um, I still have a lot more to play around with, but that's what I've been working on so far, but I'm excited. I know it can do a lot more and I just right. wanted to share that with other people. Well, what we may have to do is get you to come on one of our Thursday live shows and where we have a lot more time and uh, you can show some more new things that you learned. I'm sure the oh, SMP yes. would love it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> All, right, All right, April. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you real soon. Okay. Okay. Bye. All righty. All right. So everyone, this was the Rico R100 printer. Now there, you can get three different packages with this. Uh, again, this is the one that we're, we're starting with. Uh, this is basically what they call the Home Crafters Bundle. Now it's $39.50. We have call-in specials on all three. So you can either call in or you can chat, chat with one of our live chat agents on our website. Now the Home Crafter Bundle this is the one, it doesn't come with that heater that you see under the printer on the screen. It doesn't come with that. It's just going to come with the printer and you can use a heat press or an iron or something like that if you want to lock in the ink like the heat would do. But you're going to get that R100 printer. You're getting the A4 platen, which that's what you saw April putting that bag on. And it's an 8, eight by 11 in size. And then you're going to get the four uh, colors of cartridges to make the colors, the ink cartridges, and then you're getting that USB stick. All right, bundle two is the business startup bundle. Now you're going to get that RI100 printer that you see in the screen. You're also going to get the RH100 dryer finisher. Now that's going to be the finisher, the heater underneath that printer. You're going to get all four ink cartridges and the USB stick, and the price on that's $49.50. However, we have call-in special on it. And then the, the last package is the professional bundle. You're going to get the R100. You're going to get the uh, RH100 dryer finisher. You're getting the A4 platen, which is that 8x11. And you're also going to get a second platen, an A5 platen, which is an 8x6. You're getting all four ink cartridges and the USB. We're going to have special financing for all three packages that we have available and we're going to ship it nationwide absolutely free. Give us a call right now, 800-401-8151 or just speak to one of the live chat agents on sewingmachinesplus.com. All right, let's bring uh, Jane Klaus back in. Oh, I'm, I'm still going. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> it's still me. Jane was on her hour break. <laughs> so, but uh, okay, well, next up, we have got another special treat for you. And we're going to talk all about the Baby Lock Allegra. Uh, now, if y'all haven't seen the Allegra yet, you're in for a treat because we've got Linda Brattine coming in. Now, Linda is an expert on this machine, and she absolutely loves this thing. Now, Linda has been quilting and a sewing teacher in Columbia, Missouri, ever since 2008. Linda has recently self-published a series of workbooks to enhance her free motion machine quilting classes and has created several patterns and machine embroidery designs. She loves to mix different mediums and techniques to create unique, one-of-a-kind fiber art. And I tell you what, she is super talented. I've always loved uh, when she comes on our show. So y'all welcome Linda Brattine to the show. Hey, Blaine. Thanks for hey, having Linda, me. Hey, Linda. Good to see you. Yeah. It's wonderful to be back. Happy Quilt Fest. It's <laughs> Thank winding you. down. I know that, uh, you know, uh, when I visited with you, I guess the last time was at the Baby Lock Convention in St. Louis back in back last summer. And, uh, you know, we talked a lot about the Allegra and I know you just love this thing. And uh, it is a it's been a really popular machine for us. And I think the quilters absolutely love it. So I'm going to let you take it away because I know you have a lot to go over and then I'll be back and tell them how they can get theirs. Sounds great. 
Well, what we're going to start out with is we are going to start out with a tour of the machine. And let's see if I can pick the right camera. Yes. All right. So the first thing you're going to notice about the Allegro is its space between the needle and the base of the machine. You are looking at 12 inches of workspace. Now, this is really great. Of course, anybody who's a quilter is going to really appreciate this. But let's talk about our home deck people. This gives you plenty of room to handle volumes of um, fabric. Anybody doing hemming, those kind of things. The Allegro is a really great starter machine or travel machine if you're looking to take a lightweight machine with you uh, to class and leave your nice big machine at home. It does come with the knee lift. So for those of you that enjoy that hands-free sewing, that is super, super important. You're also going to find that it has, and hopefully if I can lift this up, you'll be able to see it. You get um, 2,000 built-in stitches. 56 of them are, are utility stitches with 11 one-step buttonhole styles. You're going to get 144 decorative stitches. And those of you that know me know those decorative stitches are super, super important because they offer a huge um, opportunity for being creative. And you're going to get 12 built-in alphabets. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are stitchers who do not use those alphabets, but I'm telling you, it's the easiest way to put a label on your work. You just take that backing fabric for those quilts and you start stitching out your message. You can actually save these in the memory of the machine. Now, as you look at this, we're just going to take a quick tour here. You have the start stop button, which is really great because sometimes when I'm doing things like a buttonhole or a button so on, I'll actually unplug my foot control and just use this on off button so that I'm not accelerating or decreasing the speed and it can stitch out perfectly every time. You do have your reverse sew button, your reinforcement stitch. You have the needle up, needle down right here. And I love it because when I'm demoing, I have cameras over here on my right-hand side. So I have to be able to, to touch this because I can't reach over with all this distance and grab that hand wheel. We also have um, the actual cutting feature. So you can cut it. And you notice here, we've got the, the turtle to the rabbit speed control. Huge, especially if you're a newbie sewer, you can always just come on right on over here and start out slow and then give it a little more gas. It does have a built-in needle threader, which is very, very handy. And then over here, we have an L LCD screen that's going to help us. Um, it is a computerized sewing machine. Now, just a little bit about it in general. It sews a thousand stitches per minute. I don't know if I sew a thousand stitches per minute, but that's pretty fast. Um, sometimes I like to do that slow stitching with my machine. It does have a footprint of 25 inches, just a little over uh, from edge to edge. You can go nine and a half um, inches deep, and I believe it's 12 inches in height. So, no, excuse me, did I say that wrong? I think that's what it is. I, I'll have to look that one up. Sorry about that guy. No, it's just over 12 inches if I remember right. A uh, lot to remember these days. Now, it does have a manual tension setting, um, <laughs> which is really, really important because when it comes to setting this machine up to free motion quilt, you're going to have to take that tension higher. All right. And you also want to loosen it up if you're using a metallic thread. Uh, we have our presser foot pressure over here on the left hand side to the head of the machine. And at the back, you're going to have a lever to lower your feed dogs. Now the accessory um, uh, tray opens up in the front and the back to hold all your wonderful accessories. And we are gonna talk about those next because I always like to know when you purchase a machine, what comes with the machine. So the first thing I wanna talk about though, is you do get an actual print manual. And I love this. And you're going to see I'm a manual girl. In addition to being a foot girl, I like the manuals because this gives me a reference that I can go to. Now, I'll, the thing you're going to know about Baby Lock is we're all about education. And so you can always download or get the PDF version of the manual. And those are really great if you're doing any kind of traveling. So I'm pulling up here my luscious little accessory pile just to show you briefly what we get with this machine. First of all, you're going to get some needles. You're going to get four bobbins. One of them happens to be in my machine. You're going to get the large spool cap. I have the smaller one on my machine. You're also going to get three types of screwdrivers so that you can take your needle plate off. You can take your um, presser foot on and off. A lot of good things. 
Also, you're going to get your brush, which if you're not familiar with this, you need to keep that lint out of your bobbin area and you're going to get a lovely seam ripper. And it's always important to have a good sharp seam ripper because uh, not only do we miss sew things, but it's also really, really important uh, to not damage your product by or project by having a good sharp seam ripper. Now this is our buttonhole foot and I love it because you actually put your button in the back and it measures the distance. I don't know, you know, I've been sewing so long, I remember actually having to, to measure the distance of the button, draw that on my garment or my bag and then sew it and be able to stop and see visibly where I need to do this. But this, with those 11 um, different types of buttonholes, Man, the, the opportunities are endless when it comes to this. You're also going to get an overcast foot. And I love this foot. I don't know if you can see this, but it does have that bar going down the center, which helps to support that uh, those overcast stitches. And this is really great to finish the edge, especially if you don't have a serger in your studio. You are going to get the zipper foot, which I love of course, to insert zippers, but also any type of cording you might want to add, any kind of piping you want to put on your quilts, this is your presser foot. Then we also have our straight stitch um, presser foot. This is a center justified needle um, presser foot. You don't, you can't go side to side with it, but you're going to get such support on the back of this foot with the feed dogs. It is great for lightweight fabrics, uh, think your shears. This is also great. I know a lot of you are quilters. So anybody who pieces points, those Lone Star, those half square triangle people, this can be a, a really good addition to your sewing studio is that straight stitch. And of course, the accompanying um, straight stitch needle plate that can transfer out. And I don't know if you can see it, but what it does is it supports that fabric so it doesn't get jammed into the bobbin area. Absolutely love it. We're going to show a demo there with that straight stitch foot. And then we have what we call our quarter of an inch presser foot. And I hope you can see this. Let's see if I can bring it in. I always, I, and I probably say this time and again, I always think people need to know about this quarter of an inch presser foot because it has such great features for just a little foot. First of all, it is straight stitch only, which means you're going to have tons of support underneath it to hold your project in the right position. You're also going to notice on the right hand side that you have three little notches. The first one right here in the middle is where the needle is on uh, on the on the project. It's just going to give you a little visual guide on this one. The one behind it is a quarter of an inch. So let's say you need to start your project, like maybe you're sewing on your binding and you want to start in. You'd put the edge of the project right here and your needle would be in exactly one fourth of an inch. And then there's the the quarter of an inch ahead of the needle. That is fabulous so that you can stop a fourth of an inch and pivot. Think about if you're just sewing something together and you need to pivot at a quarter of an inch. The other side, the left side has one eighth. And then you're going to notice this little foot here. It is actually a fourth of an inch. So you have a visible guide to the edge of your um, piecing. Now the other side is a cute little eighth of an inch. I love this because sometimes you have to top stitch things. I make bags. So on occasions, I may only want to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And so I just use this presser foot as a guide. You also have your blind hem foot. Uh, this is super because let's face it, hand sewing is a four letter word. And if our machine can do it quickly and easily, Boy, it just makes our life a whole lot better. So as I say that, um, here is your button sew on foot because I always tease my boys when they'd come in and they'd say, hey, can you sew a button? I'd say, no, but I can show you how to do it on the machine because it, it does. This sews on a pierced button in no time. Then you get your standard presser foot, which is very, very nice, but this is a really great foot to get a scant quarter of an inch. And then you have your open toe foot. And it's it's a clear acrylic foot. I don't know if you can see that, but it's wonderful to do all of those decorative stitches because it's got this nice deep channel on the back of it that lets all that thread that gets um, built up as you're making those pretty stitches smooth out right along. You're also going to get your free motion quilting foot. And I love it because it's, again, clear acrylic, which makes it very, very easy 
to um, see through. And then you're going to get an extra spool pin. This goes on top of our bobbin winder. This is when you want to use a twin needle or two um, pieces of thread going through one needle. You also are going to get some uh, spool felts and your quilting guide. This is a great way to do no mark channel quilting on your piece. All right. A couple of other things. I just want to talk about the screen for just a little bit because sometimes buttons can be intimidating. Let's face it. So I'm going to move on over. Wonderful. And it did move with me. So this is this is a bonus. Um, I like this LCD screen. Now, don't be panicking over here. This just tells me that my presser foot is in the up position, which is very important to know before you start sewing. Um, but it just flashes. It's I love it because this tells me everything that I, I need to know. So over here, on this side, on the left side, you're going to have your stitch width. Now, I have, I have a straight stitch selected, so it's not going to make any difference. But, of course, you have your negative, which would take it down. You have your, your positive, which would make it up. Then you're going to, on the other side, you have your stitch length. And depending on how you like to do this, you know, home deck people like to sew at three um, millimeters per, per inch. This is at 2.5, which is kind of standard for most quilting or piecing. Now, we do have what we call our left-right keys just underneath here. Um, what this does is the first arrows on either side of OK, watch here, watch the number at the top, will take it up in your stitch count from your stitch um, menu. The one over to the, um, to the right will take it up by 10. All right. And then the, on the other side, it's just the opposite. It'll go down by 1 or it'll go down by 10. And notice that it jumps all the way back uh, into the 400s. The other thing I want to share while I'm there talking about stitch um, menus is down below we have what I call bookmarks. All right. I love it because it can take me where I need to go fast. So the first one, of course, is our utility stitches. And those start at the, the first stitch. Um, then it jumps up to, to number 62. And when I get to 62, notice I can just go back by 10 and quickly get to the stitch I desire. Or I can come up and you can use either side of those plus and minus. Then, of course, the, the next bookmark goes into your 100s. And then I don't even have to think. I can hit this and I automatically have my, my buttonhole menu. I think that's just fabulous. And over here is my alphabets. And of course, we can just arrow through. There's your capitals. Then it goes to your lowercase. And then it actually goes over to your script. Like we said, you have a uh, basically a block and a script alf uh, alphabet. And of course, you can definitely put this into your, this is your uh, memory key. And that's where you would do your uh, label. I think that's a great feature. Now, this is a bonus. It's a needle up, needle down. I am known for my free motion quilting on a uh, tabletop machine. And so I like to always have my needle in the down position. And I even like it when I'm doing any kind of applique because that needle will hold my position so I can pivot the work and not have a, a zigzag stitched into this. So that's really important. This is a, is a design or motif repetition, which means I can touch this. It looks like a, a circle that's almost uh, not quite an infinity, but just a, a continuous circle. And what that does is that stitches until I, I touch the green or red start stop button, and then it will finish that motif. Now, we do have our mirror the image or mirror the design. It works with some of the, the motifs. Of course, some of them are symmetrical. So you can't, if you mirror it, you're not going to know. Um, and then I like this because if I engage my twin needle, it's only going to let me select stitches that work with um, the twin needle feature. Watch when I try to go over to some of my decorative ones. It's not even letting me bookmark into those areas. So that's like my insurance policy. So I'm not going to break a needle on my um, presser foot. Really important. And then I also have um, a cutting feature that I can engage. And that works with my reinforcement. So if I touch that and I touch my reinforcement, that means it's going to sew four small stitches in the same spot like the reinforcement button does, and then it's going to trim it off. All right, so let's take this. Um, I'm going to take that off for right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and go right back over to the um, to the very first utility stitch so we can just do a quick little demo because I think a lot of people um, are somewhat intimidated by 
uh, the presser feet. And I'm going to tell you right now, the presser foot, I have seen take an average stitcher and make them absolutely fabulous. All right. So one of the things I didn't mention, I probably should have mentioned it before I put it on, is you're going to see there are little notches on the toe of this. This is the straight stitch needle plate or needle presser foot. And I do not have the straight stitch needle plate. I have the zigzag because I'm going to be doing some decorative stitches. But there are little marks. And those little marks can assist you. Um, I know a lot of stitchers or a lot of quilters like to get a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. And the reason they're doing that is maybe they're sewing with flannel, which has a nap. Maybe they're sewing with something that um, is very thin. And so you need to adjust how how wide of a seam allowance you have and so you can actually run the edge of your um, presser foot on one of those little notches on the toe and what that does is that helps you to get a scant quarter of an inch so i'm just going to go ahead and press or stitch these together all right needle up remember i, I always told you i keep it down and there's a reason but oh maybe you can't see this but I'm going to see if I can hold it real close to you. And I don't know if you can see this. It is just one little mark over, just a scant, just a hair over from that quarter of an inch, just by using that mark on the toe. And uh, I probably didn't mention this, but this actually has a seven millimeter wide stitch space, which, hey, that's huge because you know what that means, guys, more decorative stitches. And if that's not tempting, I don't know what is. But we can go ahead and quickly come over here. This is that quarter of an inch presser foot. Now, some of these quarter of an inch presser foot, you might actually have one um, in your stash of presser feet. You will probably notice that some of them have bars. And that helps also, again, to guide the fabric. This one does not. And there's also um, presser feet that are acrylic clear. So here again, just showing you, we've got some really nice results here on these. Um, on the actual stitches but remember i told you you could actually use let me just snap that one off um your standard presser foot so i'm going to switch on over to that j foot now you may be thinking of getting this um the allegro as a spare travel machine and you know what any of your press on feet that snap on to your other machine will there's a good chance it'll work on this one. So what I like to do here, and I hope you can see over here, I'm actually going to change the width. And oh, guess what? It's not going to let me because I have to change it to stitch number two. Well, aren't you being silly? Here we go. Oh, I know why. I have the double needle in. Ah, I had that selected. So I'm, I'm over here to stitch number two. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it automatically defaults at a left justified needle position and why would we ever want that once again those thin fabrics get supported on three sides of that presser foot but this also enables me to move that over and i'm using the stitch width here and i'm going to go over to 4.5 and that's going to give me another version of a scant quarter of an inch so here we have three different presser feet all used um, by quilters and once again, can be used to get you the results you want to have a really great, accurately pieced project. So those are just some of the things. Another thing I want to share with you is the, the ability for it to do applique. So I'm going to just scoot on over to stitch number six, which is my zigzag. I am going to take my length way down. Oh, I can keep the width up, but I want to take my length down. And I think I did it at 0.4 and I love this. Okay. So if you don't know this about me, I do like applique and this is not machine applique. I grew up in a time when uh, embroidery machines were not available. So I had to learn a lot of this stitching self-taught in high school. Anyhow, but what I have here is I'm appliquing a piece of fabric over another piece of fabric. I do have stabilizer underneath. If you don't use stabilizer when you're doing applique, you are going to end up with um, what we call tunneling. Now, I hope you noticed that I made sure that my needle was on the right-hand side. When doing a zigzag, it's very important to have this because when you turn, whichever way you're turning 
on a zigzag or a satin stitch, you want the needle in the opposite corner. So I'm going to lift my presser foot here, give it a pivot, and I'm going to lift my needle, and I'm actually going to change it to a buttonhole, which is 46. So I'm just going to jump over because, and there's two types. I don't know if you saw that. 45 goes one way, 46 goes the other way. I don't think a lot of us realize the potential our decorative stitches have for doing wonderful things with applique. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you this. going to lift my needle, pull it out. So here we have both the satin, and this is just with a construction thread. Imagine how pretty it would lo look if I had a really pretty um, applique thread or embroidery thread. And then there's that pretty, pretty buttonhole stitch, which kind of gives it that hand, that handmade look. So whether you are piecing all kinds of fun things, and for those of you that are following the Baby Lock Educators, we're doing a sweet peep event. In fact, mine is on Monday, and I will be showing you how to create a cute little zipper bag with our Sweet Peeps pieced block from Heather Valentine of the Sewing Lock. We also, um, of course, you can piece multiple points together to get that to go. And if you are really wanting to test your ability, you know, you can definitely piece in lots of little squares. There's a lot of fun things you can do. This is actually just a satin stitch here on a block to make it extra, extra pretty. And remember, I told you I'm a fan of decorative stitches. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, I did the, the beard on this iris with like a grass-like stitch. And this, of course, is using some of those pretty machine applique or machine embroidery threads, which are very, very pretty. Now, this is just doing some uh, crazy patch, but using all of those decorative stitches in a variety of ways, even taking a solid piece of fabric and doing a variety, just drawing a line and stitching right down it. Here is just, this is actually a composition book cover using those decorative stitches with a metallic thread. So, so pretty. And then this um, this has got a little bit, a lot of everything going on here, but not only do we have decorative stitches, but we have some ribbon work. This is free motion on a piece of organza uh, that had some sequins to it, but I made a butterfly out of it. You can really do a lot. And of course, we've got um, quilting. <laughs> of course, using, you can even get a walking foot. The um, I would say get the dynamic uh, dual digital, excuse me, dynamic foot to do that. And you can, of course, free motion quilt. This is just done on a whole whole cloth quilt. And anytime you can do straight quilting, of course, you can do thread sketching and painting. Oh, Blaine, do you have some really good deals on this machine? Well, hey, Linda, you know it. We've got a great, great uh, quilt fest special on it. And great job, by the way. I know that uh, everybody loves uh, you doing the demos on that because you always get to show your awesome samples. And and this machine is just fantastic. It's some, one of the Baby Locks, you know, best sellers we have online. So it's really good. Yeah. Well, I hope you sell a lot of them because, you know, then you'll have me come back and share it, share with everybody yeah. again. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll have you on again real soon. So thank you so much for coming on the show. And I'm, I'm sure we'll see you real soon. All right. Sounds good, Blaine. Have a okay. good week. You too. All right, everyone. This is the Baby Lock Allegro. Now, again, this is the electronic machine. It has a 12 inch throat space, which you, all you quilters out there, you need to jump on this. This is an awesome machine for that. Uh, you know, again, it has all those things that it comes with the 12 foot kit uh, uh, that you can, the optional accessories, you can get a 17 foot kit that'll fit with it. Uh, the warranty on this is 25 years, uh, limited warranty, uh, 10 years on parts, five years on the circuitry uh, five years on electrical one year on labor it only weighs 35 pounds so this is something that you can take with you uh you know to classes and, and retreats uh, it has that built-in bobbin winder it has the speed control slide thread cutter needle up and down uh, reinforced stitch reverse sewing uh, start stop all those convenient one one touch buttons and you know it has the uh, needle plate with the scale in inches and centimeters Additional seam markings on the bobbin cover for needle position preference, free arm, two accessory storage compartments. And, you know, it comes with a knee lifter. It comes with that straight stitch needle plate, nine snap on feet that actually come with the machine. Free motion, uh, you know, darning foot comes with it. Uh, soft cover for the machine. You get the bobbin, seam ripper, needles, full caps, screwdrivers, 
uh, quilting guide, extra spool pin, foot control. And then you also get that 60 day uh, trial for the, the sewed, as they call it, uh, some, some classes. And Blaine, does this machine work on the cutie frame? It works perfectly, Kennedy, on that cutie frame. Uh, so if you wanted to just get into some quilting again, you could get in on free motion quilting. You can put it on a cutie frame along with any domestic machine you have. It'll fit right on there. And that cutie frame, what's awesome about that, it's a tabletop. So you could just put it right on your table. So guys, we have a great special on this. Give us a call right now. Normal price is $12.99. We're going to also ship this free nationwide. And we have some special financing available if you need that. Uh, again, this is the Baby Like Allegro. So give us a call right now, 800-401-8151. Or if you're on our website, go and speak to one of our live chat agents and they can answer questions and take your order right there and give you that special. All right, we're going to continue to move on. And um, uh, coming up next, we got Jane back in the house. <laughs> hi, so Blaine. Hi, you, hi everybody. You you, huh? You've been gone for an hour. Are you awake? Did you miss me? Oh, everybody missed you. They were all saying, where's Jane? I was daydreaming is what I was doing. <laughs> I was hoping you were on your computer ordering. Well, that too. I was daydreaming <laughs> and I was ordering. So there's a list. The list is like, I mean, five days times how many people a day? Ten. So that's a lot of products that I want. So I had a daydream about the ones I really want. And then I had to order the ones I'm going to get. There you go. See? Well, I'm excited about this <laughs> next uh, session you're, you're going to host because not only are we talking about a really great machine, but we're talking, we're going to, you're going to be talking to a stand up comedian. I mean, he had everybody rolling. <laughs> Kyle has been playing his clip that he, he told that joke all day yesterday. Well, Mark today. changed our lives. Okay. Yeah. So, joke. so uh, Mark Martin, hopefully he's got another joke he can pull out. I and, hope he uh, does. Today. I don't know if he'll ever top that one he told. <laughs> And uh, but if anybody's curious to know which one we we are talking about, you have to go back you and watch guys one of the previous it. shows. Yeah. <laughs> All right, oh Jane, we'll let you take it off. I hope he has a joke for you guys. I hope he has a joke. Okay, coming to us from the Grace Company, Jana Matthews. She's the assistant sales manager with Grace Company, and she uh, works with both customers and dealers across the country. And of course, when she's not working, she loves to bake and she brings tasty treats to share. And Mark Martin, he is a stand-up comedian. He's here for the next half hour. So hopefully you guys will enjoy, you'll laugh, you'll shed a tear, you'll be in stitches, literally. And also, Mark is the sales and customer relations manager for the Grace Company. He manages the day to day sales operations with both customers and dealers, and he's with the company for 10 years. So when he's not doing his comedy, he's actually working for the Grace Company. Hi, Jenna and Mark. <laughs> Hi, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I, yes. Yes. I, can I do that actually? I'm like, no, only for my daughters. They may pay to see that. Actually, when I do right. those jokes, I'm like, dad, come on. Get out You're, of here. Like, so. I'm, when I say you do your comedy, it's doing the dad joke comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a joke in front, for us in, today? In front of the, I do. In front of the Martin <laughs> clan, you know, I, that's mm -hmm. what I do. It may not, I mean, gee whiz, uh, yesterday, it may not top that one, but I, I do, I do have one. So hopefully everybody is sitting. All right, because it's becoming in the springtime, right? right? We're all happy for the weather. It's becoming mm -hmm. spring. Uh -huh. So spring showers bring May flowers. But what do May flowers bring? What do May flowers bring? Yes. What do May flowers? Spring showers bring May flowers, but what do May flowers bring? Yes. All right. What do May flowers bring? They bring pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I love it. <laughs> they bring pilgrims. They do bring pilgrims. Oh, Very we've got good. some people already guessing. They knew. Oh, they, they knew, knew already. Oh, we should have them come oh, in. That's a good one. Awesome. <laughs> they're so smart. They're they're so smart. Sue Wheeler, she's she's laughing out loud with me. Oh my god. All right, Mark. I'm gonna have a joke for you at the end of your segment. How about I that? I love it. Okay. I love it. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> I'll let you guys get to it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Jane. All right. Well. Okay. That's a very, I mean, I'm not even a, no, I'm, I'm a, I talk about our machines. I do that a whole lot more than telling dad jokes. Exactly. If, I mean, put in the comments, that's probably true. Laugh, so I don't even, okay. I do that because people make me feel good. It makes my feel good parts feel good. You know, you make, you make me happy when you have to laugh. So there you go. All right. So today, Jenna, we, we are talking about the 21X Elite. Save the best 
for last. Exactly, and it's on the Evolution Elite frame. Again, the best for last. I like to call this machine our diva because it's, you know, so fancy and mm -hmm. wonderful and can go on so many or only so many different frames. And so it's it's the product in our line that, you know, you got to just feel exclusive when you've got it. Right. That's right. And all week we've been talking about different machines, right? We've mm -hmm. had our little Rebel. We've had our 16, um, I believe our 19, 19 um, and our 21. So if you've been watching all week, and you've been probably come up with questions. You've been asking yourself, should I get a long arm? Should I not get a long arm? There's other machines we have mentioned, mm -hmm. right? Budget comes into place. Um, whatever fits your needs, the 21, will, you'll be surprised the cost and what's will come in after and talk about it. But there are so many features about the 21X Elite that I love. It's a great way to round up this entire week. We've been just giving you a lot of information, a lot of great product. But now's the time to be looking at your budget and say, you know what? I've been wanting a long arm. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting a long arm with these features. Can the 21 answer those questions? So let's dive right into the 21X Elite, Jana. And let's go over some of the things that people love about it, mm -hmm. what they ask about it. And let's get maybe some of the um, uncomfort or the like, I can't afford yeah. or it's not... You know, they're or scared. How does it fit in my budget? How does it fit in my, my budget? Space. You know, yeah, and, and scared because the size, when you think of 21, you start like, oh, okay, that's becoming really big. So yeah. it is not scary. It does not bite. It's just <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about everything about the 21X Elite. And let's first talk about obviously the size of throat 21 inches. 21 inches. So if you subtract the rail that's going to be in the back, which is usually about two inches of space, maybe two and a half, that gives you 18 to 19 inches of a quilt block. Okay, right away, that blows my mind. Mm -hmm. A 19 inch quilt block that is just completely different. And when you're going left to right, that's the other thing about this machine is it can fit on the Evolution Elite, which comes in eight, 10 and 12. So you have so much space left to right. But again, whatever fits your area. If you only have room for a seven inch, you can take your configuration and make it a seven inch if you've got the 12. If you've got the 10 and then you're like, oh, I just need a five right now. Now it doesn't, people always ask, does it open and close, open and close, I can put it on. It's not a quick thing, but it is possible. So we always say set it up for the space that you have and that the quilts you're gonna do the most often. So if you're gonna be doing those five foot quilts, set it up for that. But if you're gonna occasionally do the 12, but if you're gonna be doing that 10 or 12 more often, set it up for that size and then you'll be ready to go. Yep, absolutely, I love that. Okay, we're talking about 21 inches. So you may look at yourself and say, well, I'm, I'm short. I'm, well, I should say vertically challenged, but I said we the word short. until yeah. we were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right, I love that. Um, but that's okay, the 21X Elite has so many features up front mm -hmm. that helps those who are vertically challenged to get their quilting right because if you go 21 inches that's a lot of space to reaching forward and backwards yeah. and we want you to quilt in comfort so let's first look at the handlebars so the handlebars they're adjustable and they can be quickly pulled out to adjust for the length yeah my reach is not going to be as far as your reach and just so that everybody knows this machine and frame set is set up for mark's height so you can see that difference of where he's grabbing it with his mm -hmm. hands if i come it's going to be just a little bit too high for me so I'm gonna want it a little bit lower, which it does have height adjustable legs, not, you know, up and down all the time, but you know, it has that ability. But right now we've got the 21 set up with these adjustable handles. Not only are they adjustable in, so that you have that nice comfort grip, but they're adjustable out. So you can see how far we've pulled them out here. Yep. So as I'm quilting, I can push them all the way back to the um, back of the throat space of our quilts without having to reach and lean and mess up my quilt as I try and climb over the yeah, quilt climb to reach over. the back. <laughs> yes. Okay, so adjustability is not only because of height, but also for your comfort, right? So if you're looking to do micro stippling or just want to get in there, mm -hmm. you can then lower the handles and be able to have it where it's ergonomic um, feel for your hand. Um, I was at a show not, not too long ago, and I had someone come up to me at that show that couldn't use their right hand all that well, oh. but it was easier for them to hold it down this way. So she was quilting with this, the left hand kind of straight uh, up, uh -huh. and this one down. So it kind of looked similar to this because it was best for her. So I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, not only for, for restrictions on going back and forward, but now you can quilt in comfort, whether you want them down or up. So if you're doing micro stippling, you know, you can bring them down. That way you can get really close 
to the needle and get up in that needle's personal space, <laughs> right, as you get up there. So um, adjustable handles, that's the first wonderful feature about the 21 is you can adjust the handles front to back and up and down. And you can also lower the handles. You can bring these, tilt them down, or you can tilt them up, whatever's gonna Whichever be working best for you. For you. So yeah. Yeah. work and quilt in comfort, ladies and gentlemen. So <laughs> let's go and tighten this back up. Um, what's another thing that stands out? My other favorite thing about this machine is it does have its own bob and winder. And it's a separate motor than the front part, so you don't have to undo that needle all the way and then redo it into the bobbin. That it's just right here in the back. Um, you just can see it right there in that um, area. Let me pull it up. There we go. Just right here, you can see it's got that, um, we've got one on there that's already filled, but it's got that second thread mast on there so that you don't have to wind it back and forth either mm -hmm. way. Yep, bob and winder built in. Okay, bob and winder, adjustable handles. Now let's look at the thing that's gonna be in everybody's personal space, which is this big thing right there. <laughs> seven the inches. Screen. Yeah, seven I don't know, inches. I don't think it's in your personal space oh. as much as like you can stand back and still read everything. Oh, that's right, because it's not, okay, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's just big is what yeah. I was getting at. So here's the screen. Let's talk about the screen and all the features that come with it. This is a home screen. It comes with four different stitch modes. So right now we have precise, and we can simply hit the drop down button, and you can see it has precise, cruise, manual, and base. Which we talked about these with our other machines. These mm -hmm. are the same for all our Cunic machines. Good point. Different than the Little Rebel. The Little Rebel only has the one, but has all these different versions so that whatever you're doing, it can help you get that precise. Yep, great point. Um, other features I like, same thing with the uh, jog backward and forward on the screen, is when you, um, a small little feature, okay, but when you're quilting, and there's ways to place a pad, or when you place a pattern and you stop quilting, your thread breaks, you move it to the side, or you get bumped, and you mm -hmm. want to realign your, your stitching back up with your left off, you can bring the needle back over the top, and there's a couple ways you do this. One, if you have a laser, you can get a laser to point down right where that needle is, all right? And if not, and you're trying to see if that top of the needle is lined up with right where I left off at, and you can like kind of eyeball it and do the eyeball test, but if not, you can hit I'm actually going to come in really quick to the settings so we can see it on the screen a little bit better is that needle area brightness. Oh, there you go. Let's try that and see if we can see that spot just a little bit better. There, there we go. go. Yes. <laughs> so right there you can adjust. I mean, you can. That's another part. You can well, yeah. adjust your, your lighting, you know, too much light when you have all this lighting in the room. So, okay. So you got the needle, right? And you want to line that back up right where it left off. You can either do that and eyeball. Now, some people would reach back there if they can reach the hand wheel and twist the hand wheel. I can't wheel, reach back there right? that far. So we can do the needle jog backward and forward to bring that needle down. So as I hit one of these, you'll see that the needle is moving up and down as it jogs back and forth. So just small little features like that is just another added bonus, which I love that on there. Um, I love in this screen, the toolbox. Mm. So if I come here to the toolbox, this is different. This is only with the elites. Uh, and so the 21X Elite, that's part of its name. We have all these fantastic options for you. Measuring tool, right? It'll help you measure, go back and forth. You can measure your vertical, your horizontal, and your diagonal um, sections. You can mm -hmm. do inch or through uh, centimeters. Then it also has the calculator function, because I don't know about you, I have a million calculators in my quilting room but they're underneath fabric and I can't find them. So this is just handy, it's right here. I don't have to try and hold my phone at the same time either. So I have that calculator. And then my favorite is the bobbin estimator. So when you go into the bobbin estimator, you select the bobbin and you can do a new name. So for this one, we're gonna just select add a bobbin and I'm gonna, did I select, oh. There we go, and I'm gonna tell it to be gray Whoops, <laughs> typing in front of everybody. And I enter and now it's gonna show up and I have that green bobbin. It's gonna estimate for me for the rest of the quilt that I'm doing yeah. so that I'm not having to, oh, is it almost out? Let me pull out my bobbin now and then I have to re-pull it in. It's all set for yep. me. 
and you want to put the yardage in there. So about M class bobbins around 80 yards, a little more. You put the yardage in there, and then when it gets down to um, estimated thread remaining, and it gets down to a certain amount of yardage left, that green bobbin that's right here on the screen would go red to indicate that you're getting low, so you can change it out. So that is a great feature. You love the bobbin estimator. I love the edge, the edge warming. warning. <laughs> okay, edge warning. Let me tell you why I love edge warning, and you can see on the screen how you set it up. So edge warning as a new beginner that's another one of those like oh you get so focused when you're quilting along and you're just your eyes are down there at the needle okay and no matter where you're at back here you're just focused you're focused as you're quilting along and you're bringing it forward and and because these rails can be adjusted further out you still have like all of these inches right here that you think you can quilt on because you're focused right at here at the needle point right so if you're doing circles and you're coming along and before you know it, you come and you crash at the back of the rail or the front of the rail, okay? And then your circle becomes um, an, an op oval, oval or, or optical or, yeah. you know, a rock. A rock, <laughs> yes. Okay, and that's from the front. Same with on the sides as you're quilting. When you're quilting, the carriage would hit the side of the frame and the needle would be about eight inches or so, eight or nine inches away from the side. And you have on the side of your frame about six or seven inches of fabric that you feel like you can still quilt on. And so you're doing the eyeball twist test as you're, as you're quilting, as you're bringing it over, because um, you're so focused on that point. So what edge warning will do is you can put a safety area or parameter around your entire quilt so that when you are coming forward, you're going side to side, you will not crash into the side of your frame, you won't crash with your throw space in the back or to the front rails, so your circles become complete circles mm -hmm. and all the patterns become complete patterns because no one likes to unpick. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? That's the best part about quilting. Yes. I just sit there and yes. pick, pick, pick. <laughs> okay, so edge warning, and so I'll just tell you to move to the top left um, and you know what, let's go ahead and let's just quickly maybe uh, do this real fast, right? Well, yeah, because you can also set the edge warning not only for your whole entire quilt, if you're just trying to quilt insert a certain block mm -hmm. and you're just wanting to warn yourself if you're going to be doing too much. So let's set a block area and then we can quilt around that. And it can set for an inch or half an inch. You're not limited for either one, Yep. either way that you're wanting to do it. Yep. So I'm just going to do this block that's in here. So I went to the top corner right up there and I put the edge. So this line right here all the way down to my quilt. Oh, there you go. All the way down, there's going to be, that was really bad, but <laughs> all the way down that side, there's going to be a imaginary like line. Okay. Now bottom right, we're going to hit set and we're going to do a half inch on that. So you get the check mark on the screen that lets you know that you are set for the edge warning. So that's all good. You guys can see that check mark right there. So now we are good to go. And on the screen, you have the edge warning symbol letting you know that you are set up an edge warning. So let's go ahead and just fire this up here. I'm gonna pull the bobbin. And people have asked why you're pulling the bobbin. And that's the reason is so that your bobbin tail isn't always in the back and you're only picking uh, or cutting off from the front, not the whole thing. That's right. Very quiet as well. I love this, very smooth. And we'll get into the stitches and everything else later. But right now, as I come over to that edge, there you go. You heard that? And also there's a red light that's right there that lets you know, okay? Now, if you're uh, someone with a migraine issue and the sound is triggering, you can turn off the sound just as I was changing out the mm -hmm. lights. You can also change out the, that's right. the light itself and only have the sign, whichever works best for you. Yep. Okay, so now we're gonna come down, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing as we come down the very bottom corner. So there you go. You know, this is a great view as we're talking about this edge Warning, we can also see right here our Magnifique magnifying glass, which also comes with this machine. It's another feature that's fantastic. I think we sometimes forget because it's just added on. But this allows us to see that needle, thread it without having to grab yeah, your glasses. Yeah, look how nice that is right there. Exactly, right? Um, for me, I'm at the point where I'm taking off my glasses to see things. <laughs> Other people have to put on glasses. Yes. And when you're not needing it, you can just flip it up, and so you can sew regularly or... If you're like, I need it someplace else, I can take it off and I can use it someplace. Now it comes with three different magnifyings, two and a half, three and five. Yep, so you, you can have that option. Okay, 
Um, we're going to go ahead and just fire this around a little bit. You guys can hear how quiet it is. You can see how beautiful the stitches are and how smooth it is. I want you guys to notice how easy it is for me to move. And I'm not just like, that is just not a gimmick. It's not anything to help you say, oh, that does look smooth. Mm -hmm. It literally is that smooth you can do it riding on the wheels. Okay, yeah. so ball bearing wheels. So you're going to see me with one handed. Okay, let's go ahead and move this around. I can talk while it's moving. It's just super quiet. So let's go ahead and come in here. Just doing some fun designs. You can see there in the back those dual track um, on the carriage as well as on the frame. And the frame comes with those table inserts so you can use pantographs or uh, lasers or anything like that um, on the back so you can do pattern work not just from free motion on the front. So you can see, I'm not that, the quilt there so I was trying to do some stuff but now I'm just going <laughs> to move it around so you guys can see how smooth that is and that red light comes on again that's our edge warning we can shut that off there it is again. And, and it shows us this is great to show one handed because that means ruler work is a lot easier so I can hold one hand I can hold my ruler on my ruler base and move it easily with my right hand or vice versa whichever handed you are it's not like it only works with right handed people. Yep. So you have a lot of diversity of ways that you can quilt. You're not just stuck with, oh, I can only free motion. Yeah, I'm going to get the scissors. Okay. So that is, I mean, that's how smooth it is on, um, on the 21, uh, much like our other machines. Um, you got the screen we're talking about now, the edge warning. There's also projects. You can go in there and calculate your projects. But the other thing I love about what the X Elite series brings, especially on the 21, are the help topics. So if you want to come in here and learn how to prepare to quilt, quilting, maintenance, troubleshooting, using the test screen, it's all built onto the screen. So it gives you that comfort, that level of support. So you feel in your own home that you don't need a whole training guide. Your manual ends up walking away. You have <laughs> the manual underneath your fabric underneath, stash. Yeah, underneath the fabric stash. So we try to make it as easy for you because we know as you guys invest in your journey, whatever it is with your quilting, you're going from one machine to another machine and everybody is looking for the next latest and greatest or the next biggest and you're saving up for that next long arm machine. This is such a home use machine. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for the enthusiasts who are looking just to get several quilt tops done. You don't need to be professional. You can be a new beginner. You could be in the middle. You could be a seasoned vet at your quilting. But the 21X Elite will bring you that experience that you're looking for every time you go down in your room to get your quilting done. You're going to be excited, you're going to love it, and you're going to love the speed too. It stitches 2,600 stitches per that minute. That is so fantastic. So we're often at shows or at our showroom where people are coming in and talking about things. And we'll have people who are a little bit enthusiastic, right? Like they're like, I'm going to sign my name. And they're not really quilting, they're just testing yeah. out the machine. Every other machine we have beeps because mm -hmm. they've gone past the stitch regulation. I've never had anybody beep on the 21. It's, it's so fast, it's so powerful. Now we've had a couple questions come in and I want to talk, address those. They're asking what frames it works with. Obviously the Evolution Elite frame that we've got it on right now. This is our beefy, sturdy frame. It has the metal ratchets. I don't know if you want to show yes. how, how great those are. Yep. It's not a plastic ratchet. Yep, the metal ratchet, so I'm going to undo it. So inside, let me get my hand out of the way here. Where the, yeah. So inside right here, there's metal ratchets. So you can see the, the metal part right here as it comes in, locks it in, and then you can ratchet in. So metal ratchets up top, up in the front as well. So metal ratchets on the frame. Um, there isn't hardly anything that you will need to get replaced on the frame. Mm -hmm. Like Jana says, is it beefier, is stronger, metal ratchets, Comes with a, extensions. an option for an idler rail and, that and a batting rail. So it has both of those options as well. It's also height adjustable. As you can see, we have it again at Mark's height. If I was adjusting it, it also comes with casters, so you can move it around well, You can easily. get casters on there too, right? Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's available casters, to yeah. order casters, just like the idler and batting rail. You can Correct. order those separately. Correct. Um, and it comes in eight, 10, and 12. Now, people have been finagling and they're like, what if I get a 12 foot and get a two foot extension and then it's 14, does that work? No, <laughs> that's just a little bit too big. And we recommend at the eight, 10 and 12 only. And so we wanna make sure that you're getting that to the right sizes. Cause if you get yep. a 14, you'll be disappointed. Yep. Okay, quickly, I'm gonna quickly just throw this out there. Easy to set up, mm -hmm. okay? All of the Proxima Grace company, no matter where you're at, as you purchase through um, Sewing Machines Plus, you can be anywhere I'm ordering from, you can set this up yourself. Maintaining our machines, you can do yourself. So if you buy from Sewing Machines Plus, but yet you live somewhere else, that is okay. Easy to maintain. 
it's going to love you as much as you're going to love it. Um, yeah, and like we showed earlier in the screen, in that help, main, there's a maintenance section. Yeah. So if you're like, oh, what maintenance do I do? I can't remember. It'll give it to you there in that customer service section. That's right. So overall, there are several questions that I love asking people. I want you to ask yourself these questions, right? Affordability, space. This right now is on the Evolution 8 foot, 10 foot, or you can get it on a 12. And also you can get it on the Evolution hoop size frame. So if you are restricted in space, but you still want to do king size quilts, you can do that on the Evolution hoop. Mm -hmm. um, it's only five foot and you can do it all in there. Plus it comes with the rolling rail, so you can also roll it. So I love the frame that the 21 X Elite comes on. The frame, the machine itself is a very simple machine mm -hmm. to thread. You can see on the side right here, there's not a lot of uh, electronics. In fact, you can see there's no electronics on the machine itself. So it is a very simple machine, very simple design for you in mind so that if you're a new beginner, if you're um, a hobbyist, an enthusiast, you don't need to be a, a graduate of some physics or whatever <laughs> to understand how to operate these. You can just look at it and understand what thread guys go, go where, um, the manual, we also have it built onto the screen. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know how to thread your machine, that's all built onto the screen. So don't be afraid. Yeah. If you are ready to take that next jump into your quilting journey and you're wanting the long arm, they will come back on and give you a, oh my gosh, it's like you want to be sitting <laughs> to hear the price because now is a time to get the 21X Elite, super affordable. Um, we and it's say, just so like, fun to operate. People say go big or go home, mm -hmm. and we say go big and go home with the 21X Love Elite. Because you're going to be able to quilt so much more. Because I saw a couple people talking about how many UFOs they have left. Mm -hmm. You could finish so many with this system. Yep. So that's the 21X Elite. Simple, but easy for you to operate. And that's how we like it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to give you a 21 inch machine that you need to have the manual open every <laughs> time, time because a thread broke or I got to wind the bobbin or I need to do whatever. Uh, how do I use the screen? What are these handles for? Like it's all right in front of you. So it's a very simple machine, uh, very easy to operate. Don't let the word long arm scare you mm -hmm. from getting your dream machine. Get the 21X Elite through Sew Machines Plus, because again, this price they're gonna give you, hey, I, hey, <laughs> I might just call up them and say, hey, can I, um, can can I get I one for my for wife? Because the yeah. price they're getting, so it's just great. Um, I think we got everything. Was there anything else we left I think, out? I think we answered all the questions. Maybe Jane can and tell questions. us if we missed anything. Yeah. 21X Elite, I love it. Go big or go home. Mm -hmm. You covered it all. You sold me on it. I love the final sales pitch is right there. You better <laughs> get it. I want to get them for my wife because it's a better price than we get. It's all good. You got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'll love it. So, um, yeah, well, I guess there's no questions either, Jane. Like, we try to get all of them. We, you did we, a great job in getting your questions. Them. Most people say great machine, great demo, great demo, go big, go home. Awesome job. They're loving it. Today's the day. 21X Elite, high fives, backhand springs, awesome. high kicks, all those things like that. Yep, that's it. That's it. Um, I'm going to tell everybody how to get it, but first, Mark, here's my you have joke. One? Yeah. I got one for you. To, I don't know if the kids will know what a tailor is. But why did the tailor win the poker game? Why did the tailor, why did the tailor win the poker game? Poker game? I don't know. I'm I'm I like this one. Why? Because he had the best suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good one. Thanks, guys. That's a good one. Do you know what? I, I I'm very competitive. So Jane, I, this can't stop. Because if you gotta one up me, you know next time I can't let that like nope. Mm -mm. It's on. So I'm coming for you. It's, it's on. on. It's a joke -a -thon. <laughs> The joke -a -thon is on. All right, Mark and Janet, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys being here. It's been fun hanging out all week. Thank you. Thank you, thank Jane. You. Appreciate everybody. See you, everybody. Okay, let's tell you how to get your hands on the 21X Elite. And you know, the Grace Company called yesterday and they said, you know what? Give them a better price. Here's what the price is. Give them a better price. So thank you, SMP. Thank you, Blaine. Thank you, Grace. This is the 21X Elite Long Arm Quilting Machine and the Evolution Elite Frame. You're getting a free accessories package with this as well with your purchase. So here's your price, $10,949. And by the way, 
This is a fantastic price because they lowered it yesterday just for you. So this is an order now situation. You can call an order. You can chat an order. So there's multiple ways for you to order, but this is it. It's happening right now during Quilt Fest for your 21X Elite Long Arm Quilting Machine. If you're thinking about it, I think now's the time. 800-401-8151 or chat to place your order right now and look at all the great stuff you're getting. It's amazing. And that's a great price, Blaine. Well, hey, Jane, you know, everybody's wondering what Mark's joke was yesterday. Oh, yeah. So we're going to show it. Oh, good. I was hoping you were going to do that. <laughs> so everybody, this is Mark's <laughs> joke from yesterday that, oh, no. that Kyle's been playing over and over <laughs> and over. And we have laughed so hard at this. And it's not even about the joke being that funny. It's Mark's delivery just totally. makes it hysterical. So Kennedy, roll the clip. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Why can't dinosaurs... Be, for, be your buddies. Hmm, why can't dinosaurs be your buddies? Because they're dead. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> Took me a minute. I was like, uh, of course they're dead. <laughs> Jane, you were the best part. That was the best part. <laughs> That was just the perfect <laughs> setup, and he just he, he the delivery was awesome. His delivery so was great. Big shout out to Mark for making everybody <laughs> laugh, and he's made Kyle's week. I'm telling you, that's probably going to be Kyle's ringtone. <laughs> he needs to put that on his resume. I'm serious, like comedian at the top. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> the delivery yeah. for him was spot on. It oh, was it really was good. Spot on. So. Yeah. We really enjoy uh, Mark and Jana coming on today. So appreciate Grace being one of our sponsors as well. And, yeah. Uh, anyway, but Jane, we got uh, one more uh, demonstration for me. No, for me. And then I've got to start getting ready for our big giveaways and announcing all the winners and stuff. So I'm going to go and, and do my last one and then get busy while you're doing your last one. And then we'll come back. We've got a ton Great. of stuff to give away. A lot of things to announce. And uh, so... Let me get going on this, and I'll see you back here in 30 minutes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We're going to go all the way up to Wisconsin to the Aero Cabinets. Hey, we're going to bring our good buddy Scott back in. we got Valerie there. So, y'all, come on back in. Welcome them to the show. Hey, Scott. Hey, Valerie. Good afternoon. Hello. How are y'all? <laughs> we are wonderful. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day, and we get to spend it with you guys here at Quilt Fest SMP Live. So good. Scott, last time I saw you, you were in a red suit with a white beard. I was, and we put you on the naughty list and then moved <laughs> you to the nice list. I remember that. wasn't that. you. That was Santa Claus. That's I'm, what I heard. Not, hey, oh, Scott, what I'm I not going to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, we try to take care of you, Blaine. We do everything I know that we can. Do, what do. <laughs> All right. Well, I know we got uh, two great cabinets we're going to talk about today. We've got a bunch of chairs to talk about. So I'm going to let y'all get going. I know y'all going to come back to me right after you talk to each one of them. And uh, We're going to talk about the wall and we're going to talk about how you can get that free cabinet with it. And once we're done with those, we'll throw it back to bring in the next cabinet for you awesome. guys. That sounds good. Y'all take it away. All right. Thanks, Blaine. Well, welcome back. And thank you guys all for sitting and watching Quilt Fest all week and joining us here and looking and finding out what kind of amazing products we have for you to have in your sewing space. So, Scott. You want to get started here? We can tell them about this amazing cabinet. Or? I wish I had a dad joke lined up right now. You said you didn't have any that I know, were appropriate. It's such a bummer. So <laughs> next time, next time, next time. That's so, right. Wallaby. So for the world, what we've got is we've got the little engine that could. Yes, that's absolutely. that's how I describe the Wallaby to everyone. Uh, where do we want to start with well, Wallaby? Let's just talk about how it's got a, a nice work surface and we'll show them how small and compact it can get as we go through everything. Okay. Um, but this is a nice little cabinet. This has got your A7 opening and we'll talk about the lift here shortly. Um, but it's got this nice little piece here that you can put another sewing machine on. So I go to a lot of quilt shows and I hear a lot of people mention, I ask what kind of sewing machine are you sewing on? And they say, how many? Or which yeah. one? Which one? Which, which one of, of the seven? 15 that I have? 
So just remember that all of our cabinets are dual purpose where you can use multiple machines on it. For instance, this one right here is if you use a serger, this is a great place <laughs> for you that. to put your serger on. So just think about, you know, I know everybody says I don't have a lot of space in my house, but we try to come up with cabinets so that they're dual purpose for our customers. So Scott can sit here and he can sit and he can sew and I'll he right can back. search. Where are you going? Well, we're we're going to come to that side view in a second, but let's 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 really show them what it's all about what it's all about. Yes, so what he's pulling out here is this amazing Kiwi. Now, if you've been with us the last two days, you have seen this Kiwi cabinet. It's a great storage unit for your threads, your rotary cutters, another small serger or an iron. But just to get the full idea of what this setup could look like in your sewing space. So here's the flow. So the first part that I really love about the Kiwi is that I can roll up in inside of here, especially when, oh, do we have a cutter? <laughs> Look at oh, uh, we got the one that needs a new disc. You know what? Deal with it. I'm picky about my rotary cutters for anyone that was on yesterday. All right. So what what I love about this first part of the the kiwi, so I'm right-handed, we're gonna scoot that over, is is again, I can roll up so my my body is underneath the shelf here, so that when I'm cutting, I have happy wrists. We got fabric bigger than the mat. Yes. Right. So I, I love being able to slide into the project that I'm working on. And as you're cutting, you can move right to pressing. And from here, you do have a lot of space to the right of your machine. This works wonderful if you've got um, a tablet, uh, if you've got your your um, laptop, so you can look at your design. Coffee. But Coffee. You got to have your coffee. I'm sorry. If you got a bowl for Wonder Clips, <laughs> Sewing World. I love Wonder Clips. I don't pin. I use Wonder Clips. But you can cut, press. You're going to organize your pieces. We're going to sew. And if we have to, then we're able to turn. And again, same thing now on both sides. We can actually roll up so our, our, our legs are underneath the project that we're working on. And now we can run through our serger our second machine, uh, whatever we're... Hey, someone else is on the Wonder Clips gang. Bernadette, <laughs> I love you, Bernadette. I always see you in the chat. You are my favorite. Coffee and a laptop is a must. <laughs> yeah, so like this is a great setup, not only with our Wallaby, like we showed you yesterday with the Kangaroo and Joey and on Wednesday with the Aussie. Um, all of those, cab all three of those cabinets come free with this Kiwi. So like Scott showed you, I know everybody says I don't have a lot of workspace or I don't have a lot of this, um, but easily can compact down to small footprints. But look at all the accessories he has just sitting right at his fingertips. Our little engine that could. Our little engine that could. So he can sit and he can physically cut. Cut, he can press. press, he can spin around, he can sew, he can spin and search. Look at all the tools he has right at his fingertips. Now, everybody, you know, this may not be something that you can afford, but I understand that Sewing Machines Plus has some great financing that you would be able to get this sewing cabinet set up into your house. Now, this is our Wallaby. It comes in a white or teak. And again, you're getting this Kiwi cabinet here. Um, absolutely free with the purchase of this. What's in, but the, what's in the Kiwi? The Kiwi cabinet comes... Did everyone comes, see what's in the Kiwi? Well, if they've been with us, but we might have some new viewers from the, you know, that weren't here the last two days, but it comes with two removable thread holders. And it also comes with this pressing mat, cutting mat that Scott was using here. So you've got two of these right here also at your fingertips. I believe they hold, what, 33 thread holders in each? Do I have each? to do math? One, no, two, three, you four, don't five, have to do math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what what she said. <laughs> so you've got all of that storage right there. So right there you have, you can put all of your threads in it. This cabinet is also ideal because it has 33 more thread holders in the door with a little cubby. So you can have all of your thread right here at your fingertips. This is such an amazing cabinet. But another thing that makes this an amazing cabinet, and I'm actually just going to scoot this Kiwi. I'm going to move this so we don't roll over the oh, horns. Ethan, am I blocking the, the camera? You we, are. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you. I'm always good at blocking the camera, guys. We are going to show you what flatbed sewing looks like. So, Ethan, are you able to get a camera view of 
Scott sitting there? Yeah. All right. So he is about ready to. So what you can see here on the screen. I've been is... waiting for this. I, I just want to do this. Oh, geez. Please. So excited to Are do that. Are you like a magician or like one of those uh, Don't, don't you remember rodeos? the first Ghostbusters where Peter Venkman gets the whew, pull the. Oh, yes. Off of the table. Yeah. I know. I've been thinking so... about that for a half hour. <laughs> Well, at least it's only been a half an hour. So what we're showing you here is how Scott is sitting at this at the sewing cabinet here. So, so you want to have needle. you center needle. You want to have the ergonomics. So you're sitting there. Your posture is sitting. You're at a ninety degree angle. His back is nice and straight there, still being supported by that chair. He is able to push that quilt or his project. project through the sewing machine and look at, he's not straining his neck or shoulders. He's staying at a 90 degree angle. So he's not hurting himself. You've got to be able to have that kind of setup in your home. My and ear fell out. Your ear fell out. That sounds very painful. <laughs> <laughs> it's always something Scott, with me. Why don't me. you tell me what your favorite thing is when you're sitting there and sewing? Like how does, can you describe to the ladies the feeling that you have? So like, the reason, and the reason I call this the little engine that could is just like our kangaroo and Joey yesterday had that panel on the left-hand side, Wallaby has that exact same panel. So what we end up doing is not having to fight, like we talked about yesterday, not having to fight gravity with the weight of our project. So I can have the bulk of my project on the left-hand side here when I'm able to line up center with, with my needle. Uh, I am absolutely guilty of you know hunching like this when I first started sewing and it wasn't until I got a cabinet and a chair that was like, oh, hey, my knees are at 90 degrees. That, that causes my core to sit up straight. And now what I have found myself doing is I feed my projects through, I've got happy wrists, I have happy elbows. And what that leads is right here. And I pulled my ear out again. You pulled your ear out again? Holy. Oh, Jeez. I need a I need like one of those. I think that's a male pods. male kind of thing that they just take their ears off and don't listen to us yeah. women. It's that selective hearing thing. Is that how that works? I think that's how it works. That, yes. Janet would agree. <laughs> okay, we left off on happy wrists, happy elbows, and that what that does is it prevents our shoulders from yes. punching. And what we're able to then do, as Arrow Sewing says, sew in comfort to sew longer. Because we're not fighting our project, we're not fighting our machine, we're not fighting the cabinet. Everything flows so smoothly. And why yes. does it flow so smoothly? Because you have a quilt leaf that comes in the back too that also holds up your project. So it's not falling, or pulling, or dragging, but you also have an important piece that's hugging your machine it right is. there. Can we see it from this angle? I don't think that we is can. That's the question. I don't think we can. But Ethan, do we need to switch the camera? So we can show the insert, kind of. So it has this acrylic insert. So I'm touching acrylic right here. So it gives you that nice, smooth flatbed sewing. So when Scott was sitting there and demoing how to sew properly, his stuff, his wrists were not catching right here. Items were not falling down. His stitches were not pulling or dragging. Everything just sits nice and smooth right across the top right here. So this is an acrylic insert that you can order and. Sewing Machines Plus will just need to know the make and model of your machine, and it'll go, go and get custom cut to fit in your cabinet of choice. Now, this cabinet right here, like we had mentioned, you know, we talked about it the last two days of what makes a sewing cabinet a sewing cabinet, because for one, you've got a three position hydraulic lift. This hydraulic lift where Scott just had it was in the flatbed. It's my but favorite you can, part. You can easily bring it up if you're a garment sewer and you want to get around on a sleeve, you want to put your accessory tray on, or even your embroidery attachment if you want to do that. Um, so you can put it up in there, but then you can also take it and put it down into storage. Now, this is another great cabinet here. Not only does it serve as your sewing area, you can put your serger in there like Scott showed you, but you can also put the cover on and have this beautiful work surface. So again, to do it again. Yes. multiple uses just for one, geez Louise, <laughs> you hit me with that, like a towel. My husband does that to me a lot and I don't like it. But you've got a big work surface here that you can sit and you can work at if you want to pin pieces together. If What's you, the size of this? What's the size of this? Oh, you're throwing me off. I don't know. Well, that's, that's what I'm here for. So do we want to bring out our tailor's tape? Absolutely. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, that's what I get. All right. So, so where are we at? I'm across. So this is 70, almost like 71 inches. By almost six feet. 
Are you going to do the whole thing right there? All right, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll give them, we'll give give them, them all them. the measurements. And this is 60 inches right here. So, so you have a 71 by 60, but if you just want to have this piece right here, you need this, the quilt leaf itself is what, 43 inches? Uh, from to, here to here. Oh, I can almost reach to about 40, 43 by 43. That's four by four. That's six. Is that right? Four times four is 16. 16 square feet here. Not taking into account the side, not taking into account the front. It's it's all the space. Like I said, it's the little engine that could. It is the little engine that could. And but it gets pretty small too, doesn't it? Gets it gets compact. It this is one of our smallest closing cabinets. And people absolutely love to see how small. I describe our cabinets here as transformers. You know, boys used to play with the little transformers yeah, when they were kids. That's fair. Us ladies get a transformer in our sewing room. So look how small. This closes up and ta-da, it locks too. So you don't have to worry about small hands getting in there. You can put your machine away if you have company coming over and it just looks like another piece of furniture. And look at heavy it's duty casters. heavy duty locking casters and it moves great. So, so what is the size of it when it's When it's completely tiny. closed is two feet by three feet. So we went from six feet across by with almost five feet down, mm -hmm. it folded in half. Yeah, basically. Four to two. It is like a little transformer. So this is our wallaby cabinet. Comes in white or teak. Again, we'll hold about 95% of those machines out on the market. Um, so your, and you the, know, Janome 9450s, all the Bernina machines will fit in here. But look at, you also get this free Kiwi cabinet with I can't with figure it. the cameras out to <laughs> save my life. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> you saw me struggling there. It's Friday. It's been a long week for everybody here. So, but yes, this one here is, you know, a great cabinet, great features. Uh, you get that free cabinet for storage of thread, another serger. I mean, how much storage do we all need in our spaces? The Never enough. Just more. Always just more. more. Always more. And with the Kiwi, you are getting the accessories with the cabinet. So yes. you're getting the cutting mat. You're getting the pressing mat. You're getting both uh, sets of thread storage. And that's with, we demoed the Aussie on Wednesday. Aussie on Wednesday. The Kangaroo, Kangaroo and Joey, Joey yesterday. yesterday. And now the Wallaby. The Wallaby. It's free with any one of those cabinets. And like Valerie said earlier, call in, talk to Blaine and his staff. They've got amazing finance options to get this into and create that sewing studio you've always wanted. Yeah, for, we can't be so we finger. can't have you guys sewing on dining room tables or plastic folding tables. You guys no, need to be comfortable. Tables away. You, you need to You're, be comfortable. You to need sew to take comfort. care of yourself and your comfort and is worth projects. any dollar. Yeah. Yes. And complete absolutely. projects. Yes, and We're, completed projects. That that should be our new <laughs> slogan. We've got so in comfort to so longer, but we need to be a shorter UFO list. Yes. That's that's arrows. Yeah. That's the real reason for a sewing cabinet. All right. Well, I think we're going to throw it back to you, Blaine, and we're going to pull in the next cabinet. Um, if you want to show them how you, they can get to this wonderful wallaby cabinet with the free Kiwi. All right. Sure will. All right, everyone. Uh, what a great cabinet. Now, again, let me remind you on the, which one this was. This is the Wallaby 2 cabinet. You're going to get the cabinet plus that free Kiwi storage cabinet and the pressing mat with the cutting mat. And again, guys, where it's got that, they call it the A7 uh, opening. And that is a the opening where the machine goes is going to be 23 and three quarter inches wide by 12 and one half inches deep. So, and here's one of the things I, I wanted to tell everybody. If you're just, if you're kind of curious about what machine will fit your, you know, or what cabinet will fit your machine, just give us a call. Our sales con consultants can help you get the right cabinet that'll fit for your machine. Uh, just call them at 800-401-8151. Or if you're on our website, just talk to the live chat agents. They're going to be able to give you some guidance. I saw some questions. They were asking about the Stellaire, which machine uh, or which cabinet their Stellaire would fit in. They're going to be able to tell you that. So again, we have a fantastic price on this. $16.99. You're getting that Kiwi storage rolling caddy absolutely free with the pressing mat and the cutting mat on that. And again, guys, if you uh, need some financing, we have special financing available. We're going to ship this nationwide free right to your doorstep. And again, this thing, I've personally experienced, my wife, Michelle, has one of these aero cabinets with the Kiwi and the chair. And it is very easy to put together. 
Uh, I'm telling you, anybody can put it together. Just plan, you know, a couple hours. But don't get in a rush. And it goes together really nice. And it is such a good looking piece in your sewing room. And like uh, Valerie's talking about, it's very compact. Once you fold that thing up and lock it, it keeps the little hands out. And you can keep all your stuff secure. All right, so let's go right back to Valerie and Scott. And uh, let's see our next cabinet. Thank you, Blaine. We are back and we are gonna go over our Sydney cabinet. Now our Sydney cabinet, it's the everything. It's the everything. It's kind of like three cabinets morphed into one is yeah. the way that I look at it. So it's, it's the kangaroo and Joey kangaroo with jo the kiwi, kiwi and our mod as one, as one cabinet as one. And look at this. And you know what? It carries every single machine, every machine out on the market will, will fit, fit in this cabinet. Right now we've got the brand new Viking Epic three sitting in there. Perfect. And I haven't even got to play with it yet. I know you haven't. It's, it's okay. The boxes are in your office. They are. And I think they took the power cords away so you can't play with oh, that. They always take the power <laughs> cords. So this is another cabinet that is going to give you a lot of workspace. This is going to have the organization. It's going to have the storage for you. It's going to have the work surface. And you've also got the ergonomics. It is a little bit more of a deeper cabinet when you look at it. Is it my turn with the tape measure? It is your turn, but I'm very nervous of you throwing it this way. <laughs> I will be gentle, <laughs> yeah. I promise. All right. Oh, so I got to flip it over the correct way. There we go. End to end. End to end. Oh, I'm, in, I'm in centimeters. Yeah. <laughs> 75 and a half. And that's all the way completely open. And you don't necessarily need to have that leaf open or the back leaf open. You do need oh, to. Yeah, this, this is, is actually choose your door. own adventure. Yes, it is choose your own adventure. And then here... From here to back is about 56 and a half. 56 and a half. I mean, it's guys, it's don't it, lay on it. It's huge. It's not a bed. It could be a bed. It could be a bed. It could be a bed. Very I mean, well. If you if it's a late night sewing session, you're really going, you've got a comfortable chair. I mean, see, yeah. Put your machine down and take a snooze. So with our Sydney cabinet, like Scott had mentioned, this is, you know, the 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 Cadillac. The Cadillac of all. So it comes with this pressing mat. So you've got a pressing mat. So just kind of like we said, like with the Kiwi, this one comes with it. So you've got it right here on the door. Then you can turn and you can sew. And just like the kangaroo and Joey and the wallaby that he just showed you, is it's got this nice work surface here on the left-hand side for the weight of your project. You got to do it. Project. Snap it. There it is. I do Opa. that enough. <laughs> so you can sit and you're your project is not going to fall or pull or drag anything like that. So I'm going to go back here for one second. Okay. You go back there. So like we showed with, with, uh, the wallaby cabinet, again, same thing is with this, the way this shelf system works, this is actually the door and we'll, we'll close this up so everyone can see that. But the way this shelf system works is again, same thing. You can roll up right to this and you can even slide this down have a cutting mat here to cut, press, sew. I mean, I don't know if they need to see me well, cut again. I know, but I know you like to cut and you like to. But I don't like this cutter. I want my cutter. <laughs> Everyone out there knows what I'm talking about. Everyone has a has a favorite cutter. I have not gotten into that quite yet. Oh, you will. I know. Trust I have me. to get one. But again, we can cut. Can press. We can press. Hey, look at this. It's, you know, it's like uh, the cooking shows where they put it in the oven and then boom, it's, boom, it's already done. done. I, it's only projects work that way, right? <laughs> if only the three quilts I have going work that way. <laughs> but then again, same thing. We're lining ourselves up. We're center needle with the cabinet and we're able to just push. And we've got our side quilt leaf here, this drawer cover extension holding our project. And as we push to the back, we have the rear quilt leaf then doing the same thing, catching our project. So we're not having to fight gravity. Gravity? What else do we have? Oh my goodness. We have gravity defiers? Was that we the name? We have gravity defiers. Was and that now, the name? You know, they've seen them in just white so far this week. I don't think they've actually seen them in the gray. We have colors. We have colors. We have white. We have teak. We have gray. And look at this. You can just put it right on here so you don't have to worry. Oh, wait, now I get to do it. Oh boy, again. You know, I, I just Easily every time you do that, I keep thinking that you're like one of the bullfighters, you know, a in the matador. ring. Yes, that's what they're called. Toro, Toro. 
So look at that. They just, they cover up and they come in sets of two. So you can either make like a nice little corner piece like this that it'll bunch up. You can get another one and attach it over here. So I'm you out. don't have to worry about that. More. You, I, I need more. I need a bigger quilt. Sorry. <laughs> I could pull some off the walls, but I don't think Ethan would really like me for doing that. But it, it just is a nice little gate here for you to have your quilt just bunch up instead of pulling. Because when you're working on those larger quilts, they just fall and they get heavy. Yes. They get super heavy. So And they pull and they twist. And we were uh, Grace was talking before about, you know, uh, having a seam ripper. Just so the world knows, I did talk about it yesterday. I don't have a seam ripper. I have a utility knife <laughs> that I used on my very first quilt. It was quite sad, but it still worked. Yes. I need, Blaine, I need a, I need a seam ripper. Just, just throwing <laughs> that out there. Just putting it out there. I need a seam ripper. So this one here, you know, like we had mentioned, this has that three position hydraulic lift as well. Also, you can custom order your insert to go around your sewing machine. This one, again, will hold all the machines that are currently on the market, but yet still giving you the workspace, still helping you sit with the correct ergonomics at your sewing space, and then also helping you stay organized. But before I show them the lift, you know, I think we need to show them the storage. We did. We forgot the storage. We forgot guys. the storage. I'm sitting here. Ethan, go back. We forgot the storage. <laughs> all right. So all of these are full view soft closing drawers. And look at this ginormous look thread rack. At this. And these are the bigger spools. These come. It also comes with a thread rack. No, the thread is not included. Sorry. Dang. But look how pretty it is, though. I need those colors. Ethan did a really nice job. I, I and it those, comes those with a thread dreams. rack or a thread Call holder in here. Name. It's got little handles, but my hands don't work. And then it's got a bottom drawer with a, a nice removable sliding tray. Hey! It's, who is it? What is Pockets doing in here? And Pockets is a... Girl. <laughs> kangaroo. We did it. We figured it out. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> all right. So we've got the three drawers. They all do lock. So again, making sure that those small hands stay away from those rotary cutters. You can make sure that your stuff stays safe. Hide your chocolates in there. Why not? Goldfish. Uh, you are a goldfish. And then bubble, bubble. It's, also, it's also got two removable and adjustable um, shelves in here. What else can we put in there? But you know what? If you There's don't want to have storage, you could easily, when you have your machine in the flatbed sewing and you're not Tell using me. your embroidery arm, you can stick your embroidery arm yes. in there. And I don't it's have got one a yet, nice I need one. pad here at the bottom that you don't have to worry about it scratching your cabinet. It's nice and padded for your embroidery yes. arm to rest in there. There is also hooks in here that you can put your embroidery hoops on. So you don't have to worry about those falling and laying wherever. You can just hook them up here on top if you choose not to put your embroidery Bubbles arm in there. Bubbles should be the next chair. Just throwing that out there. Bubbles? Bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah. You are a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. You guys get to hear my laugh. It's terrible. I know. Uh, do you have Mountain Dew and Reese's in the chair? Ooh, oh, you know what? I don't think we do because I think they had it well expired. Well, no, so I, I ate the Reese's. You do you know how long <laughs> I those ate have been the in Reese's here? guys? Are, <laughs> this doesn't grow itself. Yeah, I so, sell. I just brought in a whole bunch of Girl Scout cookies because both of my girls sell Girl Scout cookies, oh and God. we got into a big argument the other day about this because the serving size was two and a half, but they put five cookies per row, no, which it, really the serving isn't. size. Okay, well, let's two. let's close this up. Yes, let's so we can show, show how small it is. So here's the door here. So it's got this nice little panel that folds down, and then it easily closes up. So look how small and compact this gets, and that locks as well. And then there is wait, cover. there's more. <laughs> there's a cover that goes over the top. So this is our Sydney cabinet. Again, it's got storage. It's got a nice workspace. You've got your flatbed sewing, so you're not going to have that pain and strain on your neck and shoulders. It's also got, you know, it'll help keep you organized. And, and then it, it also six, comes in three colors too. It's not just it in gray. Six and a half by five when it was open. Yep. Right. So now it closes down to 60 and a half to, what is that? Two feet? 20, I'm going to say inches. 27 and a half because you got to accommodate for the quilt leaf hanging down. Yes. 27 and a half. So a very small footprint when, when you close closed. it up. Yep. So again, 
Your sewing space can be like a transformer. It just opens and it closes and you can do whatever you want. It, it works wonderfully. Oh, somebody just said she ate a whole box of Girl Scout cookies herself and we're not supposed to tell her husband. You know, it's it's acceptable. It's it's that time of the year. It is that time of the and year. And seven. I have like, I ordered 70 some extra boxes for our house and the girls keep going, can we have more? Can we have more? Can we have more? So Mine I've had one cookie so far this year. Paula, same. I took over my my college daughter's bedroom and it's never closed. And you know what? A lot of people don't close their sewing machines no. and put them away, which is fine if you have that dedicated space. But there are a handful of people out there that are either like to be neat and tidy and have everything have its home and put away at the end of the day. And they also have a non-dedicated sewing space too. So they've got it multi-purpose. I put nothing away. You're a guy. It's a mess. There's batting <laughs> everywhere. Just saying. Ooh, toastiers with coffee. Ooh, I'll have to tell my husband that. I love the toastiers. They taste like French toast. So what we're going to do is we are going to throw this back to you, Blaine. We're going to kind of move this cabinet out. And if you want to... Actually, you know what? You know what we forgot to do? Wait, we're giving stuff away. Blaine, I'm sorry. We forgot to tell them we're giving away a pair of our quilt catchers to go with their cabinet that they're going to purchase today. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's do it right now. So, Kennedy, what's the key? So, what's the we got to put the keyword in. Whoa. What is the keyword for today? I think our keyword today is kiwi. Kiwi. Because you know Wait, why? Where is it? Here With the go. purchase of kiwi. either an awesome. All right, everybody put the going. kiwi in the chat right now if you want to get a chance to win these. Kiwi in the to chat. Win the quilt blocks. To and, win a set uh, of quilt blocks. And they come in we're white. We're going to go ahead and gray. talk a little bit about the cells. We're going to talk about the cabinet while y'all are putting in the chat the kiwi. Give you all Perfect. a chance to do that. All right. So, Kennedy, if you'd show me the overlay of that cabinet. So, guys, they just got finished talking about the Sydney cabinet. And again, this is $24.99 pricing. Don't let that scare you. We have some special financing available for you. Again, uh, you have that hydraulic lift in this. Now, uh, somebody mentioned about the bigger machines. This is going to accommodate those bigger machines because this has that A14 opening for sewing machine, and which is, you know, a very large. It is a 30.5 inches wide and 14 and a half inches deep. So that's going to accommodate your machines like the Stellar, you know, from Brother, the Illuminaire, the Solaris, uh, you know, all the bigger type machines. Uh, you're going to be able to put this in there. So, uh, and if you have any questions on that, give us a call. You're going to be able to pick your colors. Again, guys, free shipping nationwide on this. Great, great machine. Uh, so give us a call right now at 800-401-8151 for this cabinet. Or you can go to our website on the live chat and they can answer any questions and take your orders is there as well. All right. So let's go ahead and spin that wheel, Kennedy, and we're going to see, guess a winner. All righty. Here we go. Keyword was, key, was Kiwi. So spin that wheel. Virginia Plum. Plum. So congratulations, Virginia. You just won yourself some of those, what do they call them? Quil uh, quilt, blocks. quilt blocks. There we go. Keeps the quilt. You attach them to your cabinet, and it keeps the, the quilt from sliding off the top. So, Virginia, we need you to go to sewing or smplive.tv. Scroll down toward the bottom of that page where it says Claim My Prize and fill out all that information complete, and we will uh, get those We'll send that to uh, Arrow Cabinet. They're, they're going to ship them directly right to your doorstep. We just need to know what color you would like, Virginia. All right. So, guys, we are running a little short on time, so we got to make this chair very, very quick. Let's we, talk about the different we've colors. We've been talking about chairs. They've seen the ergonomics. <laughs> the They've seen the comfort. They saw how Scott was sitting in it. They come in five fabulous prints and six, six solid solids. colors, adjustable in height, great for storage. And the lumbar support is absolutely amazing. You definitely got to call SMP and get one of these into your sewing area. Yeah, these chairs are awesome. And again, you've got all those different colors, everybody. I weigh up, they'll, they'll support 300 pounds and they're very stable. You can sit in them and bend over, pick things off the floor, and not have to worry about tipping over. Uh, we have one of these at my house, and I can attest these are awesome, awesome chairs. The most popular chair and sewing chair in America. And we sell a ton of these. Everybody loves them. So go right now. You can, as Kennedy, do you have that overlay up there? We can show them. Uh, this is the chairs right here. 
$329. We do have a call in special on these as well. Give us a call and pick out one of the chairs for you. It has that secret compartment under the seat too. You can for storage. Again, 800-401-8151. We're going to ship this absolutely free right to your doorstep. And let's bring Jane back in. Thanks, guys. We sure do Thanks, appreciate guys. it, y'all. Thanks for yeah. having us for Quilt Fest and have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank you. All right, Jane, uh, another great demonstration. So I was waving at Valerie and Scott. Yeah, we, we're, we're running a little behind. I schedule, so I'm going to let you go right in and, let's go. and get, get Nicholas in here and we're going to get to town. I love it. All right. He is back again today. Nicholas Turkan from Handy Cool Wilter. We know it. He's a multi-talented and very creative individual. And he has uh, been quilting since 2012. And he started with one quilt that quickly turned into so many more quilts. And he was started on a, on a domestic machine and said, huh, I need a better way to do this. So we've seen him quilting all week long on this long arm. And he is here today and again this afternoon. And I hope he's wearing that fabulous jacket. Nicholas, are you there? Hi, Jane. Yes, I am. The jacket's off. <laughs> the jacket's off. My studio, I have been drenched in sunshine here in oh, Vancouver. Nice. I've actually had to close the, the curtains because it was too blindingly bright for filming here. So, yeah, sorry. It's, it's sitting on a chair over there. Well, it's fabulous. I haven't seen you all week, so I just wanted to tell you it's great. I, I know we're a little late to your segment, and today you're back to talk about the Handy Quilter Pro Stitcher Lights. Yes, I am. Um, there's been so many comments about the jacket. It is a pattern that I drafted myself and it's one of those things that I plan to put it out as a pattern. So people just have to follow me, mysterystitch.com. And someday in the future, I'll get that jacket pattern to everyone. So keep an eye on that. But for right now, Pro Stitcher uh, Light. This is for our smaller classes of machines. So Moxie, Moxie XL, and Pro Stitcher is not exclusive for just handy filter machines. We also produce Pro Stitcher uh, robotic systems for some of the other machines as well. But today I have it on the, the Moxie XL uh, and here we go. So there's two essential components that make up Pro Stitcher Lite. We have our tablet here that is the computer system that actually does all of the controls for it. And down below is the carriage and the carriage has two motors and those two motors control the Y axis movement and the X axis movement. And the combination of those allow this machine to move anywhere else. So for some people I know the best way to think of it, it's like a CNC machine that does stitching. So that is that. Now, Pro Stitcher Lite, when you purchase it, you're gonna get over 250 designs preloaded into it. Uh, uh, I just got mine, I got this on Monday, and it is preloaded with Pro Stitcher Connect. And that is for the light version. Now with Connect, there is a tab right on here for called Pro Stitcher Patterns. And this will allow me to go there and this can connect straight to the internet. And I could download straight from the Pro Stitcher website, some of their patterns. And again, they have ones for purchase. They have freebie ones when you're a member. We have a monthly membership that you can use a credit for that you can get multiple patterns for your one credit. So there's lots of great ways to get new patterns into your design library. And with this, you can download them straight through that and they will be located right on here. If you want to do it the old fashioned way, you're more than welcome to go to any computer, download your designs from wherever you're going to get them, put them onto a USB stick, take the USB stick and pop it in and you have them right there. So that's great. Also, if you have multiple machines, like I now have multiple machines, I'm going to be copying them from one tablet to the other. So there's many, many different ways to get some designs back and forth. So if I can get you to switch my camera, we're gonna get right into it. I'm just gonna be holding my camera here to go back and forth between the needle and the screen. Uh, yesterday I was fumbling with the stand and I thought, I don't need to do that. So one of the first things we need to do when we wanna stitch with Pro Stitcher Lite is set up a frame space. Now on the screen, this is a red box this is our frame space. I've already set it up because I have a stack of quilt tops that are holding up my, my computer there. So I can't go all the way to there. But when I move the machine, we have orange crosshairs. Those orange crosshairs are a, 
a computer representation of where the needle is on our quilt. The red frame space, I've gone all the way to the far left of the frame, hit the frame space button. I've come across to the lower right hand side of my quilt and set a frame space. Now the machine knows where the quilt is, where it's safe to quilt and where the machine can move without it bumping into the bars. See right here, I'm all the way forward, I'm hitting a bar, I'm at the line. So this is a safety feature that's not going to allow the machine to bump into those bars. So when we are ready to bring in a design, what we can do is we have the tabs across the top. So I'm at the file tab, directly below that is the ribbon. And as I change to a different tab, we have different things that pop up on the ribbon and some of them will be grayed out because they're not accessible yet. So I'm gonna go file, design, open, and I'm going to bring in a block that we can stitch out. And I just want something cute and sweet. How about let's do this butterfly. I'm gonna bring this in. So once, it is, once it's on the screen, it is a touch screen. You can just drag it around to wherever you want. But I think what I'm gonna do is put this butterfly right into a nice little space and then we can stitch a frame around it. So what I'm going to do is create an area. So I'm gonna to go to the area tab and we have two corner area or multi-point. Now, if this was going to be a butterfly in the middle of a block, we'll pretend, we'll pretend that there's a grid here. Uh, we'll go six inches by six inches. Now, for anyone that does a lot of piecing, you know, this grid, the lines are printed straight. Well, we know that sometimes not all of our piecing is going to be perfect. So what we would do is find the corners of our blocks and select that. Now I'm going to zoom in. So it might be a little hard to tell on the screen. Uh, let me turn my grid on, but you can see now that line is a little bit crooked. So this piecer was in a bit of a rush and they didn't realize that they had stretched out their quilt block. And now this butterfly actually happens to fit reasonably well into that space. But if we want to change the size of it, we can go to modify, resize, and I can manually shrink down the size to make it fit inside there. Or if I wanted to make it fit and really fill the space, we could go to skew, and I'm just gonna click skew. And that is going to automatically stretch that design to fill that shape. So it has brought it right to the borders. So that skew is one of the most fantastic features on here. Now, Pro Stitcher Lite is limited to just skew and border skew. On Pro Stitcher Premium, we have the third skew, which is triangle skew. So um, there's definitely some fun things that you can do. And the difference between these two one is for working inside convex shapes and one is for working inside concave shapes and again the more complicated your area is you'll see some differences between those two for right now it's just kind of twisting our butterfly ever so slightly so if that looks good we're ready to stitch all we have to do go to pro stitcher run and now we're going to verify our settings so right now the stitch is turned on the pull up is turned on and you know what? Let's stitch in the ditch in our block. So if we turn on this trace area, what the machine is gonna do first is trace around the area before it's gonna go to stitch the design. So if this were our block, tracing the perimeter would be the equivalent of stitching in the ditch. So it's moved to the corner, it's taken one stitch, and now when I move the machine away, I can pull up my bobbin thread, and again, that's a little tricky to do one-handed. Hold those while it starts. And away we go. So as you can see right here, we've come just off the line because of that block not being pieced perfectly, but that's okay. So I'm now going to Clip that thread. And again, if this was a proper quilt, you could have the tie off stitches. You can bury those threads into the quilt if you wanted to. 
But since this is a little sample, I'm just going to clip them flat. And again, it's now ready to start uh, stitching our design. So I'm just going to click the Run button again. It's going to take one stitch again, so I can pull up my bobbin thread. And there we go. So now we can see that comes here. So one of the comments I just saw said you could set it and forget it. Well, you could definitely set the machine and walk away to do something else. It is always advisable to stay within uh, reasonably close to the machine that if something were to happen that you could click the pause button to stop it from stitching. So say there was a thread break or something like that, that you wanna be in the room is my general rule. So I will get it set up, have it start stitching, and then I'll sit down at another machine and start piecing or start working on the binding on something or ironing, anything else that needs to be done. All the machines also come with standalone bobbin winders, so you could start winding bobbins for your next quilt as well. Yes, that is purple. I decided to quilt it in some handy quilter purple. So and I currently have this machine stitching out at 30% acceleration and 80% speed. So even though it could go a little bit faster on there uh, for the speed. It has a much better stitch quality if you slow it down just a little bit. So I find that 80% speed works really well for beautiful stitch definition and having it turn out great. So I'm going to stop this right now. Um, the design isn't quite finished stitching, but I wanna have time to show you some of the other cool features on there. and. At least at this point, we can still tell that's a butterfly and it looks pretty neat. And at least it's symmetrical back and forth. So I'm gonna pull us back up here. So what I would like to stitch next is a border that's gonna go around this shape. And I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to create a border design out of something that's just a single little corner like that. So what I'm gonna do is take that design I'm gonna to go to the edit tab and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm then going to turn it so they can connect to each other. And that'll be my right hand corner. And now I'm gonna join the two of them together. Now I could try and fiddle and get them, you know, perfectly aligned and trying to match them up. But sometimes getting those to be perfect like that, you'd spend a lot of time. So instead, I'm going to use a function called reposition. And while I have this one selected, I'm going to reposition the start point. So the start point is the little green target, and that is where the stitching is gonna begin. And the end point is where it's going to finish, and that is the little red target. So I've repositioned the start point to my crosshairs. I'm going to select this one, and now I'm going to reposition the end point. I'm now going to turn on my multi-select to select both of them. Oh, and it just did something funny. There we go. So it's now joined the two of them and it's gonna stitch right through into the middle and I'm going to baseline that. So now that is one design. That is the top half. And now I'm going to quickly repeat that and that will create the bottom half of our frame. And it's the same steps. And I'm gonna turn off my melt to select first. 
now that I remembered it. There we go. So you can see the red and green target are right on top of each other. And that means that's gonna be the same start and end. And there's a continuation here. If I try and stitch this as is, the machine's gonna stop there and think, and then it's gonna continue on stitching. But if I just select baseline, it's going to basically compress all of the steps that it was thinking about. So now the computer doesn't need to stop and think there, what is it going to do? It is gonna stitch this as one continuous design. And because that's way too big, I'm gonna shrink that down to fit that space and go right around our butterfly. So let's bring that in. And again, this time I'm just going to manually adjust it. And there we go. Now let's stitch out some of that. The machine's gonna move itself to the start point, take that one stitch. And again, it's going to come up, pull up pause. It's asked me, is the bobbin thread pulled up? Yes, I wanna resume. There we go. So this would be great if this was the sashing around your blocks, just how quick and easily you could create your own little design out of a little corner and modify it to however you want. Pro Stitcher also has its own design software called Pro Stitcher Designer. And that software will actually allow you to uh, create and modify your own designs from scratch. So you have, if you have any interest in designing your own design, that is the software to have. It takes a little bit of a learning curve, just like everything, but once you get in, into it, it is fantastic. And it really opens up the possibilities that you can do just about anything. How long does it take to learn the software? Um, I guess it depends on how tech savvy you are. Um, if you're comfortable using an iPhone or an Android, uh, you know, and you can use the computer, I would say it's no more difficult than learning any of those. Uh, the, all of it is very intuitive. Uh, when you get the, when you buy the machine, you do get full instructions. There is a quick reference guide that's included as well. And the quick reference guide is great because it gives you just a brief summary of each and every button and what its function is. So I find instead of going through the entire manual learning, it's actually easier to do it from the quick reference guide because you can just go through and it tells you in as few words as possible exactly what you need. So let me just have my quick reference guide handy right here. You know, so if you were looking at something under the repeat tab, okay, what does the repeat tab do? Repeat designs in the workspace. And then it gives you a little bit of a more description, but it goes through each of them and shows you what the buttons are, what they mean, quick and easy. And yeah, that was pretty fast for the border. So this is, uh, what do we got? Two, four, six, eight. This is about uh, maybe an 11 inch block. And that was done in 10 minutes. And that included the time of creating that border. And if you go through, let's just see, file design open. Let me make this full screen. This is just a fraction of the designs that come included. This is just one folder. I literally have all these folders of different designers. So again, lots of different options to get you started just from the get go. And again, a lot of these are other national educators from Handy Quilter that have donated some of their designs. There's a whole um, these are the ones that are included as pro stitcher designs. I just 
love them. And again, there's so much in here that you can do. Oh, look at this cute little rubber ducky. I don't know what, I think it's because Easter is almost here that I'm thinking about. So I'm gonna move that design right to where my, you can see here, I just stitched right over and then I move that design to be right where my needle is and I'm gonna stitch that out now. So if you're careful, you don't even have to cut your threads to start a new design. You just need to know where the design is, what the positioning is going to be in relation to your other designs. And as long as your needle is up when you press the start button, in case the machine is gonna move, you don't have to worry about that. Uh-oh. Ran out of bobbin thread. What do you do when you run out of bobbin thread in the middle of your design? So first thing I'm gonna do is just press cancel there. And I'm going to clip my threads. I'm gonna hold that off to the side. I'm going to change my bobbin. And this is an excellent time when you're changing your bobbin to give your machine a little bit of oil. So most of the machines take uh, one drop of oil down in the bobbin area at every bobbin change. Uh, and that's a great time just uh, depending on the machine, either use a, a can of compressed air and blow it out or use a little brush and do that uh, to brush it out. So I'm gonna go close to where uh, that was. And what I need to do is I'm going to select new start and end. Let me just, I'm gonna zoom in on the duck a little. Okay. So I've gone to new start and end and I'm gonna select auto. And that is going to move my a start point instead of it starting where it originally started, it's now gonna start where my crosshairs are. Now, the little problem that I see here is I don't know if it's moving to the left or to the right because that little part of the wing is gonna stitch twice. So what we can do is use the arrow buttons here and find out by clicking advance, the down button is going uh, further into the stitching pattern and the up arrow is going previous, going backwards. So that is going to be stitching in the correct direction for where I need it to go. So again, go to quilt, and make sure that my pull up is turned on because I need it to pull up my new bobbin thread. And then click run, and we're gonna go proceed. So since the machine was already where I wanted it to be, it didn't have to move very far. I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread and click resume. And just like that, we're back in business. There we go. So I'm gonna see if I can recreate something really funny happening on the screen here. So I'm going to, on my screen, just zoom it into the whole frame space. So we can see this is everything that I've stitched so far. And I'm just gonna go to file, and clear all. And it's gonna remove all my previous areas and previous designs, but it's gonna leave the frame space there. The frame space is gonna be the same every time that you set it and once you turn the machine off, uh, turn on. When you turn the machine off, it will delete that frame space because the gears are gonna disengage and it's not gonna know where it is. So right now, the frame space is still the exact same. It's gonna be right there. Uh, so. I'm going to create a new area and I'm going to move it around. We're going to create a, a very skewed block and see if we can get some fun things that are going to happen on the screen. So let's just say that was maybe a part of a pieced uh, 
a foundation piece uh, design where, you know, it was just a really funny shape. And let's bring in a design. Let's bring in this cross hatch. So this cross hatch is quite large for the design. And let's see what happens when we skew this. Because sometimes that can make some, look at that. The machine didn't know quite how to handle it. So it skewed it, but it in itself, that's a beautiful design, but not exactly what I was looking for. Oh, look at that, border skew. That looks pretty perfect. So that design would fit that space so much neat, neater. And again, that could be a lot of uh, beautiful quilting texture in that space. So if I want to stitch that out, I could. I'm going to clear that again. I want to show, again, under Pro Stitcher, we have the record feature. Now, with record, we can record using our new friend, Mark. So the way I had uh, traced around our block earlier, that was done just using the trace area. So that will follow only where your area is, and that depends on how perfectly you set your area. Mark is going to stitch in a straight line between any two points. So if I wanted to create um, a nice little area here where we're going to go around the block and then do some diagonal stitching in between them, some chevron lines, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to select Mark, and Mark is going to start recording each of the designs. And don't worry, you get used to the dings. On my other machine, uh, I've turned down the vol volume on the tablet and that has allowed me to make it a little softer. And again, my chevrons are not perfect, but they're gonna be close enough to give you the idea of what we're doing here. And then I'm gonna have it come back up to the front and, and stitch. So there we go. So let's stitch that out and see how that turned out. So somebody just asked if you can make the designs in your computer and send them to Pro Stitcher. You absolutely can. So there is a version of, uh, let, me, let me say this correctly. Uh, we have uh, on, on the Pro Stitcher website, um, so I think we can turn back to my, to my main camera and I'm just gonna answer some questions that are coming through because that was a great one. Uh, on the Pro Stitcher website, you can download Simulator. Now, Simulator is going to look identical to what you would see on the Pro Stitcher screen, but you're going to be able to run it on any Windows-based computer. In simulation, you can do any amount of designing you want. And again, it's a great way to practice how you're going to combine designs. And again, if you were thinking about doing this and you weren't sure if you're going to be able to learn the technology, you can download that for free use it on your computer and try and figure out how to do it. Um, you know, that is the, the simplest way. And then you can, you can know for sure, I can do this. I have all the skills. 
and the things that you can save in there can be transported over to the, the tablets here and run them. Now, Pro Stitcher Designer is a paid software. You do have to purchase that. That is almost, it's the equivalent of like AutoCAD. It is everything. And I do really, you know, I've taken the time to learn it. It is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And if you have any uh, urges to create designs from scratch, that is absolutely the way to go for it uh, because you have everything at your fingertips and you can go straight to it. I had just saw another question here about some of the feet uh, or somebody asked if they're a Mac version. The software does not run on Mac. You can, if you purchase an emulator, like if you run Bootcamp or Parallels, something like that, you can operate it on a Mac, but it is not a Mac compatible software. You need to run it on a Windows system. Now, again, Bootcamp or Parallels will run Windows software on a Mac, but that is a, an extra step and that's separate software that you'd have to do. Uh, somebody asked, this is the butterfly software. Yes, that was. Uh, should you replace the open toe or closed toe foot with the glide foot for everyday use? No, it's completely up to you. Uh, I would say that I use the glide foot 95% of the time, and I only take it off when I need to replace it with the sure foot for doing ruler work. But I do almost everything with the glide foot. Um, I took it off of this machine just because I wanted to show that you can do it with the open toe foot and somebody wanted to see how the feet were changed. But yeah, the the feet, the, the glide foot, and I know this is probably the answer for a lot of quilters, the glide foot's probably the number one, you know, that stays on their machine the absolute most. Okay. Well, Blaine, I think that's it for my time. I was, I don't want to go over. So if oh, Nicholas, quickly or, or sorry, Jane, you can go as long as you want to go. Yeah. Okay, well, is your, again, I just, I'm looking, if there's more questions in here, so it's, your, I'm a one-man show, it's hard. Isn't it hard? You're, like, doing the yeah. the camera, you're reading, you're fielding the questions, it's a very big, you're, you're already so talented, and now you're answering questions on top of it. Well, that's, well, I feel <laughs> like the questions are the important part, you have to, but they really put me to the test this morning. I had to thread the machine one-handed while holding the camera to do that. And that was like, okay, if I can do that, I'm, I'm golden. I can do anything I want. Uh, let me tell you this, Nicholas. I saw you threading the machine with one hand and holding the camera. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. Amazing. Not pretty good. Amazing. And by the way, uh, you ran out of you today, you, your bobbin ran out and you fixed that too. So, you know, you just, you can do it all. <laughs> I, I had planned for that and I had the bob and like within arm's reach there because I was like, this is going to happen. Be prepared for everything. I got a, a sip of water in case I get a cough. I got scissors, bobbin, pins, anything you need just out of reach. So you should write the book, man. Lots of people do not are so not as prepared as you are. Um, by the way, I love that you're so prepared. I want to tell everybody how to get the Handy Quilter Pro Stitcher yes. Light, but I also want to remind people your mysterystitcher.com, did you say? Mysterystitch.com. Mysterystitch.com. Yeah. Okay. Mystery Stitch Designs on Instagram and Facebook. So Awesome. Well, we really appreciate yeah. you hanging with us all week, Nicholas. It's so good to Thank see you. you. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you soon. Oh, who doesn't love Nicholas? Nicholas Turkan, everybody. Okay. What a great job he did on demonstrating and showing us the Handy Quilter Pro Stitcher Light. What an amazing machine. There you go. The uh, Quilt Fest pricing, $5,495. Our last presentation of the day you need to order now. If you've been watching Nicholas all week, you've been thinking about it. You just right at that one moment, that last moment of the show, he got you. Well, now's the time. You got to order now. Give us a call. 800-401-8151. Of course, you can chat live to place your order as well. So many ways. Everyone at SMP is ready and waiting to help you out. And if you did not get your question answered, 
they are happy to answer all of your questions right there at SMP. Again, that's your Pro Stitcher Light Quilt Fest special pricing. You see it there, $5,495. So order now and get your handy stitcher, handy stitcher, handy quilter Pro Stitcher Light. Easy for me to say, Blaine. <laughs> well, Jane, it is a mouthful, but I got to tell, remind everybody too, the Pro Stitcher Light works on the Moxie 15. It works on the Moxie 18. It works on the King Quilter uh, 16. Uh, so there's our, you know, the, the it'll work on quite a few different machines. And then the premium, the Pro Stitcher Premium will work on all the larger machines at Handy Quilter. And it works on our, our 18 inch King Quilter. Awesome. Get it. It's you, yeah. <laughs> well, you all can't right, delay. Now is the time because it's, uh, that was the last session. And it we was. have to make our decisions. Now is the time. It is. So I want to tell everybody out there, we're going to honor all the pricing from Quilt Fest all the way till end of business tomorrow, uh, which our call center will be shutting down at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, that's 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the call center will be shutting down so you can still get all the quilts, uh, Quilt uh, Fest specials until then, Jane. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just uh, kind of shut her down and, and uh, all those specials go away. <laughs> so... All those special, but thank you for extending that a little bit, Blaine. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, because I know it's, you know, some of these purchases are a big purchase and, yeah. and you know, some people, you know, you need to think about it and because and, it, it is an important thing that you're doing in addition to your sewing room. And so, uh, you know, you need some time to think about it, especially the things you saw today. During early in the week, you can think about it and purchase, you know, the next, these last couple of days. But today, the right. things you see, you really yeah. need another day to think about it. So yeah. I, I think that's why the, the best thing to do. It's great. Uh, yep. I think you're right. Give a, give well, a little think or, or not like, you yeah. know what I say more is more and less is a bore. So just buy it. Well, Jane, we are at the end of 2024 quilt fest is in the I book. Can't believe it. What a week. I just can't believe it. Yep. I know. I so wish we had a confetti one. cannon. It's uh, you know what? We didn't bring our confetti cannons this time. We have them. We, do have them. we have them, but you know, the last time I did it, the cleaning crew were very upset with me. <laughs> oh, and I and, just and have the, to add, there was confetti on the everywhere. ceiling. Well, and the, and the cleaning the crew was Roger and Kyle because they had to break down uh, <laughs> everything in the classroom and had to pick the confetti out of the ceiling oh, tiles boy. that shot up in there. And it was, it was a mess. I think we lost a vacuum that I'm day. almost positive we burnt out a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah, burn up a you, vacuum. You broke so. the vacuum, too. It's it a good was, thing uh, you, got, you, you have a couple of vacuums there, too. Yeah. So we it was, replaced it with the David. It was a mess. The David's better. So, yeah, the David's better. Um, so here's what we're going to do, everyone, just to let you all know. We're going to go ahead and right now we're going to draw our fifth and final fi finalist for the $26,000 Dream Studio giveaway. Then we're going to announce our People's Choice Award uh, for the quilts, followed by the the uh, some just regular drawings. We're going to do some, uh, or no, we're going to do the judges' choice. We're going to do the best of show, followed by just our random drawings for anybody can win. And then we're going to pick out the, the, the winner of the Dream Studio giveaway, last but not least. It's so exciting. I'm just so excited. All right, so Kennedy, you have that wheel ready to go? I, I've got it ready. Okay, everybody, cross your fingers, because here is going to be our fifth finalist for the $26,000 Dream Studio. So, Kennedy, spin that wheel. My pleasure. Oh, my gosh. It's This is it. <gasps> Andrea. Andrea. Juan. Juan. Jamin. Jamin. No. Jamin. Juan. Juan. Jam. 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 I want to say Andrea. Andrea. Maybe it's Jam. Okay. Jam. What do you think? Uh, I think it's Jam. Is it Andrea Jam? or is it Andrea or is it Andrea? It'd be Andrea probably because a lot of some people spell <laughs> Andrea that way, and then we've had a girl at work for us named Andrea that spelled it that way. So yeah. yeah. So let's just say Andrea Jom. I love that. Andrea Jom, thank you for watching us. You are our fifth and final finalist for the Dream Studio. You've been hanging with us on YouTube. So here's the important thing. Yeah. We got, so she's in the going to be in uh, the drawing for the $26,000 Dream Studio. Uh -huh. But all, we're going to have one winner. 
that gets that, but all the other four runner-ups, they're going to get a, a print moda from Brother. I love that. So it's going to be a fabric printer that they're going to get to print and make their own uh, quilt Amazing. fabric, whatever they want to do. So yeah, That's it's going to be That's a great, awesome. great prize right there. I would be happy with just that walking out the door. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's great. All right, so let's go ahead while we're, uh, we've got that done, we're going to get that ready. We're going to go ahead and announce our People's Choice Awards. These were picked by the SMP Nation for the quilts. We're going to show the quilt uh, and what place. We're going to start with third place. Okay. So third place in the People's Choice Awards. What they're winning first, right? Huh? Here's what they're winning. Okay, let's show what yeah. they're going to win. This is <laughs> what they're going to win, Jane. Third wow. place. So third place has got a really nice prize package. You see all the different things they have there. That's third place? That is third That's place. Third. So uh, so ready? let's, third place. Are we ready to reveal? And the third place goes to? Wandering Star. Wandering Star by Jean R. Wow, that's gorgeous. <laughs> Wow, so she Jean was R. the third place winner in the People's Choice. All right. So second place, let's show what second place prize package wow, is going to be. Congratulations. There's what second place is getting. That's wow. amazing. Prize package. All right. And the second place People's Choice Award goes to Girl with a Pearl Earring by Amanda H. <laughs> Wow. Well, congratulations, Amanda. Wow. Look at that. Stunning. Isn't that yes. beautiful? It is gorgeous. Amanda, great job. Congratulations. All right. Let's see what first place is going to win. All right. First place has got another great prize package. Look at all that stuff. That's, that's a and great prize. And our number one vote getter on the People's Choice Award is... Drum roll. Rainbow oh, Vortex. Wow. By Ian G. I think it's Ian. Oh Ian. my gosh. Ian, Ian G. G. Rainbow Vortex. That is just just another stunner. Wow. It's like an illusion. Yeah. So, it's so pretty. there you go. So let's go back through them again. There's our first right. place winner. Here is our second Ian. place winner. And here's our third place winners for People's Beautiful. Choice. All right. Are y'all ready for best of show? Yeah, I just can't. That those are those are works of art. They are just yeah. all, everyone that entered really and truly is just a beautiful piece of art. So thank you. Yeah. All right. So here's our best for show and our third place. We have we're gonna third show and second combined. So the runner ups combined. Yeah. All right. So here's what they're winning. And this was this was from the judges, correct? Yep. So yes. this is the runner ups uh, for the judges' choice. Right here we go. So right. they're both getting the exact same prize. They're getting a brother print moda. But in so the first the I guess you could say the second runner up. Second the first yeah. runner up, how we're gonna say it. Runner up number one. Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. Here are your boom. Runner -ups. Oh, there we go. So wow. one of them was abandoned. Uh by pink in pinky in pinky wow and the other one is a hand dyed pedal, pedal power. power by leah wow t wow blaine wow i don't know so it, there are your runner-ups so right amazing. there amazing judges choice and they both get a print moda from brother all right so here is the best of show let's show what they're going to win oh mm, my goodness it's a eleven thousand dollar prize package jane <sighs> this is so exciting look at that prize package thank you wow yeah. and uh the judges um i tell you what it's it's amazing to me that the best of show i have i'm the tiebreaker if yeah. there's ever and there's four judges so there has to be a tie breaking system mm -hmm. and this is our fourth year to do this and i've never had to, to do be a tiebreaker for the best of show and it's always the judges with the point system we use it always works out because either all of them vote on the number one or three of them vote on the number one and you know one does them in second place but it's always works out so here it is our best of show for 2024 quilt fest is 
Wandering, Wandering Star, Star by Jean R. Wow, amazing. Congratulations, Jean R. And I want y'all out there, the SP Nation, to go look at these quilts. Yeah. But go look at this one and look at the detailed pictures on this. There is, I, I can't even imagine how many hours Jean has into this quilt, Jane. I want to know how many hours Jean has into this quilt. I mean, I see, I looked through all these pictures and went in on the details, and it is just so impressive again back to the hours and the time and really just the thought process of putting it together i'm always just like floored by the beauty oh i know and yeah. i mean this you could frame it and actually have it yeah. as art in your house i mean I, this is how nice this is i always think like they could be framed and put into a museum that's yeah. how beautiful these quilts are yeah it's amazing uh the talent we had this year i'll probably just go out and say it i think we had the most talented pool of quilting we've ever had on quilt fest the, all the quilts were just incredible and i the judges i mean they were texting me saying how many hours they spent looking at the quilts and how hard it was well and uh, you know you heard them all today when we talked to them in the lunch hour for our 60 minutes of meeting the judges and they went into in depth of like how they were looking at like the creativity versus the technique and like the traditional versus the modern and i can't remember who it was just like i look at the finishes i look at the binding i mean it was just like i took every day i took this many hours to look at all of them so that was pretty impressive the amount yeah, of work and, that went into deciding who the winners yeah, are. Yeah, you know, and that was kind of me. I went and looked at the quilts and, and you know, it was so hard for me to pick out my, you know, top three as well, which, you know, my top three doesn't matter unless, you know, if I have to go vote on a tiebreaker or something, I just vote on the break the tie. But I, uh, you know, I just went on my own just to see if I could pick a yep. top three. And it was just so hard, you know, I mean, because I, you know, I'm looking at the details pictures of how, you know, I mean, Kyle even had a discussion about one of the quilts, how many pieces, separate pieces were in one quilt block that I one know. of the quilts had. Um, it's just incredible what some of the, some of them do. Uh, amazing. It's inc it really incredible is the right word. I mean, it's just uh, like you said, the time that goes into that, the number of pieces. And for me, just like the putting it all together and like keeping track of it. Yeah, the creativity <laughs> of doing yes. it. So. And yeah. I just want to mention something really quick. A lot of the comments are saying things like, oh, I could never make something that beautiful. Oh, I could never enter that. Don't say that. I'm telling you, if you enter something that you might not think is up to par for you could be someone's best of show. So never stop yourself because we have so many people entering the contest that it's their first quilt and they get third or they get second or they win. It's just, it's such a great way to get involved. Yeah. So have, yeah. have faith. You can win. Well, I think Edita had the perfect advice today on her Meet the Judges session. You know, she said if you were a beginner, she would recommend just buying a, a quilt kit. Yeah. Because what happens, you know, uh, I think I read this poll one time, Jane, that where they, they polled a bunch of people and they said the most difficult thing when they were trying to come up with doing a quilt was picking out the colors that kind of went together. Right. And so that's one of the things a quilt kit does. It The, the fabric's already picked for you and the design yeah. and all you have to do is do all the sewing and piecing and things so it does make it a little easier so you to learn the process and then the next your second quilt just go out and do your own thing and, and you, then you start practicing and i'll say two more things based off of what they said the judges said earlier today kimberly said enter in one don't just do one, do three quilt contests. Like you ha just don't do one, do one, two, and then do three to actually feel what it's like to be in the contest. And then uh, Beth Ann said that she put a quilt in a contest and it was one of them that she made that creative mistake on. And she said it won in <laughs> a category that she never even thought it would win in. So, I mean, again, back to what Kennedy said, you know, be a part of it. And back to what you're saying, Blaine, is, you know, the judge Judges have all been there, and so their advice was really great. Well, you know, I know just from our experience, uh, it's probably been a couple years ago, but we had, a, you know, one of the SMP Nation uh, people out there, they bought a quilt kit from us and actually did the quilt, first time they'd ever quilted in their life, entered it into the, the contest, and People's Choice got, she got third place. Wow. So, you know, that's one of those things that it can be done. 
Uh, so just, you know, we always tell people just start. Yeah, just do. start. Yes. Very good. All right. That's exciting. All right, guys. So now it's time. We're going to do some random giveaways. And then I'm going to write on air. I've got the names right here on my desk, Jane. I'm going to show you all the names as I put them in the hat. Okay. We're going to put them all in there to draw out. And then we're going to draw the the uh, Dream Studio winner live on air. So let's go ahead and do some random giveaways right. right now. We're okay. going to start out. Kennedy, what do you got in that we're closet rapid, over there? Rapid, what is it? Spitfire round, okay? First yes. up, the Handy Quilter HQ Stitch 10. All right. This is a $1,995 value. Uh, great sewing machine here. So Kennedy, spin that wheel. You got it. Spin it, Kennedy. Hey, and this if someone wins this, they can make their first quilt on there it. There we go. There you Today, go. I'm gonna let you tell I them think... where to how to claim their prize. Okay, we've inspired a lot of people, I think, this week. Tucker Culver, congratulations, hanging with us on Facebook. I love that little icon. Uh, congratulations, you won the sewing machine. All you need to do then is go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize. Scroll to the bottom, fill out all the information, and they will get that prize right out to you. You've got 30 days. To redeem your prize if you're hearing me now you've got 30 days all right going <laughs> to the next one we've got an AccuQuill. one more our last one for the week the AccuQuill go me cutting machine that's cool i love this thing they're so much fun all right i'm ready when you guys are all right kennedy spin that wheel oh we were almost up there <laughs> It's fun to see the names go by. Hey, Barbara M. Congratulations Ooh. watching us on YouTube. You won the AccuQuilt. Go me. I don't remember the last name of it. Thank you. SMPlive.tv to redeem your prize. Um, fill out all the information. I'm just stuck that her name is Barbara M because my mom's name was Barbara M. So that's where I got all flustered. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a sign. Uh, but anyway, Barbara, thank you for watching us on YouTube today and make sure you go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize. Fill out all the information. They will get that right out to you and you have 30 days to redeem your prize, Barbara mm -hmm. M. <laughs> All, right. All right. Next up, we got a bandicoot. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Love that. Ooh. This is a $2,699 value, and uh, you can pick your color of white, gray, or teak uh, mm -hmm. if you win this. And we're going to ship it absolutely free right to your doorstep. So, Kennedy? Yes. Spin that wheel. Oh, of course. Sandra, Sandra Cummings. Cummings, congratulations, hanging with us on YouTube. Thank you so much for hanging with us this entire week. And congratulations, you just won the prize. So all you need to do is go to smplive.tv, fill out all the information, and we will get that right out to you. And, and by the way, you have 30 days to redeem your prize. I know you're watching right now, so you're probably going to go there and do it now. Yes. <laughs> all right. What we second to last giveaway, we can do a couple gift cards. Oh, yeah. All right. So this is a $50 gift card to SMP. And uh, we will email you a gift card code that you can use at checkout uh, for all the things you want to buy. So, mm -hmm. Kennedy. Yes. Spin that wheel. Oh, of course. Chrissy Ol. Chrissy Ol. I'll go with it. Chrissy, congratulations. You just won yourself a $50 gift card to SMP Live. So go to smplive.tv, scroll down to the bottom, enter all the information, and they will send you your gift card in a digital code that you can use at checkout. So hopefully, Kennedy will get that to you as soon as possible so you can buy all the good stuff that you want. Absolutely. There we go. We're going to give you one more gift card, Jane, for okay. $50. So, Kennedy, spin yes. that wheel. You got it. This is, is this our last one? So, second to last giveaway. Okay. No, one more after this. 
Janet Lemplug, congratulations. You want a gift card. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. We love having you here. Go to smplive.tv uh, to redeem the prize. Make sure you fill out all the information, especially your email address, so they can send you that gift card in a code that you can use at checkout. Absolutely. All right, last one. Baby lock accomplished too. Oh boy. This is a $1,199 sewing machine, straight stitch sewing machine. Great for quilters, Jane. All right, Kennedy, spin that wheel. Say no more. Here we go. Oh, Tracy, Tracy Sayer. Tracy Sayer watching on Facebook. Congratulations. You won the sewing machine. Thank you so much for joining us. Go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize. Fill out all the information and the good folks at SMB will get that out to you ASAP. Yes. All right. So that brings us down, Jane, to, un, you know, uh, basically unveiling our dream studio winner uh dream studio winner of the twenty six thousand dollars worth of stuff kennedy can we remind everybody yeah. what the, what one oh. of these five people is going to win you do not have to tell me twice mm. so there it all is i mean it, you're getting a moxie xl 18 inch machine from handy quilter with frame a lar star ironing system you're getting the the the, the accuquilt uh cutter you're getting a baby lock sewing machine. You're getting a Juki sewing machine. You're getting arrow cabinets. You're getting arrow chairs. There's so much in there. It's unbelievable. What a great price package this is. You're getting Butler robotic system to put on that quilting machine. So we are basically going to complete somebody's uh, sewing studio. Complete. Uh, outfit it. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have everything they need. So you may have to have a the sledgehammer to knock out the it wall is. is optional. That's right. And I did say this this morning, but we did not have enough room in the overlay to include the frame, but you do get a frame. That's <laughs> true. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, they're right, going to have so to start me... teaching classes because they got enough stuff to have all their friends over. That'll be fun. All right, so let's remind everybody again, our five finalists. We yeah. had on day one, we had Laverne Mendez. Day two, or I don't know if that was day two or not. That was day one. Day one. I can't remember the order, but day two, sewing Bev. Sewing Bev. Day three, Karen Bruin. Karen Bruin. Day four, Rhonda Spiller. Rhonda Spiller Runge. And then Andrea today. Or, yeah, Andrea today. Yes. Yes. All right. So here's how we're going to do this. I've got a little bucket right here. In. So we're going to zoom in. So y'all, Kyle, can you hold the bucket right here? Like, <laughs> can you get it? Kyle's going to hold the bucket so y'all can see the bucket. Yeah. Show it that it's empty. Okay. So here is go. Laverne okay. Mendez. Can y'all see that name? Oh, yes. perfectly. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm folding it. Fold it up real good. We'll fold it exactly the same. <laughs> okay. There's Laverne. All right. Here is Sewing Bev. Can y'all read that? Sewing Bev. Okay. Here's Karen Bruin. Karen Bruin. Hope y'all can read all that. Yes, it's very clear, actually. It's great. Okay, good. Okay, Kyle. Rhonda Spillers. Is it Rudge? Runge. 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 Right there. Can y'all see that? Yep. Okay. How does this SMP Nation let us know? Is this great real time? Doing this real time? <laughs> All right, throwing it in there. And then today it was it was Andrea, what did we say? June? Jame? Jam? Jam? That was it. Jam. Jam. All right. So okay, we Andrea. see them all. All right, and that's number five. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So Kennedy zoom back out so all they right. can see the it's not leaving the frame. All right, so it's not frame. leaving the frame. So she's probably going to have to zoom in. I'm going to when zoom I, back in when you yeah. reveal the name. So here it is. Zoom out a little bit more so okay. we can see when I put it down on the on the counter. So y'all see that? Keep going. Might zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom out. There we go. Right there. There you go. That's oh. perfect. Y'all can see the top of it. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. There, you go. there yeah. we go. All right. So I want to make sure we get them all mixed up good. Oh, my gosh. 
I'm shaking and I'm Okay, sweating. so the, let's remind the runner-ups what they're getting. They are going to be getting the Janome TM60. Don't, don't take me off screen. Right there. Well. All right. There you go. I held it up so they make sure everybody's in there. Okay, yes. Okay, so they're getting the Janome <laughs> machines. And then uh, the, we're going to give one person the Dream Studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out the winner, the grand prize winner for the Dream Studio giveaway, Jane. This is going to be it right here. This is it? This is the grand prize. This is it, everybody. Oh, my so gosh. Everyone else will be this the runner up. But still, okay. go claim your prize. Oh, oh my gosh. God. This person oh is God. about to. There it Karen is. Bruin. Karen Bruin. Congratulations. You are the winner of the Dream Studio. Wow. $26,000. Karen Bruin, wow. today is your lucky That's day. Awesome. Wow. wow. Really? I'm waiting for the comment. Yeah, I want to see. I, I know see she's here. I yeah, I want to see. She's watching. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. So Karen, you're gonna have to remodel your sewing room just to make room for all this. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, Jane, That's another wonderful. one in the book. Yes. Uh, great week so far, and I gotta just say, everybody out there in SMP Nation, y'all really show Jane some love in the chat. Jane, what a great job you did! All all week was fantastic uh couldn't do this without you and you're just such a professional and everybody loves you so y'all oh. show jane some love in the chat what a great job thank you thank you it's been such a joy to be here with you all week i i always am so like astonished at how quickly the week goes you know you think like you look at a week and the time and the hours and i know you put so much time into this before this week even happens but just to be together and spend this time with like-minded people in this beautiful community of loving friends it's really um just a wonderful week for for me so thank you so much for having me i always enjoy being here i feel like i make hundreds and hundreds of new friends uh every time i'm here with you and if you guys want to follow me uh, on all the socials, I'm Jane Monzuris Klaus uh, because Jane Klaus wasn't available because apparently there's a woman uh, in the East Coast named Jane Klaus. Um, who knew? <laughs> so, and then, or you could just go to my um, my website, and it's right there on the screen, JaneKlaus.com. Two S's for extra special. Yeah, that's the easiest way to go. Just go to JaneKlaus.com. Yeah. You'll find all her social media yeah. connections there. And I got to say another big shout out to Kyle and Kennedy. Y'all show them some love here. They worked Yay. hard all week and uh, <laughs> nonstop. I got to say a big shout out to our chat team that was monitoring oh uh, Facebook, YouTube, and all the social media channels because the chats come in so fast. It's a hard job. But Rhonda, Melinda, Joe, and Reno were all covering that. So we sure do appreciate what they did. And guys, a huge shout out to our warehouse crew at SMP. We had people on chat saying they ordered something uh, two days ago and it was on the way today. Or no, yesterday, they ordered it yesterday and it sh it was already got a tracking number this morning. It, so it shipped out the same day they ordered it. So that's amazing. That is awesome. And Karen is here, I just wanna say, she said, what do I do now? So she needs to go to SMP Live. So, so Karen, <laughs> Karen, here's what you gotta do. You Before gotta make leave. make some room for all this merchandise yeah. that's coming. Yeah. First things first, get rid of everything you have. Get a pencil truck. <laughs> yeah, so all you winners, make sure y'all go to smplive.tv, fill out, go down and where you see, claim your prize, fill out that information anyway. Uh, so we have all your contact information. Uh, Y'all have 30 days to claim your prize, and I'm sure Karen is going right there right now. Yes. But make sure I'll do that. And then once that happens, uh, our marketing team and everybody will be in touch with you to arrange <laughs> shipping and all that kind of stuff to get it to your houses. She already has a sledgehammer out. She's, I don't, I mean, I would love to be right next to Karen right now. She's going to be going crazy. What do I do? Redeem your prize. Uh, please. Awesome. I saw my name. I'm confused. So, uh, and then got to say a big shout out to all of our customer service team and our sales team and our online uh so machines plus dot chat team they were answering all your questions and helping y'all out and uh sure you know great job for them i really do appreciate it and uh, so anyway just a great thing but jane gotta remind everybody too we're gonna be here uh every thursday at 10 a.m pacific time we have our our live show we enjoy uh you know or we really enjoy having different guests on each week and we 
I really want to invite the whole SMP nation to try to come and join in. We have so much fun. We give a sewing machine away every single week. And uh, so encourage y'all to come and uh, join us uh, next Thursday. And uh, Blaine, because you thanked everybody else, on behalf of everybody, SMP Nation and all your crew, thank you for leading the ship and making it happen and doing the work behind the scenes and getting us these great deals. You, without you and this idea, none of us would be here doing this. So thank you. Well, you're welcome, man. I'm glad to do it. Love the SMP Nation and uh, guys, Again, uh, Kennedy, do we have that event overlay? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna just remind you all about some events before we let everybody go uh, that's coming up. And Kennedy will oh, put that up there for you. you. There we go. So <laughs> just remember, you know, every Thursday we have our live show at 10 a.m. Pacific time, but April the 10th and 12th, if y'all wanna get in to learn about sergers, we're having our serger soiree. Make sure y'all join in. We're gonna have the best uh, educators and sergers in the country showing all the different types of surging machines. And I think I'm gonna have a little uh, project based, uh, not a competition, but a little fun thing we're gonna do with some uh, you know, really good guests to show y'all, uh, I'm gonna give them a challenge, a surger challenge. And then May the 9th, it's Blaine's birthday bash and uh, Kennedy and Kyle invite all kinds of guests to stop by. I never know who's coming and uh, we'll have some fun with that. And I, instead of y'all giving me something, I'm gonna give y'all a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we can give a lot of things away. June the 10th through the 14th is our another big festival. It's Hoop Fest. It's all about embroidery, Jane. And uh, we can't wait for that to come. It's going to be a great show. I've got a brand new embroidery machine that we're going to unveil for the world at this at Hoop Fest. So we can't wait. July 11th, it's SMP's private auction. So if you want to be involved in a private auction, you will have to be an SMP customer that has purchased something. And then we will email you a sign up sheet where you sign up and then there's some authorizations that you have to go through to be able to get into the private auction. And we did it last year and it was fantastic. September the 9th through the 13th is so fast and uh, another big festival. It's gonna be all about sewing. And then October the 14th through the 18th, it's National Trade-In Week. And if you have a machine at home and you're wanting to get something new and you wanna trade that in, you call us up, we'll give you the value of what we'll give you for that machine, and you can trade it in and get a brand new machine, Jane. I I love that National Trade-In Week. That's so <laughs> great. Hey, Blaine, um, before you say goodbye to everybody, can I just can I just say one more joke? Because I just I just came yes. to you. Yes. Okay, I want to leave everybody with this joke. Um, it's for the, the quilt contest when, when we were making the winners, okay, when we were announcing the winners. What did one quilt say to the other quilt during the contest winner announcement? Man, I have no idea. What did one quilt, what did one quilt say to the, the other quilt during the contest, the contest. announcement? I'm on pins and needles. <laughs> <laughs> That is a good one, Jane. All righty. Well, guys, <laughs> thank you all so much for tuning in all this week. We sure do appreciate it. Another big shout out to Jane Klaus for helping me co-host this. Thank you. And all the crew Thanks, here guys. at SMP. And uh, again, uh, thank you all for joining in. We hope that you enjoyed this and hope you have a great rest of your night, great week, and we'll see you the next time. So long. Bye-bye.